Wolfman deep fate. Uh, scary. No, those are actually really cool. Um, hey, welcome to Tournament Fight. What's up? I am your host, Jordan, the movie hero, Anderson. And tonight is episode 164. And we are honoring our friend of the show, Michael Wolfman Wyndham, with his top 64 favorite movies. And I was a little worried it's going to be like a whole bunch of like pretentious, just like, I don't know, A24 kind of artsy style movies, but uh, there's a few of those, but for the most part, I was actually surprised a lot of mainstream stuff, a lot, a lot of movies I actually really like. So yeah, this should be fun. So I'm excited for this. So yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll bring in our panel for tonight. And um, I will be running everything tonight because my, my co-host had to take care of some stuff. So we'll just start with the, with the man of the hour. We'll bring in uh, Wolfman. What's oh, up? oh, what's going on, everyone? Yeah, Wolfman is here. Uh, those Wolfman deep fakes that has to be the greatest thumbnail I have ever seen. Like, that is incredible. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. that was great. And, and yeah, there, there's definitely some, there are some pretentious ones in here, but they're good. They're like a good, even, it's a good, even kind of playing field when it comes to, my, to the movies, I feel. And when yeah, I was re watching. Sense, yeah. When I was rewatching some of them again, I was like thinking to myself, "God damn, this is going to be hard," because there are some good movies <laughs> yeah. on there. So this is going to be a hard yep. one, guys, but it'll be fun. Yep, will not be easy for sure. So yeah, we'll we'll also bring in Malcolm Lay. How's it going, Malcolm? It's going good, um, and I was surprised to find out that I've seen most of Wolfman's top 64. <laughs> yeah, right. I think me, uh, same with me, I, um, I only had like seven blind spots, and I watched three of them, so that makes it even less, so there won't be too many, so yeah, but um, right. we also have uh, joining us Ross Bristow. Hey, yep, yep, I'm excited, you know, like, I, How's it going, I Ross? Seen, like, good i've seen most of these i've seen like three or four and i watched two and a half of them so yeah so that was no actually no i haven't seen five and i've watched uh four and a half so no three and a half yeah 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 the only one i didn't get to get to was okay was Barry Lynch. nice yeah. nice so, so yep yep and i liked all of them a lot so yeah okay nice nice and then last but certainly not yeah. least we have one, uh one of this panel's good friends uh ashton mcintosh How's it going? Hey, guys. hey um, it's been a while since I've been on here, but coming back, um, I yeah. want to do this. I'm waiting for this talk. Sunny. <laughs> nice. Hey, the, dogs, the dog's excited, too. The dog's excited for the stream. Yeah, yeah, know, right? <laughs> yeah right? <laughs> Happy to be here. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, if the dogs start going wild, we'll know they're a fan of whatever movie we're talking about. So. <laughs> Either that, yeah, but, or, that or they'll make a that's a very low, loud like hatred towards the movie that we're talking about. Right, right. Did they start growling or something? Yeah. <laughs> but but <laughs> but yeah. Um uh so I'll break it down how it's gonna work. Um uh basically it's just pretty straightforward. It's just a tournament of sixty-four, just like March Madness, you just vote every round. Uh we put all the movies into a big randomizer, so there's no seating or anything, it's all random. Uh, matchup and um austin warned me that that there's some some really really tough ones especially on the left side so that'll be the first one that'll pop up or or where a lot of the really difficult matchups are i haven't seen them though he just sent me a, a link because he was gonna run it and then he sent it over to me so i will be running it uh and you do have to vote no matter what even if you haven't seen either the movies you can just make up a reason we like to have fun on tournament fights you can vote because you, you uh uh, for which one that you, that you want to see first, you can vote for which poster you like better. You can vote because you like an actor. You can vote because you can't stand that an actor in the movie, or like whatever. Like just to come up with with any reason. So, but that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward. Just give me a, a quick second because I gotta make sure we 
we have the bracket looking right because this sent me make sure it's in it's in presentation mode so we don't get a bunch of ads popping up and then i'll i'll pull it up here and, and also so the the first matchup will be hidden until we're ready to go uh, let's see second all right all right so get on my end let me bring it bring up the bracket on the screen here okay should be popping up a second now and while i do that i got a little uh, let's get hyped little intro here so while that loads there it is uh i'll I'll say one last thing. All day so comfort. It's going to be a Force. wonderful yes, game called good. Who is Your Daddy and What Does He Do? It's showtime. What do you say we cut the chit chat a hole? May I see your invitation, please? Sure. Here's my invitation. Let's do this, Schmidt. Yeah. Just like we always do, Jenkins. Jenkins, Jacob. Oh, sorry. I want to ask you a bunch of questions. And I want to have them answered immediately. I mean, come on, I just don't see a problem here. Let's just do it. Yeah, let's do it. I'm pumped. <laughs> Are you serious? Hey, one of those one of those right. movies is in my top sixty four right there. Yep, and like, oh fuck! Uh, the first, this is the first matchup. Seriously? Yep. Oh my god. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, first one's not not easy. I mean, like really, none of these are going to be easy, especially for you, Wolf. But, <laughs> uh, but mm. yeah. So this is our first one matchup. The the thing, the, the one from the eighties versus the Seven Samurai. So, and we always start at the bottom of the ladder. So, Ashton, you'll be the first one to vote. So, which one you want to vote for? So on previous um shows i hadn't seen the thing which is really upsetting for a lot of people uh, i have now seen it and nice. i have to go with the thing for sure i like i loved it so yeah awesome awesome uh uh ross when you the thing you, gonna go you know for? i do like seven samurai it's like uh, oh by, oh by the way uh noah my friend noah is in the oh yeah backstage right now, so you can drop hey Welcome, Noah. What's up? <laughs> What's hey. up, buddy? What's up? Yeah. Welcome to the the breakdown of Wolfman's favorite movies, and we're gonna judge him harshly, whether we agree or disagree. We'll let him know if we if, if we hate one of his movies. We'll let him know. We're not afraid of that here. Yes, so. Absolutely, <laughs> but, I'm excited. But, but yeah, uh, and I and I know Noah's very. A critical person, but he likes the majority of these, so I know that. He'll yeah, yeah, so far, so good. It's just the, the first matchup. We're just going around the the horn. So, uh, Ross, which one did you vote for? You went for the thing. The, uh, 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 the thing. I do love Sam and Samurai. It's probably the most influential action movie ever made, but I gotta go with the thing. The thing is like, yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Uh, uh, Malcolm, what are you gonna go for? Yeah, I, I haven't seen Seven Samurai. Um, not really rushing out to it. I'm not a big phone movie person, um, but I really love the thing, so I'm going to go with the thing. Yeah, sounds good. Well, well, uh, well then, which one of your children are you going to choose? It's like picking between your children. Okay, so, so <laughs> yeah, Seven Samurai is great. Even if you're not like a foreign language person, like this is just an excellent movie the cinematography the black and white cinematography really adds just like a depth to it uh akira kurosawa just directs the hell out of this movie all all the samurai have like their own kind of characters and their own dynamic to them and they're just all the characters here are great i love mm -hmm. summon samurai but that being said the thing is my all-time favorite horror movie it is high high up there on my personal lists so for me personally speaking i'm gonna have to say the thing and i know some of you seven samurai stands are gonna quote kurt russell on the thing and be like yeah fuck you too just because of you know, <laughs> me uh doing that but like yeah i just i love the thing so much so i have to give it that one 
Yeah. Well, so I've seen Seven Samurai, and for me, like, I have a hard time with, like, older <laughs> movies, especially ones that are that old. Like, I don't know when it came out. It's, like, 30s or 40s or... Uh, it actually came uh, out in, like, the 50s, I thought. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. that's probably true. And and the movie is good, though. Like, I, I do like it, but... And I recognize how influential it is. A lot of movies have been influenced by by this movie. It's probably one of the most in, um, influential movies of all time, but... Uh, oh yeah, literally like the Magnificent Seven was inspired off of it. The um, like Kill Bill movies took heavily heavy inspiration from Seven Samurai. Like, there's a lot of yeah. movies that take a lot of inspiration from it. Yeah, yeah. So, but the but the thing like, I'm I was pretty late to the thing too. I only saw the thing probably about uh, four years ago, something like that. But it, but I remember doing one of my my first reviews of, um, on this channel was a, was a thing. I used to do this show called Blind Spots where I'd review uh, I'd watch movies that I hadn't seen before and then I would review them and and, and uh, the thing like we were, we were doing pros and cons and literally I, we couldn't find one con for the thing. We couldn't find anything negative to say like at all. This is like near a near perfect movie. This movie is, is, is that good. So yeah I gotta go with the thing. So but uh, Noah, what, what would you go for here? Well, I guess I'm in the minority in saying that I think uh, Seven, Seven Samurai is probably the better film. I mean, I really love the thing. I think the thing is a great movie, but yeah, it's just Kira Kurosawa, I'm a big fan of his. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which I need to see more of his movies because this is probably the only one I've seen. So, so yeah. yeah, this is like the only one I've seen of his too. I really need to see like branch out and see more yeah like, did you ever see like R R uh, rashomon oh yeah there's like rashomon yeah he did like like yojimbo maybe that that might be yeah rashomon's yeah. really good good like it's done the style if you remember of uh, the, the last duel how it's the same story told through multiple points of view oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah that's cool and nice that's right so, so the thing moves on up next we got back to the future going up against v for vendetta Ooh. Um, this time it'll be uh, Ross first. So, what are you gonna go for? Okay, it's been years since I've seen V for Vendetta, but I remember thinking it was okay. I gotta watch it again, but you know, Back to the Future is all timer for me. So, yeah, Back to the Future. Yeah, uh, Malcolm, what do you say here? Um, yeah, I, I I think both of these movies are really good. Um, I love Back to the Future. It does come up here a lot for good reason. So I'm uh -huh. going to um, actually go V for Vendetta on this. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Uh, uh, Wolf, uh, what are you going to go for here? Okay, so I love Back to the Future. When I sent my top 64, though, it's actually like literally like in the 64 spot. Like I love it. Don't get me wrong. Like It's still in my top 64, but it's like there like near the bottom. Um, but it's like uh, V for Vendetta to me is an absolute like full on i mean both of these movies are masterpieces but like that movie is like a straight up masterpiece like i watch this movie every no 5th of november because you know they always do the uh you know remember remember the 5th of november and like hugo weaving just he, uh, you never see his face but his voice performance is incredible in this movie like he just can yeah. like move you with his just voice in this film and then nally portman is just she is a force to be reckoned with here, and there will be two more Natalie Portman movies popping up on this list because I was yeah. I'm a big fan of hers. Um, yeah. and uh, but yeah, Back to the Future is excellent. I want to see that new uh Michael J. Fox documentary on Apple TV Plus, that looks really good. Same, I need to see that, yeah, um, yeah, but it uh, but it's it's both of these films are, are absolutely fantastic. Um, but if I had to pick one personally. I have to go with what I believe is the greatest comic book movie ever made, and that's Fee for Vendetta. So yeah, <laughs> and it also can I just say it's scary. Like it is absolutely oh, yeah. like the movie's almost a horror movie at how relevant this movie is. Like it is almost terrifying how relevant it is. <laughs> like yeah, uh -huh. straight up. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Can't wait for Attack of the Clones to come up later with these more Anthony Portman movies on this list. Yeah, oh, right. No, yeah. No, <laughs> no, <for sure. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, 
uh, for me, I probably got to go with Back to the Future. I mean, Michael J. Fox is my favorite actor of all time. I love the guy, and and, and he came out recently. I think like within the last couple of days, someone was was doing an interview with him, and they they asked him if, if he thinks they're, they're ever going to make a remake of, of of Back to the Future. And he's like, well, at this point, just do it. Whatever you want, I don't care. I already got paid for it. Whatever you do, you like. I, but he's like, I don't really, like, really personally want to see it. But, but he's like, it's gonna happen someday. <laughs> so I don't so, think yeah. it will, though. I don't. I don't think know. It will. So you, you know never why? know. But, but yeah, we also said too. He said, I said maybe after Bob and Bob have have, have passed away because Bob Gale and then and then Robert Zemeckis he calls him Bob. So maybe after they're dead or something. But, but um. Yeah, and then my uh, brother recently he went over to to England for uh, in uh, it was last November, and he was actually there for for Guy Fox Day, and he wasn't sure if the people were were celebrating him or or if they were like shooting up all these fireworks like in like protest to, to like light them on fire because they, they don't like the guy. Like like I'm not not really sure he wasn't even sure even being over there, so. But yeah, I gotta go with with uh, Back to the Future. But but V for Vendetta is great, especially when uh, Natalie Portman makes the the uh, turn and she gets her head shaved and like like kind of goes goes down a lot darker path. That's when it gets really good for me. So so yeah. But but uh, Noah, what, what are you gonna go for here? I gotta agree with Michael and saying that V for Vendetta is probably like my favorite comic book film ever made. So I'm gonna have to vote for V for Vendetta. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. And Ashton, what are you gonna go for? Wow, I'm super surprised when I saw this pop up. I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna be like the only one that goes for V for Vendetta because I feel uh -huh. like usually it's Back to the Future. Like people just go nuts over it. And I I like it. it's nostalgic, it's yeah. goofy, it's so quotable, it's fun. But I love thrillers like I love and then political thriller like for me, that's, you know, really one of my genres. Like I'm a strange person like I like, you know, this is one of the reasons why I like Wolf's List. I see a lot more stuff that I generally like um, uh, than I normally see. But anyway, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, when I, I said Ashton, sorry to interrupt. When I said <laughs> Ashton, my, uh, my list, she was like, that's one of the best 64 lists I've seen, like, ever. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was yeah. so excited, but I was also like, this is going to be really hard, like, painfully hard. Yeah. Said, for sure. <laughs> um, but, yeah, yeah. For, Vendetta, for me, I, I'm excited to be able to, like, not say Back to the Future, honestly. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, it comes up a lot, but – but um, so with that, we have a tie, and how the tiebreaker works – you just start at the bottom of the ladder. The person at the bottom will have the tiebreaker. So it'll be Noah. You can put through whatever you want. You can change your your answer if you want. But which one do you want to put through? The Senate V for Vendetta. Let's go. Yeah. Right. V for Vendetta. For a lot of people, that, that that's probably an upset. But but who knows? About this panel split. So we got one flew over the cuckoo's nest up next against the Lion King. Oh. oh. <laughs> That's sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Can I pass? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, nope, you can't pass. Sorry. But <sighs> but um, it'll be Malcolm first, so what are you going to go for? Yeah, so two very similar movies. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, very similar. But, yeah, um, Blood Flow of a Cuckoo Nest is actually a big blind spot for me. Um, I was actually going to watch this. Um the other day because it has just been put on netflix for me but, but then i forgot to watch it and yeah <laughs> um, but yeah. i really love the lion king um it's great so lion king yeah uh wolf what are you, what are you gonna vote for yeah one floor of the cuckoo's nest i was introduced to uh like a few, couple of years ago i think like back during quarantine in 2020 like my uh either 2020 or 2019 or something like that. Um, my uh, mom was watching it and I sat down with her and watched it and I was blown away by this movie. Jack Nicholson's performance was excellent. I thought Nurse Ratchet, burn in hell. She is still <laughs> one of the most vile characters. Oh my God. Like seriously. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. 
this this movie is phenomenal and everyone needs to see it this is absolutely a masterpiece um but uh, <laughs> it's the lion king like that is to me maybe the greatest animated feature film ever like yeah. at, like the lion king to me is just you know with the whole like this, i i grew up with that and it really has a special place in my heart for my on my childhood and everything so i for me personally i would put in the lion king but man i wish one flew over the cuckoo's nest is going up against something else because that movie is fantastic yeah yeah well one flew over the cuckoo's nest it'll show up on, we're gonna have an uh, uh, a tournament that'll be a best movie set in a mental institution or a prison so that'll mm-hmm. be on there so <laughs> but um yeah for me also i think nurse ratchet is like one of one of the greatest uh villains i really like her as, as a villain i don't like the character but like the just like recognize how like how well she was portrayed i even like the the uh the, like ratchet series that they did on hulu with sarah paulson i thought that was pretty good too so so uh but but yeah the lion king is an all-timer though yeah it's like one of the the best animated movie like ever made and and especially all the music like every song is a banger like every single one and there's like like really great lessons to be learned there's like um there's like a little joke that's like kind of inside we have this town where i live called caldwell where like we're like there's really not much crime because i live in, in idaho but the one town is like where the ghettos and like the like crime is so they made this meme that's like like with like mufasa and simba sitting next to each other and and mufasa was like you see um um, everything the light touches will be yours. He's like, "What's that? That shouty place over there?" He's like, "Like that's Caldwell. You must never go there." <laughs> so, so yeah, <laughs> it's like a, a like local thing, but but yeah, uh, the Lion King for sure for me. <laughs> so, but but uh, uh, Noah, what are you gonna go for? So when I was working in retail, I picked up a like really on sale, a really cool like collector's edition of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Mm -hmm. But I have not watched it yet, so I feel like I can't really vote for this. I'm gonna I am gonna drive over there this week and like and like force and tie you down, like put it in your Blu ray player just to make sure you watch it. Yeah. (laughs) I I agree. I agree. I really wanted to, but yeah. Keep forgetting. Yeah do the clockwork orange. You're gonna do the tape over the eyes and everything as well. Yeah, Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but with that said, so, so is that like vote for the Lion King or? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll just I guess so. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Well, well, Ashton, what are you gonna go for? So upset, you guys. I just <sighs> um, <clears throat> I <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna get people really mad here. I think the the Lion King's overrated. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. I just feel like everybody loves The Lion King. To be fair, I am not a huge Disney fan. I don't really care much about Disney. Um, it's just not my thing. If I have to go Disney, definitely The Lion King's like up there for sure. And there's the nostalgia and there's all the stuff and the music's banging for sure. I mean, uh-huh. you know, like I, I'm tapping my foot the whole way through for sure. You know, I was excited to show my kid the movie. Like, there's all this, but to even compare it to the masterpiece that is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, like it's disturbing to me. Like it's upsetting. I'm personally offended that not one other person would choose this over The Lion King because it is like an incredible, incredible just concept. And then as a film, like the way they were able to capture that this idea, I mean, you have the sadism of the nurse ratchet and like you have him, you have Jack Nicholson, who's incredible. Like I fell in love with him in this. And you see all these people that I feel like during this time, what was it? 70, when did this film come out? 70 something, right? I mean, we were still like mental illness. That was such a taboo subject. And it has taken society like until like still right now, don't treat people with mental illness with the respect that I feel like Jack Nicholson's character did in this film. Like just this lighthearted, like way of just like seeing and approaching and loving 
everybody just for what they are. Like, I think the whole oh, yeah. idea behind this film is just the, the lighthearted look at like people are different and people act differently and, and it's okay. Like you don't have to fix everybody, you know, everybody like deserves love for what they are. And then you have the antithesis of that and that's nurse ratchet, you know, and she's like the sad sadistic evil person. I just feel like if people were like that, just the, this film, Oh, it's beautiful. I'm sorry. And, uh, oh my God. Hold up. I just realized something before, Ro before Ross goes. I just realized something. So I wanted to clarify because I knew they were both really close. So I looked at my letterbox and technically speaking, one flew over the cuckoo's nest is above the Lion King. So Ooh, because of okay. that, I will change my vote to one flew over the cuckoo's nest to keep oh, things yeah. to keep switching. things interesting. So if Ross votes one flew over the cuckoo's nest, it becomes a tie to keep things yeah. interesting. So, come on. Come on. We'll allow it. As long as the vote hasn't gone through yet, that's fine. So I'm <laughs> just going to be, you know, what I'm gonna go with one flew over the cuckoo's nest because like yes. I'm going through every single best <laughs> picture winner and then like Jordan and then that and then like you actually gave me PTSD with the Lion King Jordan during Austin's stream when you know, like, hat on your Lion King hat and you accidentally sp <laughs> spread the confetti everywhere. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you still getting it out? Are you still getting it out? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm still getting it out. Like, the little corner over that way that you can't see right off screen, there's about 100 pieces of confetti still over there. So, <laughs> and when was yeah. his birthday? When was his birthday? <laughs> his birthday was, was uh, March 30th, I, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah, still there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, 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 like, like this movie has has like so many like actors who were now like up and coming that are legends now. You know, like yeah. uh like uh Danny DeVito and stuff, and then like funny story is that now like at the Oscars, Jack Nicholson loses for Chinatown, and this guy turns around to him and he goes, Jack, aren't you mad about losing? And he goes, Nah. Next year, I'm a shoe in for Cuckoo's Nest. Oh. <laughs> nice, nice. Yep, and you end up winning. So yeah, Cuckoo's Nest is, a, is one of the greatest films ever made. So well, yeah, I should have won for both, but yeah, but yeah, but, uh, but it keeps things interesting because now we're at a tie again. Yep, the, and the tie goes to Ashton. So oh, you can't what do you switch know? it up, or you can do what you want. <laughs> what do you know? The Lion King. No, I'm just telling you. Yeah. <laughs> one flew you for the Cuckoo's Nest. You guys are so <laughs> excited. Right. Yes. And, there we and, go. You know, and you know, and yeah. even if even if the Lion King was above for me, I think I would have still switched my vote only because like I feel like the Lion King does get enough love on these tournament fights. I don't feel one floor of the cuckoo's nest gets enough love on the tournament fights yeah. specifically. No, it never gets a spot. It's never yeah. I never yeah. it never gets a spot. <laughs> Yeah. And also, people. Yeah, I'm it. not mad. I'm not sure. mad. You guys, I felt the love there. I felt the but love. There, yeah. there's always a question that, like, I actually had now, like, re rewatching it. It, it is like she was great in Earth Ratchet, but, but, like, what, what makes her performance lead? She's not yeah. a lead in that movie. Oh, oh so no. no. What you mean? What you mean to say is that you can feel the love tonight? Yeah. Right. Oh, well. Nice. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, if he would have had Austin on, he's not an animation guy either. So I think maybe he would have voted for Cuckoo's Nest also, probably. Mm -hmm. But, huh. but um, next we have oh, 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 fiction. So here we go. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. This is not as hard for me, but but for both like, of know, these sure should be making it through. <laughs> yep, <laughs> that's just the oh randomizer. So and. It, and of course, Wolf, you have to go first because it's a hard one. So but if I do well, fuck uh -huh. this game. <laughs> who who did this thing? Who, uh, to quote nope. Galaxy Quest, whoever wrote this episode yeah. should die. No, um, <laughs> but <clears throat> oh god. So this is this is a hard one because they are both. I want you to know because you know we do this on top sixty four tournaments. We say which one is going to go. Whichever one of these leaves, I will say one of my top ten movies of all time is gone because Ooh. both of these movies are in my top 10 oh, of all time and not goodness. one of them are going to make and not one of them are going to make it through this is just nope. this is i can't handle this <laughs> oh my god okay so you know what we can vote for any reason yep there is another tarantino movie coming up here on this list soon. Pulp Fiction, spoiler alert, is in my top five of all time, while Eternal Sunshine is in my top ten of all time. However, Eternal Sunshine, I don't feel gets 
enough love on this on these tournaments. Pulp Fiction's always getting like voted voted on. It's always making it through the next rounds and all that type of stuff, and it's always making it through like the finals and championships and yada yada and all that good stuff. Yeah. So, because of that, I want to show some love to Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind because I feel like s- several people need to watch that movie, and like it's just a masterpiece. So, <laughs> yeah, Eternal Sunshine. Yeah, well, Eternal Sunshine does get a lot of love when we have Jordan Owens on. J.P. Oak, that's his favorite movie of all time. So, so he's a fan. I, but, oh, I can but, understand why. Yeah, it's yeah. Amazing. And I'm kind of a fan too, but but like I haven't really yet like um, found the love for Eternal Sunshine that everyone else has. I like it, and and the first time that I saw it, I was kind of like, oh, I don't even know if I really like it. But I decided to give it a rewatch to see if I could appreciate it more, and I did. Like, but. But even still, I'm just kind of like, like, oh, like it's good, but for me, it doesn't really, like, it's not great for me. It's just good. So, but, but Pulp Fiction to me is an absolute masterpiece. I remember, like, uh, the first time that I watched this, like, there's another one that I saw about four years ago. And when I, I watched it, my jaw was like on the floor. I was just like, like, oh my gosh. Like, like there's just certain movies where, while you're watching it, that, like, you just know. You're watching like one of the greatest movies ever made, like, like, like just an absolute masterpiece. And and like I said, like the way that it's made, like how on the segments are like out of order, and like the way that they all play into each other, and like it's just and, and then the the dialogue and just like the the uh, some of the the like camera shots and like all that stuff, the music, like it just works just like really really well for me. So I gotta go Pulp Fiction, like it's my favorite Tarantino movie so i gotta go with that but but uh i was gonna shout out a couple people in the the, the chat but brian actually put earlier <laughs> since wolfman is a massive tarantino fan i wonder how many will appear well we got one so we'll see how many mm-hmm. more will, will appear and mm-hmm. then also my my girl sarah yeah she's just saying hi to everyone and, and stuff so thanks for tuning in sarah but uh, you may be you may be surprised brian that's awesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh We'll go to Noah. Uh, which one you want to vote for? Well, this is actually a really difficult one. Um, I just because I'm, I'm feeling like that feeling mood, I guess tonight I'm gonna go for Eternal Sunshine. Yeah, sounds good. Um, Ashton, which one you got? Um, I just I don't want to say too much, but I. <clears throat> Pulp Fiction is not my favorite Tarantino movie. Let, let me just say that. I, I'm not going to go too far to tear it apart like Lion King. I might think it's a little bit overrated. Um, I think it's great. I just, I am a very emotional based movie watcher. Like I, I don't have a, like this is TMI, but I don't like access emotions very easily just in the real world. I feel like I don't cry easily. So I do like most of my crying during films. So like I rate a lot of my like film watching based on like the, uh, like the emotional reaction I get from it. Um, I can appreciate that. Yeah. like from, from like just a filmmaker's perspective, like Pulp Fiction is incredible, of course. Like I wouldn't sit here and say, oh, it was a piece of crap film. Like that'd be nuts, you know, throw me off the yeah. show. Obviously <laughs> it's a fantastic film, but I like, I just see eternal sunshine pop up and I already am like, I, I might weep, you know? It's just such a beautiful <laughs> film. So I'm gonna have to go with that one. Yeah, sounds good. Well, Ross, I actually watched Eternal Sunshine for the first time since I was a kid, you know, like this year. And then, like, I loved it, you know, like, so, yeah, I'm going to go with this. And then Ashton and your stupid Barnes & Noble right by your house have this listed under comedy. (laughs) Yeah. What the hell? We'll we'll go fix that. We're going to go fix that. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, we'll update you all later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the, very, the very first time I ever watched this movie, I thought it was going to be a comedy because I had Jim Carrey, and then I was yeah, like, "That's probably why they put it there." Somebody was just like, "Oh, Jim Carrey! <laughs> oh, Jim Carrey it must be a comedy." Yeah, yeah. yeah. I fell oh. in love with Jim Carrey in this, and then ever since then, I actually revisited his comedies, and now he's one of my favorite actors of all time. Yeah, yeah, same here. Yeah, but but uh, Malcolm, what are you going to go for? Um. Yeah, I, I do like both of these movies, but I'm going. 
just going to go Pulp Fiction because I do think it's a better movie. Yeah. Well, we got a couple of votes for it, but I think it's, it, it'll be Eternal Sunshine. Hey, yeah. the underdogs are making yeah. it. I like this. Which I'm shocked. Yeah, yeah Pulp, the, uh, Pulp Fiction didn't move forward because that's a heavy favorite on tournament fights. But I mean, to but, be fair, um, both Eternal Sunshine and Pulp Fiction are heavy favorites. So. Right. Yeah, they kind of are. But we we have Lord of the Rings. Oh, so to be fair, um, uh, Wolf had the, the entire trilogy. We just picked one. So. Yeah, so so this kind of represents the entire trilogy, but yeah, I was yeah. gonna say I can't ever rate them as one film. I'm sorry. So I was, yeah. I'm going to look at this as the entire thing. Like, yeah, yeah. That's how that's how I do it too. But I wanted to make room for like more films on my 64, so yeah. I ended up just doing. Yeah. Um, but it's going up against Amelie, so um, oof. yeah. So it it will be I think me first, uh, and. I haven't seen Amelie yet. Like it's just one of my my blind spots. But I do want to see it because I, I heard that that's a, that, uh, speaking of, of emotional based movies. I heard it's very very emotional because I know Ken Knapsack from the movie True Showdown. This is his favorite movie of all time. He he talks about this movie all the uh, time about how much he loves it. But I just uh, I have about like six or seven blind spots, so I just haven't gotten to it. But I will. I will see it. But but the Lord of the Rings, like, like all three Lord of the Rings are, are in my top ten movies of all time. Like they're that good to me. And yeah, like it's just kind of hard to separate them. For me, I kind of go two towers. That's if I had to pick one. But I mean, like I really like them all. So uh, and also, uh, Lord of the Rings has the best friendship ever put to screen. Period. And the story, Sam and Frodo, like it's just an incredible friendship. So. Uh, like they're willing to die for each other and like just go to great lengths for each other. So yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, Lord of the Rings. Uh, uh, Noah, what are you gonna go with here? So I've watched Emily, but I haven't yet like rated it on Letterboxd only because it's it was such a strange watch for me. So I'm wanting to rewatch it again. And I'm, I think I'm going to vote for Lord of the Rings mainly because I just have a lot of, like, I guess, a lot of good memories with it, with my family, having, like, marathons and stuff with them and stuff like that. So Same I'm going to go yeah. for Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Well, Ashton? This is go an for? easy one for me. Lord of the Rings. Like, I'm a huge, like, Tolkien fan. I, I, I don't know. Like, I just, yeah, easy. And not that Amelie yep. is not good. It's good. It's just I saw it pop up, and I'm like, eh, not that hard. Lord of the Rings. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, Ross, what do you say? Uh, Lord of the Rings. You know, I do like Amelie, but Lord of the Rings. You know, I watched part of Amelie, yeah, so Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Uh, Malcolm, what do you got here? So one of my pet peeves when it comes to lists is when people go, oh, yeah, I'm just going to put the entire trilogy in one spot. And <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, Same here. I'm kind of that but way too. That being said, I haven't seen Emily, so I can't vote against Lord of the Rings for that reason, so I'm going to go Return of the King because that's supposedly that's there. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Uh, Wolf. Uh, yeah, so Amelie is one of those movies that is like uh, – Pretty much what it's about is this, this girl name. It's hard. To, it's, honestly, I can't even really. I don't even really want to describe it because I want you guys to experience it. It's it's a hard movie to describe, but yeah. it's. But all I'll say is it's pretty much the movie equivalent of a warm hug. That's what it is, and it's and it's really really good. And like the colors are beautiful. This is just a absolutely beautiful movie that gets me. Um, it's it's a French film. So it does have subtitles. It's very fast paced. Uh, it's but it's also like just like I watched it again recently to prepare for this. I even got a little DVD thing here that like slides out. You, and this is actually a rare find. You can't find this DVD in much places, but I found it so, uh, yeah. like a like an Fye or something like that. And it was a uh, it was pretty cool. I was uh, really uh, happy I got that. But yeah, it's it's a it's a really phenomenal film. But that being said, I'm sorry, Amelie, you are going up against the greatest cinematic achievement to ever exist in cinema. So 
<laughs> it, back in 2003, I was there. This movie has such a special place in my heart. I was there going to the theater. My parents took me to the theater to see Return of the King. I wasn't really familiar. I watched a few movies and all that stuff. I grew up with a few movies, all that stuff. And it was like all like I was like really, really young. So I, movies weren't like a big, big part of my life. I sit down in the theater. I watch Return of the King. And I fell in love from, with cinema right then and there. Right then and there, I said, this is a beautiful, like, and I was a kid. And I was like, this thing is a beautiful work of art. And like, the, what is this? I want to explore more of this. And then that's when I started to grow my love of cinema. And so this movie has like solidified that. And the, and the extended cuts are even just better too. Like, oh yeah. Like they add more layers to the story and everything like that. And so, yeah, for me, I definitely got to go return of the King here. I mean, hell I'm literally learning Elvis right now. I'm literally learning it. Oh my God. I am that big of a Lord of the Rings fan. So I am. So yeah, I am definitely going to say return of the King. It'll be a heavy favorite for me in this tournament. Yeah. And like one little nerdy thing about uh, about me too is that that so I'm a big theme park guy so I'm I'm planning to go when they, when they open the the new um called Epic Universe for for Universal Studios down in Florida they're going to open in 2025 I'm going to go in 2026 because I want some time for the, for the crowds to to die down but they're opening up five different lands they've only announced four and there's a fifth mystery land and there's some heavy rumors that it might be a Lord of the Rings land. And I think that would be freaking insane because I imagine going to like Rivendell and oh, like the Shire and all oh that stuff. And like, like, like experience it the way they do the Harry Potter world and all that stuff would be incredible. So like fingers crossed that it's going to be Lord of the Rings. I really Look, it wouldn't stuff. be nothing like going to the actual Shire in New Zealand. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's my yeah. dream trip right there. My girlfriend's yeah, watching this right now. Us, in We're Zealand. doing that for our honeymoon. We're going to New Zealand just so we can go to the Shire and stuff like that. And Mike, read the chat. Room. Read, read the chat what Andrew said. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. So here, just to, just to see Return of the King. Wow. Yeah. So he, he loves he Amelie. Loves Amelie but, though. But he, I knew you'd love Amelie. Yeah, that seems like his kind of movie. He wasn't seeing all the Lord of the Rings movies. Like that just blows my mind. I don't know. I know. Like I understand if like your opinions. Like maybe you don't like it. Maybe it's not for you. But like not see it. That's like that yeah. seems. <laughs> Okay, Andrew, stop what you're doing and go watch it right now. It's Literally, like, stop well, watching the stream and go watch. Return we'll the sacrifice game. the view, like it's it's fine, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah. So, up, up, up. next we got signs going up against a thin red lines, and we are back on to Noah first. So, what are you gonna go for? Okay, well, I'm sorry, Michael. I I I do not like signs. I think signs is. Just not a good movie, in my opinion. I think the whole water <laughs> alien thing is really stupid, and I think Thin Red Line is my favorite war film. So, Thin Red Line sounds good. Andrew says he'll he'll watch it soon. So, so yeah. <laughs> but but Ashton, what what are you gonna go for here? Um, you know, I'm sorry, Michael. I just think the Thin Red Line is a really stupid film. Um, I just didn't. <laughs> Really? So, um, I'm gonna have to go with signs. Oh, interesting. Yeah, huh? I've never seen Thin Red Line. Hot take. I've okay. never seen I was gonna it. say that's a hot take. I'm like, what? I never, <laughs> I'm just proud being old Noah down there. Um, no, uh, haven't seen Thin Red Line. I'm sure it's great. Um, seen signs <laughs> actually. I like, I really like it. <laughs> I do. Um, yeah. and I never see that on list, so I appreciated that. So, going with that one. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, Ross. I have the thin red line, but I've never seen it. But I do like signs a lot, so I'm gonna go with signs. Even my dad, who doesn't like movies, likes signs. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Uh, yeah, my dad hates everything, right, Ashton? <laughs> yeah, yeah, painful. <laughs> yeah. Well, Malcolm, what do you say about this match? Um, yeah, I actually watched Signs for the first time a few weeks ago when we did Yakin Phoenix movies for Rankin. Um. It's it's good, um, but I really love the Thin Red Line. Um, like, I know a lot of people argue that Saving Prophet Ryan um, should have won, won Best Picture this year, but I think Thin Red Line was better than Saving Prophet Ryan, so I'm going to go Thin Red Line. Yeah. So, 
actually lied. I watched four movies for this because because we started late. I had Thin Red Line in the background, and I was able to get through almost all of it. I, I still have maybe about th- like thirty minutes left. The movie's long. It's like it's like almost three hours. It is. But, yeah, but but so I'm gonna finish it tonight. But but it was really really good, and like like so many like like just big names and big stars that keep popping up. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's another guy. There's another person. Like, and, and so. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's really, really good. And, and I think Signs is good. Like, I, I really like that. I remember, so like growing up in 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 a Mormon household where, where like we weren't really even allowed to watch R-rated movies. I mean, I didn't really watch R-rated movies until I was like a teenager. And, and even then I started to like sneak them behind my parents' back and just, just watch them. But, but um, uh, I remember going to see Signs that's PG-13 with my, uh, with one of my uh, very... Goody Two Shoes brother and who like th- like doesn't watch like really horror at, at, at all and he was like nearly traumatized when, uh, <laughs> watching this movie so like it's kind of funny but but um uh, I think the movie's really really good though I mean I think it like I don't know like I have mixed feelings about the whole water thing like like why would you, when aliens come to a planet that's like like more um water than than land like it doesn't really make sense but but. Uh, but uh, whatever. <laughs> but uh, but a thin red line though it was was incredible. Like like I think that after seeing this, like I actually kind of I like this movie um better than Saving Private Ryan. I think like this movie is really really good and like it's very well written, very well shot, acted, like all that stuff. So no wonder it was was nominated for an Oscar. So yeah, I'm gonna go the thin red line. Uh, yeah. and, you, and you and you skipped over me, so I'm gonna have oh. to. Oh, oh yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're good. I do that from time to time when I'm like running it, especially when I skip the person whose list this is. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> but um, but yeah, yeah. Um, you can go ahead. Wolf. But no, I I agree with both of you that Thin Red Line uh, is the superior war film to Saving Private Ryan. That's why Saving Private Ryan, when I do my 128, it will be on there. But Thin Red Line, though, is my. Uh, favorite war film. That's why it's on my 64 because that is, I think, the greatest war film of all time. That film is just a masterpiece. And yeah, the cast has uh, Jim Cavazell, however you say his name. I know him. He's in a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, Sean Penn, yeah. Nick Nolte, um, Adrian Brody, George Clooney, John Cusack, uh, Woody, Woody Harrelson, yeah. uh, freaking Jared Leto, John C. Riley, Tim Blake Nelson, yeah, like the I'm list nuts. goes on and on. And John Travolta's in there, like it just keeps on going on and on and on. Like the the cast is insane, and yeah, it's I feel like it's one of the best depictions of war as hell, as far as like just to just just like showing you that war truly is hell, and yeah. I feel like it is just a really, really good way of showing just the brutality of war and what it can cause on, uh, on people. Uh, but to me, so signs, I know y'all have your issues with it, all that stuff. But when I was younger and I watched this film, not only did it scare the bejeebies out of me, but I also remember it's the film that made me want to become a filmmaker. And the reason why is because when it was an alien film, I just thought, oh, okay, an alien horror movie, it's just going to be aliens killing people. I was impressed at the fact that it was a deeper movie about faith, about family, about redemption, about all this stuff, and like all these deeper interwoven themes written into the movie. And when I was seeing that portrayed on screen, for like as when I was younger, I was like, I want to make that. And that is what made me want to become a filmmaker is this movie. And so it's my favorite M. Night Shyamalan movie because of those themes and everything that addressed it. Just And also my favorite actor of all time, Joaquin Phoenix is in there, kills it in the role as his brother. Uh, Mel Gibson is excellent in this. Um, so, yeah, for me, just on a personal level, I love the Thin Red Line, but I'm going to have to go with science here. Uh, yeah, and and M Night Shyamalan he just announced that the next movie is going to be called Trap. I don't really know really anything about it because it, it usually like he doesn't reveal much. But but I did watch an interview saying that like like he just wishes he could get these movies out faster because he has at least ten to fifteen movies already written and like ready to go. He just wants, I just wishes he could just 
just make them faster but he's like unfortunately each one's one usually takes about a year to like put together and to make and all that stuff so so he has to take his time but but still so yeah we'll be seeing a lot from him probably so but uh so malcolm which which one did you vote for again i'm trying to remember he voted for the thin red line okay he voted for that one then, then it'll be the thin red lineup okay i just making sure we didn't have a tie <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, red line. So up next, we have old boy. Wait, 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 uh, wait, do we have a tie? What did Ross vote for? I voted for signs. Voted for it. Voted and then for signs. Did, didn't didn't Ash vote for signs? You voted for signs, uh, but, yeah. but so that would be a tie because Noah voted for uh for thin, thin red line. line. Malcolm voted for thin thin red line. line. And Jordan did. Yeah. Oh, and you voted for signs, right, Wolf? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, actually, you do have a tie, so it'll be Ross. So, what do you want? What do you want to? I'm gonna go then? for signs, signs, you know, because I haven't Ooh. seen Thin Red Line yet. Switch it up. Ooh. There we go. I didn't know. I, I wrote it for signs the whole time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, all right. Sounds good. Then signs it is. <laughs> yeah, that's a good catch on the tie. But uh, usually I have a co-host that that'll help me keep track of stuff. But. Uh, but we have old boy going to oh, list. God. Ooh. Which I just saw that they're 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 just now um going to release a like like some kind of anniversary edition for old boy. I saw the trailer for it and it looked really good. Yeah, yeah Neon is there. releasing it, which is really cool. Yeah, so yeah. It was like acquired yeah, the so cool. rights for it. Yeah, so uh this time it'll be Ashton first. So which one are you gonna go for? Um, so old boy is a blind spot of mine. Um, Ooh. Mm. list is like one of the greatest films ever made, in my opinion. So I'm gonna have to go with Schindler's List. Yeah, uh, Ross. Schindler's List is in my top ten. So Schindler's List, but old boy is really good action. If you like twisted movies action, then you'll love old boy. Well, you know I yeah. like twisted movies, so. Oh, <laughs> it's twisted. All right. Yeah. There, there's a certain thing that happens that you think is CGI. Yeah, it ain't CGI. Yeah, boy, yeah. Boy, boy. yeah I think yeah. I know what you're talking about, but but uh Malcolm, what are you gonna go for? Um yeah, I haven't seen either version of Old Boy. Um Ooh. I'm go plan I do plan on going to. I've heard so a lot about it, but I'll go go Schindler's list. Well maybe for the first time you you may want to check out this new anniversary edition they're putting out. That could be an interesting way to see it for the first time. But, but Wolf, what are you, what are you gonna go for? So yeah, this is oh man, this is hard because Old Boy is one of the greatest. I I unfortunately, guys, make it available. I mean, they are making it available now. I don't condone watching movies on like one of those websites or whatever. But that's how I had to watch Old Boy because it's literally yeah. not available. It's not available. On, like yeah. you can't rent rent it on vod you can't like buy it anywhere on vod all this type of stuff and it's just it's so unfortunate that like they don't have anything like that so now it's so happy that like neon is going to be releasing a physical version of this film for people to actually buy and go out and buy it guys because if it's in 4k i'm getting the 4k because this movie is beautiful it's fucked up it is a like masterpiece of revenge that's what this movie is. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen all of Park Chan Wook's films. I've only seen two or like three. No, maybe three. I, f I forget. But so far, this is my favorite Park Chan Wook film, and it is absolutely exceptional. That being said, I think there's a strong argument to be made. While it's not like my personal favorite on this list, it's between this and one other film we're going to bring up here. Schindler's List might be the single greatest made movie of all time as far as just writing cinematography directing editing like every single thing here is like pretty much perfection i would argue it might be the greatest film ever made like in that sense i I will definitely rewatch Old Boy again more than Schindler's List because I I, I rewatch Schindler's List maybe like once every ten years. And I'm like, why the fuck did I watch that again? Like, it's so devastating. Yeah, sure. and it's just like I'm like I'm just like I'm just like I can't watch it too many times. And so, but that being said, though, 
it's just the highs of Schindler's List are so high for me. I'm going to have to give it to that. So, Yeah. You made out during Schindler's List? Like, for some reason, I always think of Seinfeld when, when, when he does that and, like, his parents are complaining. <laughs> like, like, how can you make out during a movie like that? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, Schindler's List, yeah, it might be, like, like the single greatest movie ever made. I mean, but, but I mean, for whatever reason, like I am one of those people that can go back to it. I've probably seen it four or five times, but, but, um, but you sadistic asshole. It, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. A little sadistic like that, but, but, but like old boy is also really hard to watch though. Like if you, if you find out some of the things that, yeah. that like that are revealed, I don't want to give anything away because I think, I think the best way is just going blind because you find some things that you're like oh my gosh that is so fucked up that is like oh my gosh and the way that it's shot too like like just think of like if you've seen daredevil the, the hallway scene there, there's a scene that, that that like rivals that maybe even beats it in 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 old boy that's like really really cool like a big one takes fight scene uh where he's taking on all these guys in the hallway but but um yeah it, it's just really really cool and I'm just big into Korean cinema. Like I've been, been, been in a mode where, where I want to go and um, check out more Korean cinema. Like I, I watched. Um, oh, now I'm like totally spacing, but it's the, um, the guy that. Uh, oh, for, I don't know. I can't even think of, like what I, I won the, I won the, the movie that won the Oscar recently, the Korean one, the, like the Parasite. That oh, Parasite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so so um, the director of of Parasite, I watched the one where he where uh, um, he has different monsters and like people can control the different monsters. Like like I forget what that one's called too. Like I'm and I'm really like kind of space. Oh, the uh, the host, I think, right? Yeah, the, yeah, the host. Yeah. yeah, so I watched the the host recently for the first time. That movie's phenomenal, and like I want to get into on HBO Max, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you haven't seen that, that one's great, and like it. It's even made me want to get into like some Korean, like even like like some Korean TV shows. Like they got some some really cool ones on on streaming and, and that kind of stuff. Because I just think think that that like uh, Korean cinema they've been killing it because they don't have a lot of the restrictions that like say like say like definitely North Korea, but then even China like they have a lot of restrictions. And so there's a lot of Asian countries that aren't able to do the same things that that like that they do in South Korea, where they just given the freedom to just be creative and, and make all these really cool. Uh, uh, a cinematic and like masterpieces, are, which I would call a, a lot of them. So yeah, I'm gonna go with Old Boy here. So, so yeah, if you haven't seen it, go see it. So, um, uh, yeah, and uh, Noah, what are you gonna go for? Well, I haven't seen Old Boy. Uh, from the things that I have, like like little clips and stuff that I have seen of it, it's not like on the top of my list to watch, but. I hear it's good, so I'll trust you guys on that. But I'll still, I'm still gonna have to vote for Shinra's list. Yeah, but, but yeah, Bong Joon Ho. For some reason, I couldn't think of of his name. That's who it. But yeah. Well, well this one's this one's Park Chan Wook. But. Well, yeah, yeah, but that's just who I was trying to like think of when I thought of Parasite. So, oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, and the and the host, yeah. Ooh. But we got we got Scream Ooh. going up against. Uh, there will wow. be blood. Oh, wow. That's a hard one. That's yeah. Really <laughs> uh, it, it'll be Ross first, so. Okay, I'm gonna go, I do love Scream. Don't get me wrong. It's some, probably my top five favorite horror movies, but I'm going to go with There Will Be Blood, you know, which is one of the greatest movies ever made. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, the Chris Good. Scott thinks it's one of the worst movies ever made. Right, <laughs> yeah. He's weird like that. I don't know. He's got some hot takes, but... <laughs> um, uh, Malcolm, what would you say here? If he's there, I don't, I don't know if he is. He may have stepped away for a minute, but we can come back to him. Uh, Wolf. So it's funny that we are doing this matchup because I just said there's another film on here that I think is tied with Shinner's This as the single greatest film ever made when it comes to like writing, directing, acting, uh, cinematography, everything, score, all of that. And that is There Will Be Blood. I think that this is honestly, as far as like, it's not high on my top. Like, it's somewhere in the middle, somewhere around there on my top sixty-four. It's not like super high up, but somewhere like midway there. But when it comes to like 
filmmaking, I think this thing beats a lot of other films. Like, this thing is high up there. I mean, just the acting alone. Like, um, why can't Daniel Day Lewis? Like, gives what arguably might be the greatest performance in cinema history. And then you know Paul Dano is an amazing actor when he can almost out act Daniel Day Lewis. Like that like he's right. that good. Like he's incredible. And um but that being said, nostalgia, personal stuff can come, sometimes kind of win. And I'm feeling, you know, emotions like no was saying earlier. And uh Scream is the film that was responsible for making me fall in love with horror. Because I remember when I watched it as a kid, I was like blown away at like the meta ness. I was blown away at just like it, how like scary it was at the time for me. All this stuff, and um, I know my girlfriend's watching this, but Nev Campbell on that was one of my celebrity crushes at the time, and I just absolutely um, like <laughs> loved her and all the yeah. other. And like just this, this movie made such an impact on my life. I'm literally wearing my Ghostface shirt right now to honor Scream, <laughs> and so I have to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to give it to Scream this time. Yeah, yeah, but, but I remember like Ash and I, we actually like had a 20 minute debate on that. Like, whose yeah. face is that on the poster? Remember that, Ashton? Remember that night mm-hmm. that we had that conversation? Oh yeah, Drew Barrymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought it was Nev yeah, Campbell too. I think so too. But mm-hmm. Mike, what do you think it is? <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, I think I think that's Neff Campbell, but I'm not gonna be debated. I think it's Drew Barrymore, but I don't know. Yeah, I guess somewhere you could probably look that up. But, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, for me, so there will be blood. It's actually a big blind spot for me. I started watching it once, and and I got through about about ten minutes of it. The first ten minutes, and you you see him like like digging down in. Uh, like in an oil well, a kind of thing, like in this in this big hole. But the, but then I had something that I had to go do, and I, I haven't gone back. So I need to go back to it. So so, but but I'm kind of with you, Wolf. Like like Scream is my favorite horror franchise of all time, and it, and yeah, it, it's the movie that that just made me fall in love with with horror as well. I think, and 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 yeah, the, like just like the. This movie is just so well written, like the the um, dialogue, the the just the the themes that it has, like like just so many different things, and like even the the um, the ghost face uh, as like a, a um, horror villain, he's one of the cooler ones. He just looks really cool. Uh, so like I've I've been ghost faced multiple times for Halloween, uh, and uh, this movie makes me appreciate like some. Some like maybe like actors that like outside of this franchise maybe aren't so great like like a Jamie Kennedy or like uh, like uh, David Arquette or like some of those guys you know but but like when this series like they all shine like like just everyone Skeet Ulrich just some of those those guys but but um yeah so this series is great and there's always a debate to be had as to how you actually rank all the the screen movies for me. Th- it's either number one or number two, but it kind of flip flops because I really like Scream Two a lot. I'm a big, a big uh, fan of Scream Two, but but yeah, I'll, I'll vote for Scream. Uh, Noah, what do you say? I feel kind of bad in saying this, but I think, in my personal opinion, both Scream and There Will Be Blood are slightly overrated. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense, though. <laughs> I do enjoy Scream, and I don't yeah. enjoy There Will Be Blood, so I would pick Scream. Yeah, that's fair. I'm Ashton. Oh, you go that's with? painful. That's so painful. Um, <laughs> um, so There Will Be Blood, although I did find it to be actually really emotional, um, this is one that I just like think is such fantastic filmmaking and acting. I mean, this like put Paul Dano on my radar, like for sure. I was like, who is this guy who can like, like he said, like even compete with Daniel Day Lewis? This is insane. Um, I like absolutely love it. So, um, and then Scream, yeah, same thing. I knew like Wolf, the second this popped up, I'm like, Wolf and I are going to be in pain because I think we feel the same, like about both of these, like 
both agree that There Will Be Blood was like one of the best films ever made. And we are like horror lovers and screams like at the top of my list as well. It's the first like scary movie that I saw and it was fun. And now it's like so like nostalgic and exciting and gosh, it's super hard for me. But I feel like I'm going to have to go with There Will Be Blood. Um, I just think it's a better film. It's a better film. So I'm going to go with that. Yeah, that sounds good. And then uh, we'll go back to Malcolm uh, and give him a vote. And what do you say about this matchup, Malcolm? Um, yeah, I quickly Googled who was on the screen post. The answer came up as Drew, as Drew Barrymore. Ah, um, <gasps> uh, okay. The debate wins. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, see, Google's useful for some things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some things, yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, I, I like There'll Be Blood enough, um, but I really love Scream, um, and yeah, I'm going to go Scream. Yeah, sounds good. So uh, it'll be Scream. Uh, uh, let's see. Up next, we got Goodfellas against Dead Poet Society. Oh, Ooh, my dad was, God. I love this matchup. He's oh. big fans of both of these. So. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it'll, it'll be, be Malcolm first. So, what are you going to go for? Um, yeah, I mean, I re do really love Goodfellas. I do think it's a good movie. Um, but it does show up here, I mean, for good reasons. So, I'm going to um, go for the Dead Part Society. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, Wolf. Yeah, yeah, this is very, very close because one of these is number 16. One of these is like 20, like, either 20 i think like 20 on my list or something or 22 i have to look at where it is but it's very very close so it's neck and neck with it with each other like this is a very very close matchup for me but personally speaking dead poet society has like touched me more it's more personal to me i literally want to get a tattoo on my wrist that says carpe diem so every time i look down at my wrist i always remember to see today and that'll be like something I want to get on my tattoo. I mean, uh, Noah's, I went to high school with him. His mom always said, you know, Carpe Diem too. And that was a big personal thing to me. And that was like, so that was a big personal theme of Dead Poet Society. And this movie to me, just, it it's very beautiful. I mean, yeah, Goodfellas is the greatest gangster film ever made, period. But I just think that, there's something about Dead Post Society. Plus, I also want a Robin Williams versus Robin Williams matchup because we're gonna because yeah. you know we're gonna because if depending on what Goodwill Hunting goes up against, if it can actually make it, then uh, then Goodwill yeah. then we could get two of them on here. Yeah. Well, I uh, thank you, Wolf. That uh, Goodfellas is the the greatest gangster movie ever made. It's better than The Godfather. Sorry, Malcolm. <laughs> I know that The Godfather is Malcolm's favorite movie of all time, I think. But but um, uh, but to each their own. Uh, but um, but Dead Poet Society, like, I kind of want to give some love. Like it doesn't show up here all that much, and it's really really good. It's my my dad's favorite movie of all time. He literally has this this uh, this wooden sign in his room that says Carpe Diem, and then I got him this this shirt that that says. Um, to forget Robin Williams' character's name, but it but it has his name like um um on it like the something something school for boys or whatever, and that, and it, and it says Carpe Diem on it, and and yeah, this this movie's very emotional, like I, and yeah, like it, I uh, this one that has a lot of nostalgia because I grew up watching this with my my dad all the time, and yeah, it's just very very powerful. So give some some love to Dead Poet Society, yeah. Uh, Noah, what do you say? So I've only seen one um, gangster film that I've actually liked, and Goodfellas is not it. I have mm. not seen Dead Poets Society, but I'm still voting for Dead Poets Society because I do not like Goodfellas. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Um, Ashton, what are you going to go for? Um, So I have seen Goodfellas. It's been a really, really long time. I was kind of telling oh, Wolf this earlier. Uh -huh. But um, 
can keep going. Yeah, I mean, I, I like usually judge it based on just the impact I remember. But um, I love Dead Poet Society. Like, I, I really love it. Um, so I'm going to have to go with that. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Well, Ross, what do you I'm say? I'm going to go with Dead Poet Society. Goodfellas, I think, is the fourth greatest gangster movie ever made. So, yeah, wait, maybe even fifth. I prefer Casino. And then, you know, like, Once Upon a Time in America is my favorite gangster movie. But I love Dead Poet Society. And, like, I actually love Kurtwood Smith in Dead Poet Society. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Dead, Dead Poet Society. Oh, yeah, I forget that he's in that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, did you vote, Malcolm? I can't, can't remember if, if, if you voted. Yeah, I went down um, Dead Poets. Okay. That sounds good. So it'll be, it'll be Dead Poets Society. And, and Noah, there's I'm technically asking. there are technically two gangster films you like, all right? Because oh. you like because you like uh, the the Irishman, and you also like um, mm. the uh, Reservoir Dogs. So mm. yeah, there you go. Well, we got yeah. Streetwise oh, going up against Inglorious Bastards. <laughs> this might be I don't know, could be lopsided. We'll see, but <laughs> um, but. And it'll be Wolf first, so. Yeah, okay, I'm so glad I get to go first because I want to explain to you guys. You're all like, what the fuck is Streetwise? Let me explain this to you guys. All right, so I watched this because I I saw this on like advertising like the Criterion channel or something like that one time. And I was like, and I even said, what the fuck is Streetwise? And so I looked it up on Letterboxd and I saw it had like a 4.4 average on Letterboxd. And it was like, uh, and it was like this like, big like crazy movie and i was like okay i have to see it if it's that high and it's free on youtube and so that's where i ended up watching it and this is a documentary but noah i know you're not a big doc guy you would love this movie by the way because you're that wolf frozen or is it just me (laughs) yep Okay, I was gonna make sure that wasn't me because my, my my stuff uh, freezes quite a bit. Yeah, he, he, he frees up the first of the most perfect <laughs> yeah. image. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, if he comes back, then I'll I'll let him finish. But uh, you may want to uh, drop out and come back in, possibly. But but um, but yeah. So I'll just say uh, that that I I actually watched Streetwise for the first time this movie's uncomfortable like this movie like like i know it's supposed to be like this great documentary and everything but it, like it just made me really un- 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 uncomfortable because it's like this true to life thing of like of, like all these these like like homeless teenagers and they and like some of them are like like yeah like in the morning i wake up i do a bunch of drugs then i i just spend the, the rest of the afternoon robbing people i go out and i just pick people um people's pockets all that stuff and i'm like and then uh, they're talking about, about like like uh, like drinking and like all this stuff and like the, the way that's per, per, uh, traded is in like a, a hyper realistic just kind of way that that just made me feel uncomfortable. So I really wasn't a huge fan of it. I just I decided to just like stick with it. I almost wanted to turn it off. So I was getting really kind of like like sketched out by it. Kind of so if I'm being honest, but but on Glorious Bastards is is it. An amazing movie like i think that's great like i think that it's it's it's, that it's it's one of tarantino's best and and uh one of the best villains with hans landa like you see some of the stuff especially at the beginning when he's like hunting for the jews and in the, in the houses and all that stuff uh and then also how how he switches sides at the end for his own good or like or his own benefit and and like it's just kind of, kind of interesting and then the the whole like like the, like brad pitt and like and, and like the bastards hunting the Jews and getting scalps and all that is really cool. So I gotta go with Inglorious Bastards. Uh, believe Wolf is here still, but but yeah, uh, uh, yeah Wolf, I, are you there? I'm sorry about that. My computer literally uh, died the moment I was explaining what street oh. <laughs> was, what Streetwise was. So I'm gonna charge up my computer a bit and then I might go back to it in the stream because it's easier to use. But um, it's all good. You can go ahead. But yeah. yeah, so what Streetwise wise is is it's a documentary where yeah, it's uh, what you were saying. That's sort of the point. You're supposed to feel uncomfortable because the point of the documentary is like it is throwing you, and I mean throwing you into a hyper 
realistic. Like it doesn't even feel like a there. Like I've said before, there are documentaries that feel like you're watching a documentary, and there are movies that feel like you're watching a movie. This doesn't yeah. feel like either of that. This feels like you are straight up watching almost like home video footage of yeah. kids who are struggling to survive in Seattle. And it is heartbreaking. It is flinching. It is just, or unflinching is the word. It is yeah. just like, it is like brutal to watch. It's emotional. I just like, this movie wrecked me. And I was not expecting to feel this way about this film. It is the most real film ever made. And I stand by that in the sense that it is no film has felt this true to life. And so because of that, I would probably lean more towards Streetwise here. And that's mm. coming as a big Tarantino fan. I love yeah. Glorious Bastards. I think that in Glorious Bastards, we were talking about emotional earlier. I think this is his most emotional film. I think while Pulp Fiction is my personal favorite film from Tarantino, I think this is his best film because it is actually like very emotional. It's tense. It has all the great things that make a Tarantino movie, like a great Tarantino movie. But it's the first time it's on the tournament. I really want to like, I really want people to watch Streetwise because I feel like it's an important documentary. And if I remember correctly, it's Roger Ebert's favorite documentary of all time. So mm. that's definitely nice. a big thing there. So I will say Streetwise. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Noah, what are you going to go for? Well, I really do love uh, uh, Glorious Bastards. I think it is one of Tantuna's better movies. So I, I do like that, but I have like a really huge fan of the True to Life kind of movies and stuff like that, where I just, I just think they're really emotional and like you really get you to think about what's really going on in the world and kind of, you know, just open your eyes a little bit. So I think, I think Michael Solby, I think I'm, I might. I'm going to watch Streetwise sometime soon, and I think I'm going to vote for it. Yeah. Right. Sounds good. Yeah, there's noth nothing wrong with voting for me, even if you haven't seen it. You can do that on, on tournament fights. So, so yeah, but but Ashton, what, what are you going to go for? And you are muted. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so this is really right. because I spoke with Wolf about... Uh, my blind spots and this is what he recommended that I watch and um, you know when I talked about voting based on like emotion because I feel like that's like to me film you know it's like for me art is yeah. emotion does it make you feel and sometimes it's like really good to feel super uncomfortable like super <laughs> uncomfortable because yeah. it, it teaches you something, you know, it forces you to stand in shoes that you otherwise wouldn't stand in. And I think it like kind of, um, it creates empathy, right? Like it kind of widens your emotional um, intelligence a little bit and creates empathy and understanding. And uh, I didn't finish it, but I did watch a good, good part of it. And I plan to finish it after this is over, hopefully. Um, but I, I think it's really special. I really do. I think it's super special. Um, I, I'm like pained that it went up against Inglorious Bastards because I have to say that's like my top two Quentin Tarantino films. Like I can't choose between the two, but it's in my top two Tarantino films. Yeah. Like, and it's funny because um, I have people that I that love film and and like they love a happy ending and they love like a, a film that's like yeah you know it makes you feel good and and I feel like these are like really opposing because Inglorious Bastards like made me feel really good. And I was like, yeah, I just wanted to like go kill Nazis, you know, but street wise, <laughs> um, like makes you feel really bad, you know, like really terrible. So there's yeah. like interesting kind of like dichotomy. Um, uh, I I'm gonna, I'm gonna push through uh street wise, like simply because, um, I do want to raise the awareness and I want people to like, remember to stay uncomfortable. And, and this is a hard one for me. So to do it yeah yeah there's also kind of interesting for someone who's lived in seattle for years 
uh just seeing like the old time seattle too like what it looked like before i moved there so so yeah that's no, kind of cool same here. Uh, and, and 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 it true and also like every single person in the documentary like you felt like you, they were part of you like you felt like they were part of your, like almost like a family like you wanted to hold on to them and hug them and just tell them it's all going to be okay like it's just yeah it was really really good but yeah yeah well, Ross, what are you gonna I'm go gonna for? go with Streetwise. I do love Bastard, but you know, like Streetwise affected me more. So yeah, I'm gonna go with Streetwise. I love the Bastard, but Streetwise is, is really good. You know, and like I, I actually have been like hyping up to like Ash's husband because one of Ash's husband's favorite movies is actually Kids. So yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, Kids. Yeah, that that movie gets uncomfortable to watch too. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, but my but movie. yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Malcolm. Uh, what are you going to go for? Um, yeah, I'm. I've never seen Street Rise. I'm not a big documentary person. Um, but I also don't like documentaries that are made intentionally with the intention to make you feel uncomfortable. Um, so I'm probably not going to like Street Rise by the sounds yeah. of it. Um, so I'm going to go and Glorious Bastards. Yeah. Well, Can I make with a comment that, on that yeah. really quick? Yeah. I just I want to say this just for just. For clarity, I don't think the intention of Streetwise is to make people uncomfortable. I think the intention is to just be authentic, like just just show an authentic experience. And it just happens that these experiences are uncomfortable. And by it being yeah. uncomfortable, right. it's raising awareness of the situation <laughs> that unfortunately yeah. is still very prevalent to today. Like there is still homeless kids. The point of a documentary is to like just that are still to, yeah yeah. Yeah. Well, I was just gonna say, didn't the movie Kids like wasn't that banned for a long time, and then it and then finally it like it like just like showed up on a website somewhere. I think you can watch it somewhere, but but I have but to I'm say, kids, sure that... I wouldn't say Kids is as is the same as Streetwise though, because Kids I feel like they take liberties. Like they're it's not like a documentary. I mean, they're you know yeah. there's things there that are for shock value, absolutely, and it yeah. it would be like. <laughs> it would be painful to actually put them in the same category because this is authentic, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, but well, let's see what we got up next. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation against Silent of the Lambs. <laughs> oh. Comedy versus horror. So, mm. um, and it'll be, I believe, Wolf first. Uh, I mean, technically, I went first last time, but I was cut off, so I don't oh, know yeah. how that works. Oh yeah, that's right. You went in first last time because you had to, to, or you you uh, jumped off. So so I'll go first this time. And if you know me, I'm a diehard National Lampoon's like like almost anything fan, but especially Christmas Vacation. It's my favorite of the of the vacation movie. I can quote this movie from beginning to end. I was was actually in a a straight up National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation trivia match over on Moose Haas's channel. And I lost because he does some, some weird things in the third round where, like, he, he doesn't like, like, uh, like a question that are, are like not about the movies, but they're adjacent to it. Like, 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 here's some other movies about, about, about other vacation movies, like people that, that go on vacation or like just some, some random or like another Chevy Chase movie or, or something like that. So I didn't see that coming. So, so, but, but I probably would have won because I was way ahead until then. But, but, um, and I think Silence of the Lambs is is good. I'm in the camp where I think it's a little overrated, just a tad. But but I mean, it still is is good. I mean, it's it's probably Anthony Hopkins' best movie that he's done. But uh, and, and maybe even Jodie Foster possibly. But um, but uh, I'm just a a huge Christmas Vacation fan. I mean, I could quote that begin from beginning to end, especially my favorite Aunt Bethany. He's like, is this the airport clock? Is your house on fire? It isn't every day someone moves into a new house. Is Rusty still in the Navy? Like, just all those quotes. And a fun fact, that that actress, I, I can't remember her exact name, but she was the original voice of um, Betty Boop, though, which is cool. So, so yeah. But, um, yeah, so Christmas vacation. Uh, uh, Noah, what do you say? So, Michael, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you actually got me into both of these films. Yeah, I actually I watched them both with you because I was such a big fans of them. And I remember around Christmas time, you watched it with 
both me and my mom, and then Science of the Lambs we watched together in like my man cave when it was like I think that was just me and you, but yeah, we watched both of them together. Yeah. So I both of them are super super solid films. I, I really love and enjoy both of these. And I'm only picking Silence of the Lands because I've watched it the most recently. So that's my only reason for picking it. I had to find a reason. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Um Ashton, what do you say here? I mean, obviously this is a hard mashup. Like who doesn't love Christmas vacation? I mean yeah. it's a classic, you know. But Silence of the Lambs is like one of my favorite films of all time. Like I wanted, I like wanted to be an FBI agent, like <laughs> because of this film. I thought she was like so cool, and um, it just like created this interest in psychology for me. Like I don't know, it just really made an impact. Um, scared me to death. Like I'm obsessed with like psych, like psychotic minds, and just you know what I mean. I just I, I'm it really had an impact. Let's just put it that way. So. And I just think it's a fantastic film. Um, so I'm going to have to go with Silence of the Lambs for sure. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Uh, uh, Ross, what do you say? I'm going to go with Silence of the Lambs, even though that I bet you my brother would hate me right now because that's his favorite movie of all time. It's Christmas mm -hmm. Vacation. And Ash will tell you uh, that too. But yeah, I'm going to go with Silence of the Lambs. Mine. Yeah. No, no, no. It's yeah. literally his favorite. Uh, no, no. He has to decorate his house because Clark Griswold did, right, Ashton? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, nice. that's, that's awesome. <laughs> we had neighbors that, that that did that, but but um, uh, Malcolm, what are you gonna go for? Yeah, Silence of the Lambs actually one of my um blind spots. Um, I've seen various clips of it, but I haven't actually seen the movie in full. Um, so I'm gonna go Christmas Vacation. Yeah. Uh, Wolf. Yeah, so this one hurts because I love both of these movies to death. Um, Science of Lambs, one of the greatest horror movies, and yes, it is a horror movie, people. Um, it is one of the greatest horror movies ever made. Um, Christmas Vacation, though, to me, just again, nostalgia is going to win here. I literally watch it every single time we put up the tree. We always watch it every year. Uh, I quote this thing so many times. Uh, they uh, really want you to say grace, the blessing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, grace, grace. She passed grace. away forty years ago. Yeah, yeah. Grace <laughs> passed away thirty years ago. It's like, <laughs> and this is like oh, the, the film. I can quote this thing all day. Um, um, this is my pride and joy. I'll literally, I'll like literally, me and my brother like, were just quoting that like the other day. I literally like watch it and like say the lines before they actually say I'm like it's gotten to that point now. And I got to watch it back in this last December in a movie theater. So that was pretty awesome. I got to experience Christmas vacation nice. movie theater. I would love to see Science and Names movie theater, but yeah, everyone else was like joining me and like laughing and quoting it because everyone knows the quotes and stuff and it was it was so great. Uh and you know, Christmas vacation to quote uh to quote Uncle Uncle Russ, it's uh Real nice, so I'm yeah, gonna get you some real nice, Clark. Yeah. So, so yeah. I will, I will say, uh, Christmas vacation. Yeah. So, what did you vote for again, Malcolm? Christmas vacation. So, with that, we have a tie, and the tie actually goes to you, Malcolm. So, what, what do you want to want to put through? Christmas vacation. Yeah, Christmas nice. vacation. All right. We're gonna have at least one comedy in here. Come and on. and Wolf, you're saying you love all the movies in top sixty four? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, up next we got Shawshank Redemption going into Jaws. Woo! Talk about some heavy hitters. So, uh, yeah. It looks like a bunch of people are pieced out when they saw this match. They're like, whoa! <laughs> but. Uh, We'll start with Noah. with Noah first. So it's a tough one. What, what are you going to go for? Oh, man. <laughs> this is a, a little bit of a toughie one. Um, yeah. Ah, man. Uh, solely for the fact I have more like memories with it, I'm, I'm going to say Jaws. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, Ashton, what are you going to go for? Um. 
yeah, it's hard, but Shawshank is like maybe in my top five, definitely in my top 10 and Jaws like may not even be on my top. So I'm going to have mm -hmm. to go with Shawshank. Like, I just think it's one of the greatest films ever made. I just, yeah. It's incredible. It's incredible. So yeah. Go with that. yeah, sounds good. Uh, uh, Ross. I'm going to go, go with Shawshank. I love Shawshank. No, so yeah, Shawshank is amazing. Jaws is great though. I just really like watch Jaws again, you know, because I'm going through Spielberg every single Spielberg movie. But Shawshank should have won Best Picture. So yeah, Shawshank. Yeah. <laughs> well, Malcolm. Um. Yeah. Go? Um. I suspect Jordan's going to be the same about as me on this. I'm not the biggest fan of um Jaws. Um. I think I yeah. think it's good and. It, a good movie but like it's just i i just feel people just over hype it up sometimes um i really love shawshank redemption um i think shawshank redemption is really good so i'm gonna go shawshank yeah uh wolf what, yeah what i mean saying? earlier i was like saying like oh god this is hard but honestly like and and it is hard because all these movies are in my top before i love every single one of these films however Shawshank Redemption, I'll save it for in case it gets eliminated. I don't know if it's going to or not, but it is definitely high up on there for me. And so for me, I think Shawshank Redemption, I would put the uh, edge over for this one. But Jaws, that 3D remaster they did, oh, some, some scary stuff. And also, just to let you guys know, uh, my computer is back on, so I'm going to exit out my phone and go back onto my computer to do this if, if you guys are cool with that that's when we missed that remember you got sick we were supposed to go yeah. um to what well jaws in 3d oh yeah yeah i know you know you tell me though about yeah. it <laughs> okay like when the water is at eye level uh -huh. the, the water actually is in 3d oh that's cool i know yeah. that's a bummer <laughs> well i guess it comes down to one simple choice Get busy living or get busy dying. Can't do the a very good Morgan Freeman impression, but the the quote's fun to kind of like try to do it. <laughs> um, but for me, like I like I'm actually at the camp where I kind of think both of these movies are a little overrated. I do like it's just <laughs> like I'm I'm not, like I like them both, but I'm not in like the like greatest of all time kind of um, um, category. So it, it's actually kind of tough. Like this makes it for for a tough matchup and just because like I, I probably have a little more fun watching Jaws uh uh I'll, I'll probably go for th that and 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 also I'm a big Brody fan uh and that that uh movie it, if I were to pick a favorite character like out of, out of any of these movies it, it'd be him so so yeah he's just like the old grumpy kind of like sea guy <laughs> so yeah I'm gonna go with Jaws, so, uh, and I believe though it's still gonna be Shawshank. So yeah, yeah. Shawshank to go back on, to the future, so. the shark still looks fake. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> still looks fake uh, from Jaws 19. Yeah, um, Jurassic Park up against 12 Angry Men. So. Oh shit! Um, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, Wolf is is back, but I believe we are at. Ashton first, so so you're up. What what are you gonna go for? Oh, um, yeah, I'm gonna go with Jurassic Park. I haven't seen Twelve Angry Men, and I love Jurassic Park, the classic. So I'm gonna go with that one. Yeah, um, Ross, I'm gonna go with Twelve Angry Men. I love Jurassic Park, but Twelve Angry Men is maybe one of the greatest movies ever made. You know, like, so yeah, about like how they can make it. Just, just, just like men in a courtroom debating whether or not somebody's guilty or not, is actually very interesting. So yeah, I'm gonna go with twelve hundred men. Yeah. Well, Malcolm, what do you say? Um, yeah, I love both these movies, and um, and one of those like I, I, I actually watched Traveling Men for the first time yesterday. Um, because oh, wow. um, because <laughs> it, it pop, I was going for Amazon Prime, it popped up, I was like. Yeah, no, this is on Wolf's list. I'll watch it. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, but I loved Jurassic Park. It was probably high up on my personal um, 128. 
but it does show up a lot for good reasons. <laughs> I'm going to go twelve angry. Yeah, it meat. does. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Wolf, what do you say here? Uh, I'm not hearing yet. You might be muted. Well, so, muted. Yeah, Twilight Man was one oh, I watched. Yeah. There you go. Really? Uh, I You're think I actually think Wolf's a bit yeah. delayed. Oh, oh yeah, um, that's it. Okay. Uh, what about now? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Um. So, yeah, Twelve Angry Men was something I uh, came to, you know, recently. Uh, I it was like on Amazon Prime and I watched it. Was blown away by it. Such a powerful courtroom drama. It's literally just twelve pe people in a room talking about how much a person's life is worth, and it is just beautiful and you can understand every single side literally they don't say like oh this side is the right side this side's the rightest and real that it gives you uh a oh, understanding of every single perspective and i appreciate that and love that and the entire cast is great um oh man but this is a toughie because yeah jurassic park you're right it does show up on all of these but the thing is Jurassic Park is also my childhood. This film, literally, uh, I fell in love with dinosaurs because of this movie, and Dino DNA. I would like collect. I would collect like I would collect dinosaur toys and play with dinosaur toys. They were some of my first toys I ever had, and it was because of this movie. And I rewatched them, and I rewatched it again on the theater. It was like a double feature between, like, with this, and I saw when it released in 3D. Like this film, I just love so much. I can rewatch it over and over again. I've only seen Twelve Angry Men once, so I'm wanting to see it again. It's one, but it's one of those films that is just like so. It's it's the better made movie for sure. But oh, this is hard. <laughs> I guess I'll lean Jurassic Park. God damn it, this is hard. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. But yeah, I actually love both these movies too. Like like Twelve Angry Men. It hasn't quite cracked my my top one twenty eight, but it's getting there. It's getting closer and closer every time that I, that I watch it. I just bump it up a bunch of of, of slots uh, and. Um, yeah, like it, it, it's like really great how they're able to just do like a one location movie because we we did best movie set in one location and then and also best one a crazy day slash night movies and, it, and it, I think that it that qualifies for both so and it's uh, really really great but but uh, Jurassic Park is my number three favorite movie of all time like it ranks number three on my list this movie is like. Uh, it's like one of the best movies ever made. I think that it, that like as far as like besides Schindler's List, like like this is Steven Spielberg's masterpiece to me. Like like Jurassic Park, and and the effects hold up to this day. Like from from '93, they they hold up uh, thirty years later and still look uh, really really awesome. And um, I'll just give the condensed uh, version of the this story because i've told it before but but i grew up in a Better small than town most years. yeah right yeah. <laughs> but um yeah so i grew up in a small town in uh, on utah this little town called draper utah and and like now that town's exploded but it used to be a, a little small town with this tiny little one screen movie theater that and i remember that my my parents going to go go see it, um jurassic park when it came out i was only eight years old and it, and afterwards uh uh, they came back and like you gotta see this movie that just some of the most incredible thing we've ever seen. This movie's awesome, and and then so they took me to go see it, and and uh, it just blew my mind away. And then on the next day, without telling my parents or, or anything, that uh, this little eight-year-old kid, I just took off and I walked back to the theater and I went to go see it another time. And then uh, I'm coming to find out my my parents had no idea where I went. I didn't tell them. They were like all worried. They're looking for me, like like they didn't know where I went. They were, 
like almost getting ready to like call the cops to do like a search for me but they never did but but like but like they're like where'd you go and like Jurassic Park the movie's incredible I want to see it like every day this movie's awesome so so yeah so that was a cool experience and yeah like it just like shaped my my love for cinema especially for special effects like if I could have any job in this world it would be doing special effects for like big Hollywood uh, and movies that's why I love doing all the behind the scenes things for this channel and like I always look for opportunities to do more and do as many as I can so yeah got to go Jurassic Park how mad so, were they, Jordan? Though, how mad were they when they when you told them where they, they were, were mad? Yeah, yeah, they were pissed. Like you don't ever leave without telling us where you're going. And like, yeah, they were not not okay. happy. Yeah. But, but, but real <laughs> yeah. quick, real quick, before we get to Noah's turn, real quick, I want to talk about how like I went to um, Universal with some friends of mine, uh -huh. and uh, and we got to go on the uh, Jurassic World or Jurassic Park like ride that they have there. And that was yeah. so much fun. They have an actual life. It's it's like it the it, it's a water ride, and it looks like the jeeps from Jurassic Park as it goes down. Yeah. And then there's an actual life size uh, T Rex that like comes down at you and lunges, and it's like teeth almost yeah. grab, and you have to like go through the mouth. And it's just oh, it was I was the the geekiest experience I've ever had. It was so good. Yeah, I went on it. Last September, and then we went on the Velocicoaster, which is awesome because they bring in Chris Pratt and all that stuff from Jurassic World, so that's cool. So yeah, and um, Bryce Dallas Howard, they're both like part of the ride. Yeah, but but Noah, what are you gonna go for here? Well, I, I love both of these films in terms of like screenplay. I think Twelve Angry Men has probably like one of the best screenplays ever written, just because like yeah, twelve guys in a room. You don't think it'd be interesting, but. It's a very, very interesting and entertaining movie. But that, but I mean, Jurassic Park for a long time was like my favorite movie of all time. It's gone down since I've gotten a little older and my taste of movies have changed. But I, I still really love Jurassic Park and have a, a very soft spot for it. Still in like my top 25 or so. So yeah, I'm going to have to go with Jurassic Park. Yeah, so it'll be... Jurassic Park, moving on. And also, right. on your uh -huh. my point, too, yeah, so many movies are inspired by 12 Angry Men because there's so many movies today that are, like, in the one location, just sitting down talking movies, like Women Talking that came out last yeah. year, and then, and then Mass that came out. Like, those are films heavily inspired by 12 Angry Men. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, and even, like, a lot of courtroom drama movies, too. Like, yeah, like a lot of those, so, yeah. Yeah, but uh, we, we got Empire Strikes Back up against Stand By Me. All right. Ooh. So it'll be, it'll be Ross first. So. I'm going to go with Stand By Me. I do love Empire Strikes Back, but Stand By Me, you know, I've always been a special movie. Yeah, so yeah. So Stand By Me. Yeah. Uh, Malcolm, what do you got? Um, yeah, I'm going to jump out after this one. I'm, I'm struggling to get my eyes open as it is. Um, sure, sure. Yeah, no worries. I mean, <laughs> not that it's super late for me. It's 4 o'clock in the afternoon, but... Um, <laughs> sure, yeah, no. Go to um, some but, yeah, um, I'm going to vote Empire Strikes Back, though. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, Empire. Um, uh, Wolf, what do you say? Uh, yeah, so I love both of these. Stand By Me is uh, my, like, favorite uh, coming-of-age type of movie. Like, it's just very Goonies. Yes, y'all can at me, people. It is <laughs> it is excellent. Um, and But Empire Strikes Back, that's just a cinematic masterpiece. This is, like one of the films that helped me fall in love with cinema as well. Like this film is just, uh, this film just blew me away. And, and I know I might get a uh, hot take. This. I mean, every once in a while I'll say like, so like for me, I think my personal favorite, like, so I go back and forth. My personal favorite Star Wars movie might be Return of the Jedi, but this one is like, I think the best just from everything like the filmmaking, just everything about it is just truly the best Star Wars movie around. And the twist is iconic. Just this film 
it's one of the top ten greatest films of all time. So, Empire Strikes yeah. Back. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I'm pretty new to Stand by Me. I only saw it for the first time about uh, what a year, year and a half ago, and, and it's really good. But I mean, it's not really one that I grew up with or, or, or anything. But I did really like it. But but yeah, Empire Strikes Back is, is an all time classic. It's not my favorite Star Wars movie. Like. Uh, yeah, actually, probably with you, Wolf. It, it, it's probably Return of the Jedi for me. But, but I mean, uh, I was just thinking the other day, because watching a, a podcast of a guy that was, like, like talking about seeing it for the first time. And, like, if you put yourself in the shoes of someone who saw this thing for the first time, like, you think about, about like, like the whole shock of finding out that, that uh, at Darth Vader's, Luke's father, and then at the end, the freaking uh, the the uh, the um, uh, good guys lose, and, and the Empire win, and 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 you leave everything on a cliffhanger. You have Luke just like like barely hanging there, and like like near um, death. Then you have um, um, Han Solo being being dipped in the carbonite, and then uh, they do the. Re- reverse of I love you when like Han Solo says it and then Princess Leia says I know and like just all these different things if you're watching that for the first time like that stuff has to be like blowing your mind like it just has to be like some incredible writing incredible stuff and like you don't really see it very many movies but especially back in that um, um, time frame where the good guys lose like that and like you don't know what's going to happen you're like are they going to make it are they going to survive like what the heck's going on so so yeah when you think about it that way in, the, in that context like it I uh, it just makes it an all-timer for me. So, yeah, I got to go Empire. So, but uh, Noah, what do you say? I'm going to have to go with Empire as well. I don't know how many times as a kid I just rewatched the Hoth opening battle. And I was I had VHF. So, it was like I would spend that time to, like, rewind it. Spend the five minutes to rewind it and play it again. And then another five minutes to rewind it and play it again. And I just... I love that Hoth scene and just the entire movie yeah. itself has it's really good. So Yeah, yeah, for sure. But um Ashton, what do you say? Um, yeah. Uh I was excited to see Stand By Me on here and I actually concur with both like I think it's one of the best coming of age um movies. Like I loved it. It was kinda haunting actually. I think it's kinda haunted me but <laughs> like um yeah. and um, I don't know. I have to toss this out there. I feel like goodies is overrated. Anyway, um, <laughs> should I like piggyback on Wolf's <laughs> there? Um, I've tried. Mm. I'm sorry, Ross. You know, I love you, but Ross can like attest to this. I've tried to watch it a few times and I just like, I know I've seen the whole thing. Okay. I've seen it. I've just tried to rewatch it. And I fall asleep every time. I don't know why. I, 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 like, I prefer, I prefer, you know, stand by me to the goonies also. I love the goonies, but it's no stand by me, you know, so. Um, I agree awesome. with you, Ashton. Uh, Goonies is overrated. <laughs> thank you, Malcolm. Thank you. I'll be the lone one. Like I, 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 I own 4K, movie. but yeah, and not yeah. stand by me. So, like, yeah, props <laughs> to Richard Donner for making a great movie. But anyways, <laughs> um, but with that said, um, I mean, it's 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 OG Star Wars. Like, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, I'm no, also. Like we- we, just saw Jedi. Of Jedi. we saw it in the theater and then like i'll never yep. forget the fashion forever is when pampered you know that's her daughter was looking away like halfway looking when dark Vader was taking his mask off oh yeah <laughs> oh that's gonna be kind of like a scary we didn't name her pamper but that's like one of her nicknames but um oh. yeah she was like really concerned about what like darth vader was gonna look like which was really funny <laughs> to me um so i was like yeah, not good, you know. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> um, it's kind of freaky. But, yeah, <laughs> but then she, be, but then from her perspective though, like after seeing um like all these different like crazy like creatures and stuff, and I mean Jabba the Hut, like whoa, you know. Yeah, and, and then that blue guy. Remember how you were scared of that yeah. blue guy in the theater? She saw Darth. Yeah. She saw him take off his mask, and she went kind of oh, okay, yeah, that's not so bad. <laughs> so, okay. That's good. Which was not yeah. my reaction, you know. <laughs> so yeah, it was right. A funny perspective, I think, you know. But um, yeah, yeah, 
definitely Empire Strikes Back. Like I, I also concur with like I, I like Return of the Jedi, but yeah, Empire yeah. Strikes Back for sure. Which one? When Return of the Jedi actually shows up here sometime, I can go on, go on, like like on for a while as to why that's the greatest Star Wars movie. There's a lot of things in there, but but uh, so it'll be Empire. But but we'll let, we'll let Malcolm go. Do uh, you have anything you want to plug real quick, Malcolm? Uh, you can find me on Tafe Productions, the host of Income, every Sunday night. This week's episode is going to be top 12 Meryl Streep movies. Mm, nice. um, and you can also find me over on Full Metal Trivia, I host um, Trivia over there. Um, I'll we'll be back on um, Thursday for the second playing match. Jordan's going to be in it um, yeah. to take that last spot in the tournament. Um, so, yeah. I take second place like I do every time. So, we'll see <laughs> but but thanks Malcolm see, see you later yes, thank you so yeah. much yeah so on to the next one we got the Texas Chainsaw Massacre ooh I've got thoughts on that um, going up against Lost in Translation um, mm. and this time it'll be Wolf first so. oh man okay so we've got the scariest movie ever made <laughs> versus, in my opinion, at least, yeah. versus another masterpiece of the Dawson translation. So, oh man. So, here's the deal. I know where this is going to go, and I do actually have it ranked this way in my top sixty-four. But, um, I rewatched Lost in Translation. Uh, this past weekend to get ready for this. It was raining outside, uh, and it was my and my girlfriend just left for the summer to go to Florida, and so the whole and so one of the themes of this movie is loneliness and connection and all of that. So I'm just sitting there after watch after she left rewatching this again, forgetting about like how heavy this movie was, and being like. I am now depressed and <laughs> I was like really sad, but I feel like that added to the experience in a way, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like it added another layer to it. Um, and so for me, I felt more emotionally like connected to Lost in Translation, but the Test of Chainsaw Massacre is the scariest movie of all time, but just because I don't see Lost in Translation on here enough, I'm gonna give it to Lost in Translation. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Um, so for me, so I watched the Texas Chainsaw Massacre recently, probably I think last Halloween for the first time, and I hated it. Like, like I do not like this movie. I'm not a fan. For me, like it was just these like hippies that that break down in this van, and then for like whatever reason, no reason, uh, to me that I that I could find this. These people just come out of nowhere and, and like start chopping them up with a chainsaw. And like, what the, what's the freaking point of that? And like, why do you want to watch that? But like, I understand people say that the, there's like a deeper thing and the family's doing some 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 things. I don't know. I I don't get it. I just think it it's just gore for gore's sake, and it and like it's just not not up my my alley. But I but do like some of the other Texas Chainsaw massacres, like Texas Chainsaw Two, but because they have a cool layer and like they're like doing more with characters and. And things like that and then even like the remake the um jessica bill one i actually like that one uh but but this first one I when you, I when you said remake at first i was like you better watch your mouth what comes yeah yeah that. no no <laughs> yeah, not not the most like recent one no but but um but uh, i also watched lost in translation for the first time today actually for this and and yet when I first started watching it, like I wasn't sure about it. I was like, man, it's just like a lot of artsy scenes without a lot of context. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like this. But the more and more that it um goes on, you actually find out like what's going on and it all comes together. And it's actually like a really cool uh, movie. I actually loved it by the end. Like I actually thought that it, it was really, really cool. And it and like I like it because it's like like how you say that it plays into loneliness too, because Bill Murray's character is like this famous celebrity, but but like you kind of see it. Cause like I, I always think like I'll watch podcasts and different things and like like they'll be famous like like comedians like celebrities they'll talk about but like like loneliness and like depression then you think of like like famous people that actually dealt with that like a Robin Williams or like that kind of thing you think how could they ever deal with 
with that kind of thing when they're so famous and they seem so happy and like and all this stuff but it's actually a real thing that like like is a thing like it like that that um it, if it affects you then it's going to affect you no matter what like it just happens and and so and and also i really like how how like um both both Scarlett Johansson and Bill Murray, they come from the, these relationships where where they're they're both married, but they kind of feel like maybe not totally fulfilled in their their uh, marriage, or they're just looking for a friend. And I like how like it doesn't really go into like a real like romantic thing. It like kind of skirts around it, like they like almost want to be involved in a relationship, but they don't don't really go all the way there. And, and actually, I appreciate that because it's different. Like it's not really like a romantic. Uh, a romance movie like it's it just two friends just spending time together and just getting to know each other and and also i'm a big fan of japan too so i really like the the japan setting too like I, i've never been but i always want i've wanted to go so um someday but but yeah so i'm gonna go lost in translation here i, I thought it was really good uh noah uh what are you gonna vote for this is uh this is a good one um yeah I- both of these films are honestly just are really great films. I I can't really say anything that bad about any of them. Um, I will say though that for me, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is like easily top five horror movies. So I think I'm probably gonna go with Texas Chainsaw Massacre on this one. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Um, Ashton, what do you say? Um. I was really excited to see Lost in Translation on this list. I feel like when I did the last tops, I think I've only did done one other. It was Ross's, right? And I feel yeah. like, yeah. Uh, and then I've watched some, of course. And I like sat down and I did my top sixty four like for fun, and I saw a lot of things on it that I like don't normally see on people's top sixty fours, and a lot of those are on Wolf. So that's why so I have to say that again, but. Um, and this is one of them. Like, I feel like, why isn't this on more people's? It's such a good film. Um, and now, conversely, I, I'm like, I don't know I'd put, if I'd put the Texas Chainsaw Massacre in, like, my top horrors. Um, but I feel like I need to watch it again now somehow. <laughs> like, maybe I, I need a fresh perspective on it. But I'm going to go with Lost in Translation. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, I'm Ross. Uh- you're gonna go for I'm gonna it. go with Lost in Translation. I'm only halfway through, but I rem- I still haven't seen Texas Chainsaw. I actually, I'm liking Lost in Translation a lot, and then it has Austin's favorite actor in it too. So that's always a plus. So yeah, you know. Yeah, Giovanni Ribisi. Yeah. For whatever reason, he just hates that that yeah. guy. Yeah, I actually but, love him. Like I think that he's, he's a a fun actor, but yeah, so do I. You know, doesn't like him. Yeah. <laughs> he's kind of he's kind of a dick in this movie though. Like no, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. Not, I'm gonna lie. He is, he is kind of. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like it's like he only pays attention to her when yeah. something when there's something he doesn't like. Like he's like, "Babe, can you really not smoke or, like around?" And like, yeah. really? that's, you don't pay attention to her <laughs> at all. Yeah, that's the moment you show any form of attention to her is when it's something you don't like. <laughs> it's yeah, like, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh-huh. but yeah, well, that might be next. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but we got. Tropic Thunder up against It's a Wonderful Life. Oh God! <laughs> um, and it'll be me first this time. This was interesting because, like, I really like both these movies, but I think It's a Wonderful Life. Like, I'm kind of like, I mean, you can say what you want, but but like, I'm kind of leaning towards like, it's not really a Christmas movie. Like, I don't really feel like because Christmas is, is like only really celebrated at the end of it but then a lot of people that like say well well, a lot of it takes place on on like christmas eve maybe something like that but but i mean but it's still great though it's it's still a really good movie it doesn't take away from 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 any of the movie like um that's great and like like romance in it great life lessons great kind of i don't know just just like a great like 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 telling of those guys life and then when when you get to the the like the whole thing about like 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 what if he had never been been born, kind of thing, and, and and like how that plays out too, and and then like he's even on the verge of suicide at, at one point. But so it's really really good, and and um, uh, uh, Tropic Thunder is great too. Like I like I think that it's a great cast. I'm a big Ben Stiller fan, and also Jack Black. Like I'll watch anything that 
that they're in. And then for, for Robert Denny Jr. to do the, the whole blackface thing, but to do it in a way that, that like, I don't think that it's really offensive. I mean, some people may, may get a, a, a offended, but he's doing it as like a satire of like someone who, uh, this actor who like thinks that, that like he's, he's such a great actor that he's able to do anything. They can transcend race that he can just like play anything. So, so, and then the whole, uh, the less Grossman of it all is really good, but, but yeah, like I just think though, like there's not a lot of older classic movies that, that, that I really love. That there's only a handful of them. And I really do love It's a Wonderful Life. Like I I, I think that's great. I still watch it every Christmas because that's just like a tradition, even though I'm kind of leaning that, that it's not as much of a Christmas movie. But I'm gonna go in with with It's a Wonderful Life, I think. So uh Noah, uh what are you gonna go for? Uh, so I haven't seen It's a Wonderful Life yet, but Michael has Ooh. really been like really urging me to, and it's definitely what I really do want to see. So like this Christmas, hopefully I can I can get a bit of watch. It always uh, comes to theaters means... every year too. So if it comes to a theater again, yeah, we're, we're gonna go see it for sure. Yes, we're especially if it's at the Dollar Theater. Yes, we'll definitely go see it. You got a big kind of fancy theater called the Egyptian that's in, in Boise. They play it every year, and we go sit in the balcony section and watch it. It's a lot of oh, fun. Oh, that sounds so cool. Yeah, well, that's a really cool that's theater. Cool. I've actually been to that one. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, that theater's awesome. I watched uh, one of the the second to last episode of of Breaking Bad actually with Aaron Paul. He came to to like sh like screen it there. That was cool. So. Yeah. But anyways, go ahead. Uh -huh. nice. Um, well, yes. Oh, did you already go, Noah? Is it my turn? Uh, no, no, I haven't officially uh, voted. I haven't seen. Yeah. Okay, okay. My, my official vote right. is, even though I haven't seen It's a Wonderful Life, I'm still going to vote for it, as it seems like the movie I'd more lean towards if I had seen it, so I'm still going to vote for It's a Wonderful Life, even if I haven't seen it. Sure, yeah. Sounds good. Uh, I'm Ashton. What, what are you going to go for? Um... Yeah, this is a hard one. Again, thanks, Wolf. Um, <laughs> I, I, it's a great movie. It's a Wonderful Life is a great movie. Obviously, I don't feel like I've given it the space or like the attention or energy that it really deserved. Like you know, sometimes you watch films because like somebody else is putting them on during a time when you're supposed to watch them. And you're like, oh, you can recognize that it's a good film, but you don't like give it that full attention. I don't know if anybody has that experience. And I feel like when I, I've seen this like twice and it's been at like somebody else's idea and I was kind of like, oh, and I, you know, I like it, but I don't feel like I've given it like the sit down like attention that it really deserves to like really like look at the themes and whatever. But and I feel like if I did, I'd probably go for that because it's like the emotional choice. But there are I, I'm like love comedy. <laughs> And there are a few comedies that like have made me laugh so hard. I felt like I was going to choke and Tropic oh, Thunder yeah. like made me laugh to the point of feeling Did like you I name your dog that too? All the way through, huh? Didn't you name your dog Simple Jack? Oh yeah, I had a dog named Simple Jack. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, my cat. My cat was Simple oh. Jack. Okay. But... Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it fit too. But um, yeah. Yeah. He would, I don't know, it just, it was, I, I was really excited to see this on the list because I don't necessarily think it's like a great film by any means, but it's like an awesome comedy. I loved it. So I'm going to go for that one. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, I'm Ross. What, I do a lot. I think that, you know, It's Wonderful Life is a little bit overrated. So I'm going to go with Tropic Thunder, but you know, Tropic Thunder is, is like hilarious and it has a top five Tom Cruise performance. So yeah, and I hope we get a Les Grossman movie. He's been talking about it, so so we'll see. That that'd be awesome to have a Les Grossman movie, and you got to have every major star A lister that you can possibly get for it. I think it would make it awesome. So, but but uh, well, Wolf, it all comes down to you. You get the deciding vote. So, oh, uh, I can say it. Uh, how about you take a big step back and really fuck your old face? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, it's. Yeah. I uh, love Les Grossman, and It's a Wonderful Life is truly wonderful. Um, it's in my top ten of all time. This film is excellent. I literally watch it every Christmas Eve. I cry every single time at the ending. That I I 
think there's a good argument to be made between this and maybe a couple other films on my list for like having the greatest ending to a movie. Like the ending of this movie, I'm always just like I, I get emotional every single damn time. Um, but like, uh, yeah, Tropic Thunder, it's fun. Uh, you know, Robert, technically is an Oscar nominated movie because Robert Downey Jr. was nominated for this movie. Um, and there is, and it's just one of the. I think it's honestly maybe the funniest comedy I've ever seen. Like I just I like that's why I have it on here. I've not laughed harder at any other comedy in my life than at this movie. Like literally when it first opens and they're doing the movie trailers, I I die. I just I am just I am just dying from yeah. laughter during that. And it's just the, the one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Al Pacino. In my life. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Uh, and the, oh, and the one with like Tony McGuire that kills me. Every oh, the Tony McGuire <laughs> one. Like, the yeah, the Tony McGuire one. Oh my god, that was so great. <laughs> That's good. Um, but yeah, it's a wonderful life. I gotta just go with that. I I haven't seen it in theater yet myself. I want to really badly, but it's just it's in my top ten, and it's even creeping up into my top five. Like this film is excellent. So yeah, yeah. So it'll be. Wonderful life, moving on. But I mean, one of the things, just real quick, that I gotta um, advocate for. If you haven't seen it, I'm sorry, Night Live, that they do the alternate ending to "It's a Wonderful Life," where like literally they all go back to Mr. Potter's office, and and you have Dana Carvey doing the like Jimmy Stewart and oh, Mr. Potter, you, <laughs> oh, you ruined our entire life. You screwed me over. You screwed everyone over. And they literally like like tie him to a chair and they beat the living shit out of him. They're just like, like just kicking him and just beating him to death. It's just so good. Cause like, if you think about it, like, like why didn't anyone go after him? They just let him get away with it. Kind of like in a way. So it's yeah. kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I would, would highly recommend that. It's pretty funny, but um, that'll be nice. the end of that side. So, nice. but what I will say that, that like, and um, a part of it's my fault too. Like we need to speed up the, the comments a little bit if we don't want to have like yeah. a four or five hour episode here. But but like that's yeah. like partially my fault. I need to do it too. Well, Ashton also yeah. mentioned, <laughs> mentioned me too when she saw the when she saw all the films on here. She's like, oh great, so it's gonna be like a five hour episode because it's like yeah yeah, yeah right. <laughs> so and we got Jordan. We got it, Jordan. You got to call it the title that you said. Remember. What, what was that? On that one, you know, like when I messaged you about it, how it's one of the greatest movies ever made. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we got Cinema Paradiso up against the Breakfast Club. Remember Cin Cin Cinema Diesel? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh we're back to Nolan first, so what are you gonna go for? So I haven't seen Cinema Paradiso. I think that's how you say it. But yeah. I absolutely love films that like show filmmaking or just like are like a films about films. I just think it's really cool and a lot of them have a lot of heart to it. So even though I do love Breakfast Club, I, I just know that even though I haven't seen it yet, Cinema Paradiso will probably be a movie that I really like. So I'm going to vote for that. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Um, Ashton. Um, so Ross has um, let me know that I absolutely need to watch Cinema Paradiso. So I recognize that this is a big like blank spot <laughs> that needs to be filled for sure. Um, and I anticipate that I would really love it. But gosh, John Hughes. I love me some 80s John Hughes classics. And The Breakfast Club is yeah. probably one of my favorite but that may be, that's probably a top 20 for me, for sure. And I was really excited to see it on here. Um, so, yeah, I'm I'm stoked to go with The Breakfast Club. Yeah, sounds good. Um, Ross? I do love The said. Breakfast Club, but, and then, like, you know, Breakfast Club, I've seen a lot more because I've only seen Santa Paradiso once, and it was this week, and then, like, in my recent five. But it's one of the greatest movies I've ever seen, literally. You know, like, it's the greatest film about film, The Love Letter two films I've ever seen. So yeah, I'm gonna go with cinema, cinema, Paradise and Jordan. I think you'd actually really like it. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Boring. I wasn't sure about it because I literally don't know anything about it, but 
but yeah, I'll have to check it out. So, but uh, Wolf, what do you? And don't and don't be don't be estimated by the time. It's all warranted because it's it goes through three decades of this one person's life. So uh, the runtime is like two hours and fifty three minutes. But don't be uh, like, but don't but don't be like yeah. you know taken back by that. Like it's no, all. Like there was maybe two minutes of. of uh, 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 of uh, like where 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 when like this is dragging, two minutes out yeah. of a three-hour movie is really a really good math, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's yeah, both these films are absolutely incredible to me. I have grown up more with Breakfast Club. I've watched that many more times. It's more watchable. Uh, but yeah, Cinema Paradiso. <clears throat> there are films that are like literally inspired off of the like these films like I've, i watched one film at like a film festival that was like literally almost a straight up remake i was like wow that's like straight up par- cinema parodies <laughs> um and yeah. it's the but it was a um this is i agree this is the greatest film about making films to ever exist this is what the fable men should have been this is very poignant very beautiful a flawed character in the lead character yes steven spielberg you can make flawed characters in movies about making films but um it is like it was actually very beautiful very touching uh alfredo and toto are some of the, my favorite like duos on screen i've ever seen they're wonderful um and as much as i love the breakfast club and i might like i have to look at my list again i might have it higher i don't know um but the they're because they're both neck and neck i'll say that for this, because Breakfast Club has been on tournaments before, Cinema Paradiso does not at all like get on these tournament fights before. So I want to show some love and definitely say Cinema Paradiso. Yeah, uh, we've never seen Cinema Paradiso, but 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 uh, it's all in Italian, right? Is that what it is? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, because like that. Uh, I was looking up the the director, and he has like the most Italian name ever, Giuseppe Attornatore. <laughs> and it's like that. That just sounds like totally like Italian, but but um, but yeah, the the Breakfast Club is amazing. Now it's pretty late to it. Like I only watched the Breakfast Club maybe about five or six years ago for the first time, and and yeah, this movie blew me away. And like I knew for all these years, I'm like. Like I'm just holding back on this, like, like, like all time a great coming of, of age, a John Hughes movie, and and like it has some of my, my favorite quotes too, and like favorite lines, like, like uh, uh, we're all a pretty uh, bizarre. Some of us are just better at hiding it. That's all. That's from me, the Estevez, and like, and like I think that that's really true to life. And there's there's just a lot of things where like like they all come from like such different walks of life, and then and then like one one afternoon they're able to just come together and almost be like best friends and like, and, uh, but then also the movie has like, it's really great comedy. Like I love when they're all dancing. I love when they're like sneaking to the school. And then at the end, like, like you just feel like by the end of it all, you feel like you just watched like an all time great movie. Like this is another one as far as like coming of, of age movies go. Like this is like, like one of the best. So yeah, I'm going to go out with breakfast club. Uh, on Nolan. What do you say? Uh, uh, he voted first, I think, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's Noah, by the way, not no- Nolan. You're saying Nolan. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's Noah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's believe... Cinema, Par- Cinema Paradiso. Cinema, yeah. yeah. You know what I thought. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> he voted for it too. Yeah. Um, all right. We got Barry Lyndon going up against Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> kind of interesting matchup, but. Um, <laughs> And uh, if Ashton's there, I should be first. I don't know if she's there, but yeah. Yes. So, yes. what do you uh, think? <laughs> well, this is a hard one because I haven't seen Barry Lyndon. I'm not gonna lie, and <laughs> I'm not a huge Mad Max Fury Road fan. That's really? that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, what I will say about it though um, is like in the sense that it wouldn't make like a top list for me now. I really like thought it was visually stunning, like absolutely stunning. So if I like take it out, like, I mean, there's no, 
I don't know. Like, I just didn't have like a great emotional reaction. I didn't think it like had a fantastic story. I didn't think the acting was that incredible. But if like purely based on aesthetics, like it definitely deserves some recognition. I think it's like really incredible just to watch. You know, I did enjoy that aspect of it. I just wouldn't go back to it. Yeah. But Mad Max for that reason would be my vote. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, Ross. Barry Lyndon for me, you know, I'm not the biggest Mad Max fan. It's okay, but you know, like Barry Lyndon sounds more like you know, I'm a big, I'm a big Kubrick fan. So yeah, I'm gonna go with Barry Lyndon. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Uh, Wolf. Yes. So no, I finally watched it because I I was trying to explore some like uh more Kubrick films because like no watched all of the Kubrick films. He's like, he's like, I think you would like Barry Lyndon the most, and it turned out that. He was right. I'm very much a Barry Lyndon fan. I think this is Kubrick's best film, and I don't think it gets talked about enough. Uh, this film is an absolute masterpiece. Jordan, to say this is a really good friend, you would fucking hate this movie. You are going to fucking despise this thing. I say that yeah. as a great friend. <laughs> like, yeah, like, this is a three hour long period. That's what Austin piece. told me. Yeah. This is, yeah, you're not going to like this thing at all. Uh, you. Yes. I'm good. <laughs> I'm raising my hand and I'm so sorry, but can I change my vote? Because I, I know nothing about Barry Lyndon, but I actually really like enjoy Kubrick films like a lot. I, I love this three hour just yeah. insanity. And I didn't oh, realize sure. that it was a Kubrick yeah. film. And I just feel like there's no doubt oh, that if good. I saw it, I would like it better than Mad Max. So it's just like not sure. fair because I so, like am not a Mad Max fan that I feel like I yeah, have yeah. to. That's I need that like emotional. <laughs> need to change that so yeah 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 but i loved what ashton mentioned about like the aesthetic because uh both of these movies so i've watched mad max multiple times and it's beautiful to look at barry linden i've actually only watched once but i've actually watched it multiple times because i will literally like put it on mute and just leave it in the background while i'm doing stuff because it's literally so beautiful to look at it's literally like every single frame is like a like a fucking painting like it is yeah. so gorgeous. So like I will straight up like just like if I'm folding laundry or if I'm vacuuming my room or if I'm cleaning my apartment, I'll sometimes put on Barry Lyndon. It's just a great like little background movie to have on in the background. So um so yeah, both of these are excellent and while I do have Mad Max higher, it does make the list quite a lot. It makes these tournament fights quite a lot. Uh, I think it would be great to see like something like Barry Lyndon push through more and see how far it can go. So Barry Lyndon for me. Mm, yeah. Well, when I was prepping for this and, and trying to decide what I was going to watch, I asked a, a few different people. I asked Wolf, but then I also asked um, Austin. And he's like, yeah, like you are like you would hate Barry Lyndon. Because Austin had to, to watch all the um, – every Stanley Kubrick movie for, for – a, a, a show is on he's like like that was hands down my least uh favorite one i did not not really like it so i'm like all right well i'll start with some other stuff so so yeah I, i'm just not a big period piece guy stanley kubrick i do like like uh, a lot of his stuff but i'm just uh, i don't, i'm not sure about this one so um <laughs> uh, but but yeah mad max from the director of of Happy Feet and Babe Two, A Pig in the City comes Mad Max Fury Road, which is <laughs> crazy. But um, and yeah, like I think like George Miller's got to be like what, like in his eighties or or something like that. And like he, he's able to make this crazy, like just just kind of acrobatic, all the wire work, all the cars, all the vehicles. I think that that like it was a huge achievement. Mad Max Fury Road, one of my favorite movies of all time. I absolutely adore this movie because. I worked in a movie theater when when this movie was released, and I meant like I can't count the number of of times that I snuck away into the theater while while I was working, and, like just sat and watched this uh, a movie. I probably watched this movie like probably at least four times all the way through while I was on the clock, and maybe not even really supposed to just sit and watch a movie. I, I just did it anyways, <laughs> and then got away with it. But so I got paid to watch this movie. But um, and yeah, just like the the vehicles, like the and also, I'm a huge a Charlie Theron fan. Like, like, she's my favorite actress working today. So, like, I really wish they were, would have her in the next uh, movie. But, but like, maybe we'll still get one with her in it. You never know. But, um, 
Uh, but yeah, like I think that it's like like really just like a amazing feat to just just have like a freaking car that's powered by an electric guitar that shoots freaking flames. Like, are you kidding me? And then the way that that, that like it almost looks like a like Cirque du Soleil show with like when they're like like doing the wire work, just just like jumping back and forth while they're like speeding like so fast. And, and then when they go into the sandstorm, like just all that stuff, it's just like really really cool and like stunning to look at. And like, if there's anything that I love more in, uh, uh, in a movie, probably my my um, top two things are like, like really great characters, so Mad Max and Furiosa and, and that, and then also a really great special effects. And this is some of the the best I've seen in the last like twenty years. So, yeah, I gotta go with Mad Max Fury Road. So, but, real quick though, for no votes, like him and I watched this in the theater together, and we watched it in three D, and I still remember how like amazing that experience was. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, cool. it's awesome. Yeah, but Noah, what are you gonna go for? So like, if a movie is bad but like looks really good, I will still probably like it. And both of these movies have like really great visuals. Uh, that being said, though, I Stanley Kubrick is like one of my all-time favorite directors. I like pretty much almost all his films. I I love. Um, and so like Michael said, Barry Lyndon, like almost every single frame of this movie looks like a a painting, an old painting. So I, I, for that, I, I'm gonna go for Barry Lyndon. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, Austin's probably gonna be be a shock because you tell me some of the. Of the matchup, and he's like, "Yeah, Barry Lyndon is gonna make it against Mad Max." But hey, like, like here we are, Barry Lyndon. <laughs> so the, yeah. the, I, I feel like a lot of people are gonna be mad at, at us because, like, I forget what like Streetwise beat, but it beat. I think it beat yeah, Streetwise like, like two. Yeah, and like a few of these other like underdog films are like going. Yeah, through. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's just the panel. Yeah. It all depends on, on on who you have on the panel. Hey, so. hey, Michael, do you see me liking Barry the Lyndon? No. Oh yeah, I see you love it because it's extremely subtle too. Like, there's a lot of subtleties in there that I think you're really gonna dig. So yeah. <laughs> so uh, when's movie forty three have... showing up, Ma- Mike? When is it showing up? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, we have City Lights, uh, Charlie Chaplin. We have the Big Lebowski. Uh, and this time it'll be Ross first. So. I like the big. I love you know Big Lebowski, but I just watched Sea Lights, and I think I might prefer it. You know, like it's because like it is the most subtle silent film I think I've ever seen. And then you know like you know like you know like like and it's really funny. It's really you know like you know like it's really emotional. And I did cry at the end, Mike. You were right. So yeah, I'm gonna go with City Lights, even though I do love the Big Lebowski. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well. For- yeah, that it. ending can that ending can always make a can always make a grown ass man cry. Like, oh my lord, it it's super emotional. Um, man, so this is this is tough because the Big Lebowski is like to me it's my favorite Coen Brothers film. And it's in my like top fifteen. City Lights is somewhere like in my top twenty, twenty five, somewhere in there. But it's like, but the thing is, I kind of want to push in City Lights only because I don't think we've ever had it on a tournament fight. And 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 I just I and I'm kind of feeling that mood today. Like I just want to see like these films who that haven't been on these because uh, it's cool to have these films that are like first timers on here. And I think that it would be cool to get them pushed through more. So, and you know, I rewatched a bunch of Charlie Chaplin films, a little shameless plug here. You guys can go to my channel. I watched every Chaplin film, all of his feature Mm -hmm. films. He's now become one of my favorite directors. I have, I have a ranking video on my YouTube channel of all the Chaplin films. This one's my favorite, but going through them all and rewatching this again, like, yeah, this film is truly like, his masterpiece. This film is hilarious. It's heartfelt. It's emotional. It's just, it's got it all. This film is absolutely brilliant. It's free on YouTube. So, if it, and so if y'all don't have any streaming services, y'all can literally watch this for free on YouTube. It's excellent. Check it out guys. Um, so yeah, I'll say city lights, but I, but the dude does abide though. Not going to lie. He does abide. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So you know Austin's take on the big Lebowski mind is kind of similar to where, um, uh, like, we both really like the the characters, like the the dude and like John Goodman's character. Like, we really like the the characters and like the bowling scenes are are cool. Like even like like Steve Buscemi in it and John Turturro and stuff. But 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 like as an overall movie, I'm like, kind of like like just okay on it. Like I think it's good, but like I'm not really like just over the moon about the overall movie. I just really like the characters because I'm a big characters guy that can get really invested in like really great characters. So so that that does work. But I never seen City Lights and like like I kind of have like a weird thing about but like silent era and movies to where like I really like silent era movies from the that era, but then I feel like when like modern movies kind of I try to go back to like do something like the artist or like some of those movies I just don't really care. I think they're 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 boring or like they don't really work for me. But but like the ones from this uh from this time, but but I've never seen City Lights because like when we go back to watch some Charlie Chaplin movies or or, or like movies from that that um. Um, era. I'm always looking for for ones that are like the closest thing to like action that you can have because they're not saying anything. So I want to see him be like big and bombastic and like and, like all over the place. I don't know what really City Lights has if it has much of that. You you get like you a rom com almost. So. You, it, it's a rom com, but you get like this is uh, the circus. This is most physical comedy film, but this yeah. is definitely has like several physical comedy moments. Okay, which happen. Yeah, yeah, that's nice, funny. yeah. But I definitely want to see it though because. I'm a big fan of like like some other silent air like Buster Keaton or or like Harold Lloyd or like some of those guys. It's from back it's, then. it's it's even got a really funny and really great boxing scene in it. So oh well, yeah, so. that's like a famous scene. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. boxes because like that's right on the cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so yeah, so I think still I'm gonna vote for for City Lights because I feel like I would, uh, uh, that I'd probably really like it. So yeah, I'll go City Lights. But, but uh, uh, Noah, what are you gonna go for? First, Michael, I, I really do apologize. I've tried to watch The Big Lebowski twice now. I just I couldn't really get into it. But I do apologize. I'm going to try again. I'll try again. But yeah, I'm sorry about Three that. Three times a charm. City Lights. Yeah. That, true. You're right. City Lights, beautiful movie. I'm going to vote for that. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, Ashton, if, if you're there, what do you got? Um, yeah, I'm going to go with City Lights. Um, I really like the big, hold on. I really like the big Lebowski. It's another one that is just not on my top though. Like, I, I don't know. I just think people are so like nuts over it and I just, I, I, I like it. I just don't like love it, I guess. Um, and I actually haven't seen City Lights. It's on my like to watch list, but, um, I just feel like I would really love it. So, it's free on YouTube too, and then it's weird that, thing to that like it's on HBO Max, but the HBO Max is the cut version somehow. Yeah, oh, weird. yeah I, it's it's just like with the kid. If you ever watch the kid from Charlie Chaplin, don't watch it on HBO Max. Watch it on YouTube because YouTube has the hour and eight minute version of the kid, and the kid on HBO Max is fifty six minutes. Mm. So, okay, so it's kind of so it's kind of interesting. Yeah, so very cool. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that. I know multiple people that have Big Lebowski as their favorite movie ever made, and I'm just kind of like, eh, that's all right. Okay, yeah, I don't, so. I don't say mm -hmm. it's that high, and but yeah. But if someone, had, if, if, if someone, if someone, had, if someone had City Lights as their favorite of all time, I could totally understand that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it'll be City Lights moving on. So, um, up next we got Million Dollar Baby against Life Is Beautiful. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So, um. And at this time, I believe, I think it's me first. So, uh, and this is kind of interesting for me because, like, I really like both of these. I felt like when I watched Million Dollar Baby, though, I I watched it. Well, I was pretty distracted. Like, I had it on my my phone. I think I was even at at work doing something because, like, sometimes for these shows, I'll, I'll have to squeeze in. Uh, movies wherever I can because I work remotely. I work by myself and, I, and like, I can just let I have a movie on my phone while, while I'm working. But, but like, but like I feel like I really need to just sit down and give it an actual proper watch. But I remember it being good though, but like I probably didn't appreciate it as much as I could, but, uh, 
life is is beautiful it's actually really great except for i do think that the, the like that the beginning of it like kind of drags and also that like the way that he's like speaking the italian so fast all over the place blah, 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 like like just gets me a, a little bit but not much that's just like a really minor um uh great because uh just near the end when when uh the, in, in, you know, some of the like like the nazi stuff and like like all the, all of that and like and like what he's willing to sacrifice for his son it, like it gets really powerful really emotional and and, and just really really good and and like I'm, I'm not a big roberto benini fan i saw his version of pinocchio and and like was oh. like literally traumatized like like that gave me nightmare that is pure nightmare fuel stuff <laughs> so yeah but 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 here i'll, I'll actually vote for life it, it, it's beautiful because because I do think that that's great. So yeah, but uh, uh, Noah, if you're there, I don't know if he is. But yes, I am looking right. for a coin. I haven't seen any of these films, so I'm gonna leave it up to a coin okay. flip. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes that's what you gotta right, do. <laughs> I got a coin. <laughs> Heads is gonna be billion dollar baby, and tails is life is beautiful. And it's head, so a million dollar baby, I guess. Okay. But I think you would really like uh, Life is Beautiful. No. That's fair. I probably would. I probably yeah, would yeah. Like that one better. And, and Ashton uh, sent me, me a text. She votes for Life it, it is Beautiful. So she just had to step away for a minute. But, but yeah, uh, uh, Ross. You life see. is beautiful, even though I do love Million Dollar Baby. Life is beautiful. And plus, like, like if you watch Million Dollar Baby again, how many like up and coming actors were in it at the time? You know, like that that had small roles. So, like, you had, like Mike Coulter, and then you also had you know um, uh, Anthony Mackie, and then you also had Jay Baruchel. So yeah, yeah, yeah so that's is true. Beautiful. You forget all all those guys are in it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I totally forget that he's in it too, but. Yeah. Well, Wolf, what are you going to go for? Um, so, wow. This is, I think, the first time I've ever had it, like, straight up like this. So, Million Dollar Baby. So, uh, okay, I'm not going to say which ones are which, but until I say my vote. But these are literally number 37 and number 38 on my list, like, straight oh, wow. up. <laughs> so my number thirty seven and number thirty eight are going up against each other. This is so both of these are straight up neck and neck. Um Yeah. But for me, just barely, I'm gonna lean life is beautiful because I just think that this film manages to keep uh a like a tone uh like it's very i feel like jojo rabbit was very heavily inspired off of this film because it's a film about the holocaust yeah that's and true. it's yeah it's a comedy but then it's not making light of it at all it's showing how like even in something as tragic as that there can still be beauty because the father is trying to protect his son from the holocaust and he's trying to tell his son it's all a game like his son is super young like 10 years old or something like that uh, or younger and he's like saying it's all a game. You get a thousand points if you do this and that. And he's trying to protect his son from the Holocaust. And it's a really, really beautiful. Like it's interesting how you get two halves. You get the first half where yeah, it's the clown. He's goofy. It's fun, and you're getting the whole thing like that. And once you get to the literally the last hour mark, it's just I cry so hard at this movie. It is just so emotional and so powerful. And so yeah. I'm gonna go with Roberto Roberto Benigni's masterpiece, and he uh, and Austin was like when he watched this film, he was like, "That character's annoying as shit. I hope he gets killed as, by the Nazis." Well, Austin, really? <laughs> I'm here to tell you that he actually won the Oscar for this movie. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> well, both these movies are Oscar nominated, so and oh, that's yeah. a beautiful one. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> so. So yeah, life is beautiful. Um, I'm next. We got Punch Drunk Love, Paul Thomas Anderson against School of Rock. Ooh. All right, nice. <laughs> um, and it'll be Noah first. So, what are you gonna go for? 
I, I, uh, uh, <laughs> I haven't seen School of Rock, but I also think Punch Drunk Love is a little overrated. Um, that being said, I still think it's good. Just, I don't know, I'm, any, all of Paul Thomas Anderson films, I haven't really been the biggest fan of, except for Phantom Thread and the uh, latest uh, pizza one. Licorice Pizza? Yeah. But, yeah, Licorice Pizza. Um, I'll, I'll still go for Punch Truck Love, though. I, I still enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. And, um, Ashton says that she was for the for the school of of rock. She she's a big Jack Black fan in, in that movie, so so she was school of rock. Uh, Ross, or, uh, Punch Drunk Love. Here. Yeah, I'm here. Punch Drunk Love. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, uh, Wolf. Uh yeah. So for me, I'm gonna see. This is tough. Because Punch Drunk Love, I think, is like the better movie. Um, I've watched it multiple times. I've rewatched School of Rock more. But here's the thing: School of Rock has a very personal connection to me, and the reason why is because it literally was the film responsible for making me like music. I actually became a fan of music in general because of this movie, because I was like so into the songs, so into that culture, so into what Jack Black was teaching the kids and all that stuff. And, and even, and plus as a kid, when I was really young, I had a crush on the bass guitars <laughs> when I was like a kid watching this and I was really, oh, yeah. really young. Um, <laughs> so yeah. And I love the songs every once in a while. I'll literally just play the final, baby, we were making straight A's like on YouTube. I'll literally yeah. like play that. <laughs> and everything like that so um, good yeah <laughs> and it's just because it's just so good but yeah you know i'm gonna lean towards school of rock here just because it's got that personal connection for me so yeah like i i actually kind of have a little bit of a personal connection because i, I went on a date to go see the, the school of, of rock and like man both me and my my date were just dying laugh uh laughing in this movie because like one we're both big music fans like i grew up listening to like, like a lot of punk rock a lot of classic rock just a lot of that that stuff and then even like like old school rap i know that's not really really in this movie per se but that's just just like like the kind of music that i grew up with and like and like i was really into all of that and and especially uh jack black just like the like his like mannerism like the bim 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 and I'm also a big Adam Sandler fan, but but I kind of think Paul Thomas Anderson is a little overrated. I'm just not a, a huge PTA fan. Like really, the only the only Paul Thomas Anderson movie I like is maybe Boogie Nights. Like I don't I don't really like love a lot of his movies that much. <laughs> so I mean, but I do kind of like Punch Drunk Love. I I do like especially like like near the end when like Philip Seymour Hoffman he shows up for a minute like uh, like near the end and. And just like like some of the things Adam Sandler does, I'll watch Adam Sandler like do anything. I'll I'll watch him sit and like drink coffee for an me, hour. Me, like, me and my me and my friend meme that Philip Seymour Hoffman conversation a lot. So like if we ever get mad at each other, we'll literally meme that. Shut the fuck up! No, yeah. you shut up! Shut up! Shut shut shut! Oh my god! My, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember shut, that shut, one yeah. time in the group, <laughs> you guys sent it to each other for an hour straight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, yeah, so. So yeah, I got to go with the school of of rock, and I believe uh, the the guy that played Freddy passed away. I, if I remember, yeah. right, I think that, yeah, that, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. So R.I.P. him because like yeah. 
Like I wouldn't mind actually seeing a sequel to this sometime. Just like, just don't like, don't what? listen to the Broadway musical. The Broadway musical is oh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but but like, like I wouldn't mind just like revisiting, seeing what the kids are up to if they're in college or just like have families or like that and they reunite for like a tour or something maybe like who knows but 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 yeah school of rock so uh so it'll be school of rock moving on uh let's see what we got but the wizard of oz up against the green mile Ooh. so um and this time it'll be ashton first i don't know if she has a uh, vote yet, but that's fine. We can go to to Ross and you can text it in whenever you want. But um, yeah. oh, she just texted it. She says Green Mile. So is her vote here? So, but but Ross, what do you say? I gotta go with um the Green Mile. I do like with Ross, but the Green Mile, you know, me my is in my is one of my favorite movies of all time. In fact, I prefer Green Mile to Shawshank. But yeah, so you know, uh, yeah, I do love the Green mm. Mile so much, and it's so good. Yeah, uh, sounds good. Uh, Wolf. Now nah, I know we're supposed to be quick. I know we're supposed to be quick, but I do want to just say this one thing. It's honoring my grandma. This is my grandma's <clears throat> favorite movie of all time, or one of her favorite movies of all time. I would every time whenever she used to live in North Carolina, we would watch Wizard of Oz together all the time. Uh, and it's one one of the films that made my love of cinema happen. I grew up with it so many times. It was the very first movie I ever watched. And I watched it with my grandma. Uh, and it ended up being the last movie I ever watched my grandma. My grandma passed away in 2020. Mm-hmm. And I remember we were all sitting there. Uh, she passed away peacefully at home and wa- uh, as we watched that movie. And I remember um, sitting there watching it. And at the end, when Dorothy is saying goodbye, every single time I watch this movie now, I get extremely emotional because it always Dorothy always reminds me of grandma in the scene when she's saying goodbye. And I'm like the tin man saying like, Oh, and now I know I have a heart cause it's breaking. And you know, and then her hugging my mom saying, I think I'll miss you most of all. Cause my mom has helped her through so much. And I feel like that scene encapsulates my grandma right as she was passing away. And it's just something that really touches me emotionally and so this film is definitely high high up there for me um and it's just one of the and not to mention this is one of the greatest films period ever made but um first so for that reason <clears throat> i'm gonna say wizard of oz <clears throat> i love the uh, yeah, yeah 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 um yeah so um i'm kind of a of the camera i think the Green Miles a little over as I saw. Love like, like uh, basically like I'm a big character driven guy. So the, so like I appreciate all the characters. Like I really like Michael Clark Duncan, Tom Hanks, even David Morse playing the like the like really like the the Brutus the kind of kind of like like horrible guy. Uh, and then Sam Rockwell like I think Sam Rockwell's never given a bad performance. Like I'm I'm a massive Sam Rockwell fan, but but um, but uh, the Wizard of, of Oz is just a classic. Like, I, got, I love the Wizard of of Oz, and actually, something that um, that you would appreciate, Wolf, probably is that I um, I used to do carpet cleaning for Stanley Steamer. That's one of my my jobs I had back in the day. I went to clean this guy's guy's house. It was this guy. He was gay, and, but but he had this this entire Wizard of Oz room that like he was really super proud of. And like, he showed me all around his room. We had all these, these, these like, like signed posters. He had like, like all this memorabilia from the actual movie. He had replicas of the room. I slipped because obviously the, the real ones are like in a museum somewhere, I think. But, yeah. but, uh, but, um, but he had like, like just all kinds of like, like, like Wizard of Oz decoration all throughout his house. And so I thought that was really cool. So, uh, somewhere I have pictures of it, but but um, and then I, I've uh, I'm also like literally done the the whole thing where I had a dream and then like telling people about my 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 dream and I mean, like and you were there and you were there and you were in it you were this person or like whatever like my whole family's in it so like it just reminds me of of uh, of that so yeah I think Wizard of Oz 
it's a lot of fun too and like the things they do with black and white and then they transition to color that was that was was like like pretty revolutionary for that time so so yeah I'll, I'll go and with the real, real quick this is a very very brief thing just because it reminded me of what you mentioned um so my friend she knows i am very personally connected to this movie and so one of my good friends uh for christmas one year she likes to paint so she painted me a thing of the yellow brick road and i had my favorite uh quote from the wizard of oz on it that says a heart is not judged by how much you love but by how much you are loved by others and and i was just like and so i have that hung up on my wall and i want to get that tattooed on me one day that same yeah that's cool so, yeah nice nice <laughs> yeah there's a lot of a lot of cool metaphors in, in in the movie like if i only had a heart or a brain or like like different ways that they portray that or, or like the courage of the lion all that so so yeah but but uh so I'll vote for wizard of oz but but noah what are you gonna go for it i mean wizard of oz it's, it's such a classic film i i love like fantasy kind of films and this is it's it's beautiful the way it was shot the set design all of it was just beautiful film and a great uh yeah revolutionary for its time so definitely gonna vote for that yeah and I'm trying to remember what did ross vote for you vote for the green mile. mile green mile yeah and i and i also introduced you to wizard of oz as well too so yeah so it'll be three to two for the for the wizard of oz still. okay cool sounds good wizard of oz um and we have fiddler on the roof up against Inception, <laughs> two very different movies, but um, yeah. So you don't remember the song from Inception, dude? What's wrong? Like, yeah, they, yeah. Uh, I remember, I remember him like breaking out into a big musical number. And <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I remember the like like really loud music. I remember that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but 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 uh, so your first wolf. What what do you want to go for? Um. So yeah, this is. Another one that's kind of tough. I love both these movies. Um, but for me, I'm going to have to probably say Inception here. I think this is Nolan's masterpiece. Um, I haven't seen Fiddler on the Roof in a while. Like If I rewatched it, I probably would. It, maybe there'd be more of an argument there. I own the Blu-ray. I just haven't watched it in a while. But I love the movie. I revisit the songs all the time. It's... Uh, it's up if Wizard of Oz counts as a musical, then that's the greatest musical. But if this yeah. is, if this is, then that, that would make this the second greatest musical, in my opinion. This one's just excellent. Um, but Inception is Nolan's masterpiece. That movie's just blew me away so much. So, yeah. Um, I've never seen Fiddler on the, the Roof before, but is it actually like about a guy that, like, like place the fiddle on the roof. Like is, it, no. is that an actual thing? No, it's okay. not about that. Okay. Yeah. So like no, we don't know that. That's actually that. like metaphorical about like how they say like if if you can hear the fid fid fiddler on the roof, that means that your life is going to become better and it's a good day. Okay. Nice. Nice. So yeah. So I'll maybe get around to it someday. I'm not the biggest musical guy. Like I'm not. Like I'm just kind of hitting and miss. There are some musicals that I love. Like if you consider Wizard of Oz a musical, that then I actually really love that one but um but yeah but inception though like it's one of those movies that, that like for me it's just hard to rewatch even though like, like i would say that it's good to rewatch it because like like there's a lot of things to think about like it's a very kind of like a mind fuck kind of movie that like you just, you just want want to figure out every little thing that's like happening but at the same time though it just hurts my my brain to watch it too much i'm kind of like 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 yeah maybe two or three times and i'm i'm good for a uh for a long time on it but i do think that the movie's really really good because yeah like i'm on the quick version of the story i went on, went on a date with my ex-fiance to go see inception and like she hated it because she didn't understand a single thing that was going on i just sit there and like like try to explain it to, to her the best that, that I could, but even I wasn't that great at it. That like she still didn't really get it. It's like whatever that that movie's stupid. I hate that movie. I don't understand it or something. So I'm like, well, you should rewatch it probably. But but um, so yeah, just because I haven't seen Fiddler on the on the roof and and I do really like 
in Inception, even though I don't go back to it much now, but 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 I'll vote for Inception. Uh, Noah, what, what did you say here? Yeah, so I watched a, um, with Michael at the film festival, a documentary about Ted around the Reef, but yet I have not seen it, so you I would, I'll just I think, go for Inception. I think you would really like it, though. Oh, I, I believe you, yeah. But I really like the documentary. Yeah. Yeah, well, well um, Ashton, if you, Yeah, I'm back. Here, or, I oh, am oh, back, okay. yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I it's kind of weird because I, like, did musical theater, and I think I've said this on prior shows, but, like, I, like, <laughs> really love, like, going to Broadway and, like, but I'm not a big, like, um, musical fan, like, on film at all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess if Wizard of Oz counts, like, for sure. Um, although it's, like, a really scary movie for me. Kind of like E.T. It's just one of these that I feel like everybody And then like, just, like, if you know the backstory, oh. too, it's not a very happy, happy yeah. movie. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, the filmmaking thing, you know, it's just, it's tough. But mm. I mean, I loved it as a kid. Like, I used to pretend like I was Dorothy. I mean, it was, you know, also my gra one of my grandmother's favorite films ever. I mean, I have that nostalgia. Like, I can definitely um, relate to that. Um, but Inception, you guys, I studied philosophy, psychology, and physics in college. Mm. Like, there you go. just a little background on the weird stuff I'm into. I like, I <laughs> am a big existentialists like just you know the fact that they um like that he was able to make this into a film and capture it and make sense out of it i mean i understand it, it can be very hard to follow for some people but I, like it, it's crazy to even think that this was able to be made as well of that as it was and i think it's a fantastic film like i really enjoyed it. it's one of my it's probably on my top 20 like for sure so i'm gonna have to go with inception yeah, yeah. And also too, like the way that they have, have Leonardo DiCaprio explaining things about like about, about like the weird things that, that like happened. I forget the actual line, but it's like only when when like when I when like such and such happened do we realize that, that like something's actually strange or like whatever. Like it I feel like he, he does a pretty good good job explaining it the best he can within the movie. So so yeah, mm -hmm. but but uh Ross. I'm gonna go say? with um the uh, Inception, you know, like I do, I do love, you know, I do like, I do love Fiddle on the Roof, but Inception is a better movie. And then, like, you know, like about the whole like Wizard of Oz thing, she said, you know, you, you know, like the scene scenes where, where, where like she seems shivering, you know, from the cold, right? Mm -hmm. That was actually asbestos they threw on her. Oh, really? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm gonna go with Fiddle. Inception. Interesting. It makes someone sick. <laughs> um but don't look it up wolf don't look up anything if you if you haven't already just don't look up anything about the making of wizard of oz like i'm dead serious just don't do it like don't let it scar you or change your view on it at all because it's such a i love your story about grandma you know yeah i wish yeah. that i had Maybe it <laughs> well i did watch yeah the, like i did watch the cursed films up to the cursed films is like a shutter tv series and mm -hmm. they did talk about, like, i've heard creepy things, things like I heard that there might be a cut out there where like like one of the munchkins hangs himself and it's actually like 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 in um in the cut of the movie, but like I don't know. It is, it is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I wasn't yeah, sure if that was like an I, urban I legend think, or like I think yeah. it's an urban <laughs> legend, but you can see it yeah. in the film and I think they're saying that it's like a bird or something in the tree is what it actually oh, okay. was. Yeah. Oh wow, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But um we have let the right one in against Blade Runner 2049. Okay, cool. Uh, and it'll be me first. And so I feel like I'm saying this a lot on this episode, but, but I feel like like uh, Blade Runner is another series that's kind of overrated to me. Like like when I watch it, I'm like, it's like just probably expecting something totally different. Like, like it's supposed to be a sci-fi movie set in like the the future. Like I'm, I'm like expecting some more action and some more some more things happening, but it's but it's like really slow and like drawn out and like like I just really can't get into it. Like I and I've tried twice that I tried to watch the original maybe like three or four times. I tried watching this one twice and and like I just can't get into it. Like it just I don't know what it is, but 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 uh but let the right one in. On the other hand, this movie's great. This movie's like really really good and i remember that i that 
I watched this and then I watched the the remake, which is like a shot for shot one with like Chloe Grace Moretz, which which a uh, little fact on on her, she has a lot of 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 like horror uh, remakes. She's just Carrie, just something else too. Like there's Art a third one that, that she does. Yeah, yeah. So she does like uh, all these horror remakes. I guess I guess she likes doing those. But but like but let the right one in is really really good. Like I, like I love like so like. You, they talk about some slow moving uh, uh, movies as where like I don't really like the fact that the Blade Runner is that slow, but like let the right one went in. I actually like that it's slow pace and and like you like you you slowly start finding out all these different things about this little girl. Then you find out that that I believe she's like a vampire or something like that. And so so like uh, the way that she like goes around attacking people, but it, but it's like really cool. And is it like a is it like swedish or like norwegian something like that I forget. Yeah. yeah but like yeah like i just really uh, i dig the way that it's that's done there's like some foreign uh movies that like when they're done right like i love korean cinema i love a lot of stuff out of sweden like like um troll hunter and like and, and then this one and like some of the, the like even midsummer like i know that's not like like from sweden but but it's like set there like so i appreciate that but but yeah so I'm gonna go with let the right one in. That, that the movie's really, really good. So yeah. Uh Noah, what are you gonna go for? Uh, uh, I wish I was second. Oh man. This is <laughs> a tough one. Uh, yeah. Wow. Um both of them are just wonderful, beautiful stories. I think uh Blade Runner has some just gorgeous visuals. Some of the best of like some of the past few years i would say i let let the right one in it's also really good man i love the characters and let the right one in as well oh um (laughs) gosh it's a toughie his uh Mm -hmm. i'm gonna go just for today just because i want to be See it go through. Uh, let the right one in. Yeah, sounds good. I'm Ashton. What, what do you say here? Um, so I really love um do uh, uh let me see. Sorry, I really really love um Philip K. Dick, and I love do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep, which is like what mm. this is based on. Um, okay. but I don't I didn't know I don't I don't know I don't. I didn't find like the film like as satisfying as the books. So, um, but let the right one in is like ha- hauntingly beautiful, and um, I just like really, really loved it. And even the one with um, whatever, what was it, Chloe Grace Moritz? Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Even that, I just watched that more recently with Tony actually, and that was really good too. I thought she did a fantastic job with that. Um, I yeah. like the like the <clears throat> foreign um, version better in the original, but yeah, I'm gonna go with let the right one in. Yeah, sounds good. I'm um, Ross. I'm I'm, sorry, I'm gonna go with Blade Runner 2049. I actually think it's one of the sequels that's better than the original. So yeah, I'm gonna go with Blade Runner 2049. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, Wolf. So this is the hardest uh, one for me yet. This is another one. Uh-huh. It's literally, literally number twenty seven, number twenty eight. Like it's literally, mm. it's literally hard. Uh, but mm. God, this is really tough. But um, you know, I've I was on such a kick for Left the Right One in because the TV show I was watching was coming out. I'm such a stand for this movie, so don't watch the TV show. <laughs> also, oh yeah, the, the TV show's kind of not that good. And then yeah. also, and then also like um, the. The movie, like I'm warming up to it. I fucking hated the remake when it mm. when I first watched it because like I was such a stand for this one, uh, yeah. and I'm I'm growing on it more. But like, but I'm still not like fully there with it. The book of Let the Right One In is excellent. I picked that up for around like October of last year to read it, and it was so good. And then uh, I rewatched the movie after I read the book, and it's like it really everything plays really well with in the book and because i was on that kind of kick recently i think it's just that like recency bias there 
I'll, uh, I'll say let the right one in. Also, I feel like it doesn't get enough um, enough love on these shows. So, um, yeah. So I'll definitely say let the right one in. Yeah, sounds good. Let the right one in. JPL just messaged it up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is still on. Well, to be fair, we we started over, over an hour late in GPU, so. Yeah. <laughs> but, but um, yeah. Um, we have Black Swan up against Gladiator. <laughs> Very different movies. But, um, <laughs> and it'll be uh, Noah first. I'm going to take a little quick break for like 30 seconds. But just give your your thoughts and then just go in order for a second. I'll be quick. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, uh, basically, I I really enjoy both of these movies. I think both tell really good stories. And of course, being that visual guy that I am, I'm going to have to go with Black Swan. All right. I, uh... Yeah, I mean, both fantastic films. was excited to see them both on this list. Um, but Black Swan is definitely another one that Will Fazit's like would be in my top 20. Um, I mean, Natalie Portman, like I love her. I think she's such a fantastic actress. And this would have been such an intense role um, to play. And I just think she plays it beautifully. I also think, um, sorry, what's, what's her name? Mila Kunis. Also, um, I, I don't know. I just think the acting is like top level. It's haunting. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, I love it. So Black Swan. All right. I'm back. So Ross. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna fact, go with my daughter was Black Swan for Halloween this year as well. Oh, Mike, you got to after to send you the pick, Mike. Okay, oh, you want to see it? Oh, yeah, for sure. Would... Okay, okay, but yeah, you know, I'm going to pick, you know, like Black Swan. It's my fourth favorite Aronofsky movie, so yeah, I'm going to go with Black Swan. I do like Gladiator, though. Gladiator is very good, but, but you know, but it's my fourth favorite Aronofsky. The first one will be The Whale, will, will be the whale so yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Black Swan is, Black uh, Swan is my... Uh, sorry. Uh, but yeah, Black Swan is my first favorite Aronofsky film. This film is... Excellent. It's a masterpiece. I think there's just so much, uh, like the themes are really connected. Like, I'm a sucker for those movies that like where people are trying to get to the top and they will go to as far of lengths as they can to become for perfection. And like those kind of psychological like movies, I'm a big sucker for. So I love this one. Um, but that being said, Gladiator is in my top 10 of all time, so uh, I will say Gladiator. Yeah, so I think for this one, I'm going to go against my, my usual judgment, an unusual like, way that I would vote, because actually over time, I've become, become a, a big Darren Aronofsky fan. There's really only one Darren Aronofsky, a movie that I don't like, and that's The Fountain. I can't stand that movie. Like, it's just way too pretentious and weird for me. But, but, but like, every other uh, uh, Darren Aronofsky movie I've loved, though. So, so yeah. Uh, and like, even ones that, that like, I didn't really think I would like, like Mother, and, like, I didn't think I, I was going to like it, but I actually kind of did. So, uh, yeah, I think it's really great. And I think Gladiator is great, too. Like, my my brother, like, he would kill me. Like, I, I think it's like... Is like, like, like number two favorite movie of all time, something like that. Like, uh, I have this video of, of, like one of those like coming home from the dentist videos where where like he was all all like hyped up on like all these d different drugs and and everything really out of it. So we filmed it. And, like the whole time, he's, uh, he just kept saying, "Mom, I want to go home and just watch Gladiator. It's gonna help me be a better man. I just want to be a better person and watch Gladiator. It's my favorite." And like he's. Uh, and I kept talking about that and then also making all of his wisdom teeth into some kind of necklace to give to his best friend he wanted to do. So <laughs> What? Uh, yeah, like it's pretty funny. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he's kinda out of it. But um but yeah, so I think I'm gonna vote for Black Swan here, but but I've been been uh more and more interested in the sequel to Gladiator. Uh they keep announcing more and more 
um, cast members. Like I think they just announced Willem Dafoe or something. I had like I had yeah. zero interest in that movie until they started announcing like Denzel Washington, Paul Mescal. Uh, yeah, and like all, all these. Other, uh, yeah, Paul like, Mescal like, is amazing. Like, even though I know you didn't like love really the movie, good actor, yeah. Jordan, like I, even though I know you didn't love the movie, but you got to admit though, Paul Mescal was amazing in, yeah. in, in After Sun. Yeah, he, he was really good. I just, yeah, I just didn't didn't like the movie. It was just boring. But, but, um, but yeah. So I, th- I think it's gonna be Black Swan, right? I missed a couple of the first. So movies, on but, that, there yeah. goes uh, my number ten. Okay, <laughs> Gladiator. <Yeah>. Nice. <laughs> well, up next we got Goodwill Hunting up against Taxi Driver. <laughs> Ooh, this one's like pretty hard for me. But um, yeah, there'll be Ashton first. So, Great. No. <laughs> yeah, <really> hard one. <laughs> like, can I listen to everybody uh, else's comments for a little bit and get some time to think? Um, <laughs> no, uh, sorry. <laughs> Tony Goodwill hunting against Taxi Driver. I mean, you're a Taxi Driver. That's like your favorite mm-hmm. movie. Oh, well, yeah. I really love Goodwill hunting. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I just I like the fact that Elliot Smith uh, is on the. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, yeah, for several reasons that I don't think we have time to go into. I'm gonna go it with Taxi Driver, but pain, pain to do so, pain to do so. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, if we would have had Richie on him. Uh, we're supposed to have him, our friend from Australia. He just got a haircut to look like Travis Bickle with the the mohawk and everything. Oh yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's a good so, guy. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's awesome. I love Richie, but but Ross, what it, what do you say? I'm gonna go with Goodwill Hunting. You know, like I think it's a more emotional movie. I do love Taxi Driver, but you know, but I'm more of a king of comedy guy. But Goodwill Hunting is amazing, and it might be probably Rob, 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 Rob Williams' second best performance. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Um, Wolf. Uh, yeah, you know, I love Taxi Driver. It's, of course, you talking to me. You have all the yeah great stuff in there. Uh, there's so many films that are inspired off of it, like Joker, First Reformed, has taken inspiration from Taxi Driver, um, like a few other movies out there. Mm. Uh, you were never really here, a few stuff like that, but Drive, like some movies have taken inspiration from Taxi Driver. Um, but Good Will Hunting is definitely in like my top ten of all time. This movie touches me emotionally so many times and like the the script of this movie is excellent the like the scene of the it's not your fault that kills me every time like that scene is just so emotional this is one of the best movies period i've ever seen so uh and rob williams deserved his oscar so good will hunting yeah th- this one's really tough because it's like like the best Robin Williams performance for sure, and and then arguably one of the best for for Robert De Niro in, in Taxi Driver. Like it's it's up there with, with like that and like King of Comedy for me, or uh, and maybe Godfather Two, something like that. But um, but mm, yeah, it's tough. Just because, like, I was pretty late to Goodwill Hunting. I only saw it like four or five years ago, and and I saw a Taxi Driver uh, even before that. Even though, like, I was still kind of late to Taxi Driver too, but I saw that one first, and and like, yeah, like it just really connected with me. Just the way way he, that that it, like it shows just like a gritty kind of older New York City, and, and like he just wants to clean up his city and just and just get rid of all the scum and like and, and like just the the like he, it's kind of like a like play on like mental health in a way and like it just yeah i think that there's a lot of really cool themes and yeah like it's it's just a really fun just cool movie so yeah i think i gotta go taxi driver yeah but i think though like rob williams best performance actually is in one hour photo Mm, that one is great too yeah come on it's all it's all all alzheimer's you know yeah so no you get the deciding vote so Uh, the pressure the pressure yeah. <laughs> uh, honestly, both of these are like really good movies, and they're like they're neck and neck. Like this is this is definitely a, a tough bracket. Um, I think 
barely inching out, I would personally pick Taxi Driver, though. Ooh, all right. Taxi Driver. So with that, there, think... go, there goes my number seven with Good Will Hunting. Yeah, I think Jacob Barber, uh, that's his, his like number two uh, of all time, Good Will Hunting. So, so yeah, he's a fan of that. But um, I'm next, we got The Princess Bride, Amigo Mentoya, uh, and T2. So, um, and it will be Ross first. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to tell you <laughs> a real quick thing about it. I used to not like T2, but now I do. But I still think The Princess Bride is slightly better than T2. But I love both. I'm going to go with Princess Bride by a hair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Wolf. You, you know what I think of this matchup? No. I think of this match is inconceivable. <laughs> um, I, I quote the princess bride all the time i've been i watch this movie there's some movies i watch we're about to talk about another one that whenever i'm depressed i always put them on it's the princess bride and another one on my top 64 i'll bring that up whenever we get to it but um <clears throat> it just always manages to make me happy and this is definitely definitely high up there almost in my top 10 like it's almost like it's right there close to it um but T2, it's a little lower, but I still enjoy this movie a lot. I love this movie so much. One of the best action movies, period, just ever, um, if not the best. Um, so, but, yeah, I'm going to definitely lean uh, towards Princess Bride here. Yeah. Uh, this one's tough because you're talking about, like, like maybe arguably the best action movie of all time, possibly with with, with Terminator Two versus and, the greatest rom com. <laughs> yeah, right. Rom com versus the greatest. Action. Yeah, and and um, also Terminator Two, and uh, we got we got Sarah Connor. I mean, I know we got her from the the, the first one, but she gets even better in the in in this one. You get uh, what's his name, Patrick, uh, guy that was in like X Files and, and all that, uh, playing the the T one. 1000 uh and like some of the the things that he's able to do like like i guess he like practice running and like a certain style of it to be able to run so fast that that's so so i just saw this the other day that that like he he like practiced running and like breathing techniques like, like so many times that that uh when um, arnold schwarzenegger was on the motorcycle he kept catching up to the motorcycle and they have to reshoot some of the scenes they kept catching up to him so <laughs> um but um but the princess bride though was my my ex-wife's number one favorite movie of all time literally like a, i mentioned it before that their whole entire uh apartment and our house were just covered everywhere with 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 um princess bride so we had bed spreads we had blankets we had magnets on the refrigerator we had pillows we had we had all kinds of things everywhere like she even had uh like Wesley, a cardboard cutout at one point. Like, uh, so yeah, and, and I, yeah, I, I dressed up cool. as him for Halloween one year. It was like, Ooh, nice. I, I dressed up as Dread Power Roberts, and I awesome. dressed up as Amigo Montoya. And so, Ooh, that's awesome, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and there's even like, like just like little characters, like the Billy Crystal, and like, like I'm not, like I'm not a witch, I'm your wife, like, like just like some of that stuff, and. And it's just really, really good, and it, and I think that it still holds up. So, yeah, I gotta go with the Princess Bride. Yeah. Uh, Noah, what do you say here? This this was pretty easy for me. Princess Bride. It's super funny, super quotable. And I'm not like I don't typically lean towards like action oriented films. So Princess Bride. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> Sounds good. Um. I'm Ashton. Wow, I just feel like I'm the antithesis here. And I'm not even, it doesn't even make sense. I feel like everything in me, <laughs> yeah, who even cares about Terminator? Like, I don't like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like, I'm not a huge action fan. Like, I should love The Princess Bride, but I don't know why. I just feel like in high school, everybody loved The Princess Bride. Like, it was like the only <laughs> movie that freaking existed. And I know it's stupid. It's like the stupid social bias. But because of that, I could just never get into it because it just bugged me. 
and I haven't like revisited it to like give it the credit it is, it deserves. And as far as like action films, like I love Terminator and I love Terminator too. It's like so cool because it's one of these where it outdid the original, you know, and I just think it's such a fantastically fun film and Sarah Connor's a badass. And I just feel like I have to go with Terminator too. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Like, Mike, like Mike, Mike you do that again. Guess what, Mike? Zaire has to, you know, like you're like dressed up as a Princess Bride again. Zaire has to dress up as Fezzik. Oh, yeah, so <laughs> that. Wouldn't that be amazing, Mike? <laughs> oh, well, yeah. well, well, if you have any like super tall friends that can be be under the giant, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it'll be be a Princess Bride moving on. Um, oh, yeah. we got he going up against oh, the professional. Oh, this is a oh, these are the two Natalie Portman movies, yeah, <laughs> right. Two <laughs> two going to that. And this, these are like okay, she this is my heat? favorite. Like, for some reason, I don't remember her, but yeah, she's a very short part in Heat, but she's in Heat. That's okay. like her, huh. that was actually her second movie right after Leon the Professional. So she did Leon the Professional, okay, and she went on to Heat. So dang it, this is a good matchup. I kind of like it, but. Yeah, this uh, is actually we'll my favorite see. matchup so far. Just because yeah. like, they, they seem like this is like a very good like this is very like these movies are kind of similar, like they're really good. Yeah. yeah, this is my favorite matchup so far. Um what are you gonna go for, Wolf? So yeah, I love both of these. Uh but for me I lean a little bit more towards Leon the Professional. I think that movie is um excellent. The chemistry that uh Leon and Matt Corman's character share is excellent. Gary Oldman is one scary villain in this movie. Mm, yeah, he is excellent in the film. Uh, and I do love Heat, and I love the chemistry between De Niro and Pacino in that movie as well. Uh, and I've still mean pick up the novel for Heat too. But oh, it's so good! Um, it's so good. I read I, it. I read it too. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, both these movies are excellent. But um, but I'm gonna lean a little bit towards the yeah, professional. Also, Natalie Portman. Yeah. Arguably greatest kid performance of all time for this movie. Yeah, arguably. yeah. Like, like, high up there. Yeah, like, for me, like, yeah, it, it kind of rivals, like, I don't know, like, some some early, like, Dakota Fanning or, 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 like, Drew Barrymore when they were really young, kind of, yeah. But the but, kid in Steven Paradiso, though, isn't that yeah. conversation out for me. Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah but, but, so I have to say it again. Like I do think one of these movies is a little overrated, and and that's Heat for me. I think that that's not, not like really overrated. But I do think that it's the greatest bank heist ever put to screen. I think that the bank heist is like an all timer. It's like what like so many other movies modeled their those type of scenes after, like uh, like The Dark Knight and like some of those that the, have these big bank scenes. But uh, but like the rest of the the movie like doesn't really do a lot like i'm i'm not like a huge fan of like like older al pacino i like it like when he's young like in the godfather like i'm i'm not like like uh like one of the people that says the godfather is like an like all timer but but al pacino's performance in the godfather 2 especially well both of them actually like it really it really doesn't matter they're 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 both really good but but for like heat like he's just kind of doing like like she's got a great ass and you're all the way up in it, or like whatever, or like doing that kind of hua type of thing, or whatever. So, uh, but, but yeah, but uh, uh, Leon the professional though is 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 great. Yeah, like I think I think that, that like Natalie Portman is phenomenal, just kind of playing the this this like child that's just kind of put in the middle of like all this crazy stuff going on all the time. But like almost like she wants to kind of be in it, like in a way because she'll go outside the apartment and just kind of sit there and listen to all this crazy stuff that's like going on just kind of hang out and stuff but and then um gary oldman just playing like a a, a really great uh a villain with norman stansfield and then um a gene uh uh reno to give that type of a, of a stand-up performance where where like i don't really notice him doing much else in his career i mean i know that he they still still acting a lot but but like like this is like like really the like main thing that I remember him for and he's great so let's go with Leon the professional uh uh known Noah what you got <laughs> yeah I haven't seen either of these movies but my dad mm. keeps recommending me the professional so I'm gonna vote for the professional 
it seems like it if you're not not huge into action like like heat's all action and like leon has some other moments yeah. in it you, you'd probably like more so yeah but, but you're also a big like filmmaking guy and you'd be very impressed with like the technical achievement of the high scene and heat and, and then the writing yeah. Yeah. and the writing yeah. yeah yeah but but um ashton what are you gonna go for you know, this is funny because I haven't seen either one, but it's still like a really hard matchup for me because <laughs> yeah. I feel like I, the heat, like heat is like on the top. I don't know. It's like the top three that I want to watch next. Like it's, I just haven't had a ton of time and it's just sitting on there. I need to see it because it's always on the top of these lists. And I love a good heist. I mean, I love a good heist and I love watching like it being captured so well on film. I mean, it's so much fun. Like it'd be fun to even try and do that, you know, <laughs> but um, yeah, <laughs> I think like after it, I was like ready to like vote heat if it came up against another one that I didn't know. But um, when I looked at the list, I did some research on this film because I saw a young Natalie Portman and she was a fantastic child actor and I mean, I love Gary Oldman and just like looking at what yeah. it's about. And um, yeah, I just feel like I would go with Leon the Professional for sure. Like I, I just have a feeling if I saw both, that would be the one that I would prefer slightly. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Well, Ross. Heat is my Here second favorite movie of all time. So yeah. Yep. Mm, so yeah, go yeah. yeah. Yep. And Mike and then like I, I showed it. Ash in a scene from Heat. I actually showed her like the like the best scene in the movie, which is the diner scene. Mm. Yeah. Well, all, all, all I know right now is Al Pacino is trying to say to is that the great ass scene. <laughs> no, 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 okay. no. That's what we're it. like sit, sitting down at the diner. Okay. Well, yeah, what I was gonna say is that Al Pacino is saying to Leon right now, he's gonna be like, brother, you are going down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you are going down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But It'll be Leon the Professional. <laughs> uh, we only got a couple more matchups left. Uh, we got Moon up against Pan's Labyrinth. Oh, Moon, Moon. Oh, this is yeah. tough. Uh -huh. This is tough. Yeah. And it's me first. And so I feel like Pan's Labyrinth, I need to give a rewatch to because I remember, like, like uh, I tried to watch it and I didn't realize that, that it was in Spanish. And then, I, and then when I, when I started watching, I'm like, I'm like, oh, it's in Spanish, and like it was, like at a time where like, where like, uh, there's a time in my life where like subtitles and like from foreign movies really annoyed me. I don't have to sit there and like and like read and like it would hurt my my eyes to just like stare at, at the screen. But I've gotten over that, and now like I don't care about that stuff anymore. I actually like prefer watching movies with, with subtitles on because sometimes you like miss a little thing or someone has an accent or or something like that, or or even get get like some kind of context that they wouldn't have ever got like a character's name or something like that. So, so I need to go back in it. I need to re uh, watch it, but, but I'm very hit and miss with Guillermo del Toro. Like I, I love his, his, his creature designs. He has amazing creature designs, some of the best out there, but, but like some of the, the movies I'm not always like as into the writing, but, but like, I, I remember that, that I still did like it, but I, I need to give it a rewatch because I just don't remember a lot other than what the creatures look like. So, so yeah, but, but moon, moon is phenomenal. Moon, like, like one of those movies that just shot right into my, my top 128. This movie is incredible. Uh, Sam, uh, uh, Rockwell just basically like the, uh, the only person in the movie pretty much, uh, unless I'm remembering, um, forgetting any like minor scenes, but like for the most part, you just see see him, and it's like like a sci-fi movie. There's a lot of kind of technical kind of things that he's doing, and like and like there's a lot of twists and turns, and like things that 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 happen to where it's not your like typical sci-fi. It, it, it's like more kind of nuanced, but like in a really cool way. That it's like this movie is awesome, and and like Duncan Jones, like he hasn't really done a lot to to really in in a person. He did that that Jake Gyllenhaal kind of sort of time travel movie. I forget that that name of that one, but but um, and then he did uh, like like Warcraft, and that movie was a letdown for me. <laughs> but but Moon is, is incredible. So if you haven't seen Moon, which I feel like it's like very underseen, go check it out because it's awesome. But uh, uh, Noah, what do you say here? 
but uh, Pan's Labyrinth is like in my top ten films of all time. I just I love films that incorporate both real and fantasy elements, combining them together, and yeah, I just it's such a, such a beautiful movie. I think so. I'm gonna pick Pan's Labyrinth. Yeah, sounds good. I'm Ashton. What do you say? So I haven't, I hadn't even heard of Moon. I mean, I oh feel like God, man. I know. I, I like. It. There's no, no, no. You would love it. Sam Rockwell yeah. plays two characters in it. He yeah. plays um, two people. It's like excellent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I trust you guys' um, uh, you know, like critiques and opinions. So I, I have to believe I would like it. Um, I feel like I've been living on the moon because I haven't heard of this. I'm not a big Sam Rockwell fan. <laughs> Um, oh, but man. Uh, I know, I know. Um, <laughs> but I do love Pan's Labyrinth. I mean, love it. Oh my gosh! Like when this movie came out, I saw it in the theater, and I just thought it was like just visually stunning, like a little bit scary, like the fantasy elements. I mean, same with what Noah said. Like you know, um, I don't know. I just feel like it's really easy to get lost in it, and I just thought it was beautiful. I really loved it. So I'm gonna go with Pan's Labyrinth. Yeah, I feel like Moon. Then it must have had really bad marketing because, like, I've actually ran into a lot of people that have never even heard of this movie. And I'm like, I'm just like, like, how have you not heard of this movie? This movie's incredible. But anyways, um, but 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 Ross, what do you say here? I'm gonna go with Moon. I love Moon. And then that you know, the scene, the first like ten minutes, when you see Sam Markle by himself, and then suddenly like you see. As he's looking, you see himself running by, and it makes you question what's going on. Yeah, and you're like, what the frick? Yeah, it's crazy. So, yeah, I'm gonna go with the moon. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Uh, Wolf, yeah, so uh, Pain's Labyrinth is the greatest Del Toro movie ever. I think that movie is a masterpiece, it's excellent. Um, Moon, I also think it's a masterpiece. That movie just blew me away. Um, and this is. So another space movie we're going to talk about here soon was my introduction to Sam Rockwell. But this was the first time I watched Sam Rockwell, and I was like, damn, this dude can act. Like, he can <laughs> act. Like, yeah. I was like, god damn. I think, if I remember correctly, I think he was also nominated for like a Golden Globe or a Critics' so, Award yeah. or something like that for this movie. He should have been nominated for an Oscar, in my opinion. He was... <laughs> yeah fantastic in this film um and uh yeah ashton says with only three weeks left in three-year contact sam bell is getting anxious to finally return to earth he's the only occupant of a moon-based manufacturing facility along with his computer and assistant gertie when he has an accident however he weakens to find that he is not alone so it's uh it's a really really fascinating movie about uh you know that with themes on connection, themes on what it means to be human, themes on like so many other kind of things that it touches on. And I know this might be an upset, but I'm gonna lean towards me moon. I like it a little more than Pan's Labyrinth. So oh, man. I'm putting this on my top three yeah. to watch. ASAP. Yes, yeah, yeah, you gotta see it. if you like is if you like, you know, you know, like slower you know you like like contemplative sci-fi then you'll love them. well yeah. you know that's like basically what i love the most yeah. other than yeah. laughing my ass off you know um yeah yeah <laughs> and despite what you think of him like kevin spacey does play the voice of the computer but you don't have to see him so <laughs> there's at least that <laughs> yeah yeah i try and separate well, the artist from the man there you go and now we have another. Now movie. we have another Sam Rockwell space movie. <laughs> yeah, right. Movie. Yeah, yeah. Right after Galaxy Quest, uh, we're going to get to Almost Famous. So, um, and I believe that it is Ashton first. So, we're going to go for. It. She might have I'm back. Oh. I'm back. I okay. am so sorry. Okay. Um, no, it's all good. <laughs> right. no this, this is a hard one because I was really excited to see <laughs> both of these on the list. Didn't think they'd go against each other. Oh, man. Um, 
man, this like represents yeah. two sides of my personality right here. I love <laughs> Almost Famous, dude. I love this movie so much. I, I feel like I have to. I mean, that's like, that's just higher up on my list overall than Galaxy Quest. Like, I, I just, I don't know. It just blew my mind. Like, it was, I don't know. I just identified with it so much. Like, it's so interesting. I just, I don't know. I have nothing like I, I can't even capture the words for how much I love Almost Famous. So um, I'm going to have to go with that one. Well, you can do it for for a friend of the show, Stephen Shepard. It's his favorite movie of all time. So we did his his top, top 128 and he, he had it high. But um, Ross, what do you, what do you I'm say? I'm going to go with uh, Almost Famous because my dog is named after, you know, after Penny Lane. So, yeah, I'm going to go with. Oh, yeah. Almost famous, yeah. Oh, yeah, too. And I put this in chat. Actually, Duncan Jones is actually David Bowie's son. So, whoa. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh wow. Interesting. <laughs> and and uh, there's a lot of David Bowie references in Almost Famous. So, <laughs> um, interesting. I didn't know he was David Bowie's son, huh? I'll have to like, like, see if there's a resemblance. Like, look at him. But, but, uh -huh. Uh, yeah, but, but Wolf. So, I love this poster Wolf. here, but yeah, Almost Famous. Uh, first off, love the movie. It's like my, um, it's like a movie made for me because I'm even though I'm a '97 kid, I'm actually like more mid '70s kid at heart. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, I love that era. Uh, and right after school, rock got me like interested in music. Almost famous is one I watched right afterwards, and it made me fall in love with music. Um, and it has to me the single greatest soundtrack of any film i've ever heard this soundtrack is amazing mm -hmm. and and uh i even better than guardians it. mixed day <laughs> I, think so. I, I, I personally because the songs <laughs> yeah. they're choosing this i i really love almost famous but yeah sure. um and then also the um i also if you guys watch any cut the theatrical cut's good they were actually well theatrical cut so great don't get me wrong but watch the bootleg cut the director's cut this is the uh yeah, that's the first one i right saw here. yeah and uh yeah it's the two hour and 40 minute cut uh the original is two hours and two minutes so they had like yep several was more. shot in san diego too so, yeah so they had several more like 35 mm, minutes nice. worth of footage to the to the director's cut and it's and it's really, really good. It really adds layers to the film even more than the theatrical cut does. Um, and yeah, this this film I rewatched it again for this show. It's it's uh it's probably the greatest music film ever, period, in my opinion. It's excellent. Um and yeah, Penny Lane, all the characters, like I love how the themes are about like chosen family, you know, and you feel like they are your chosen family. As you watch it because you fall in love with the band and like the whole band just feels like a family billy crudup is great all of them are great um so galaxy quest though ah, see i watched so this is that other movie i mentioned that whenever i'm depressed i will put this film on to make me happy because it always cheers me up and it always makes me like excited i rewatched this in the theater i can quote this movie so much when i watched this in the theater i was really sitting in the theater being like by grab thaws hammer what a savings i was able to like quote the whole like movie and stuff like that while it was happening i love this movie so uh -huh. much and just so we have like a sam rockwell versus sam rockwell tournament here because that'd be fun have moon versus galaxy quest i think that'd be kind of fun uh yeah i will go galaxy quest yeah so for galaxy quest that they, they have a whole documentary that's all about the the like like fandom behind galaxy Great quest and the, documentary yeah and like yeah. how it's become a cult classic and i think a lot of the screen junkies people were were involved with it because you see like how rudnick in it you, you see scott mance in it you see like some of those of those people in it which is kind of cool but because that 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 documentary i actually got to see it in theaters because i was working at a movie theater at the time and i remember one day i was like walking through the theater and i see all these kind of weirdly dressed people that that like kind of had this like, kind of weird haircut and it's people that were like coming in like dressed as the thermians from uh, galaxy quest and they're like talking like this talking like 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 we are here to see a movie kind of doing that 
it was really cool to see because the theater was like packed so so there's a good amount of, there's like 30 of them that like came in like that i was like whoa this is kind of cool but but um yeah and and i'm just a big tim allen fan like i'll watch anything tim allen does it, he's kind of like my my guilty pleasure and maybe not so guilty i don't know but but I, but i'm just a, a big fan and like i do like almost famous i just uh, I mean, I just don't love it, but I, but I like it. And like, I think that it is good, but, uh, and, uh, especially like Kate Hudson. And then, uh, the actor that like, it, like, it, like plays the boy that's working for the Rolling Stone. Like, I think he's good, but, um, but, but yeah, for me, I just kind of lean a little more towards galaxy quest. And like, I just have fun because like, I've been to a lot of these conventions. I'm like a, a a huge nerd that's like been into all this stuff. I'm a massive like um, Star Trek: The Next Generation fan. I, I've been rewatching it, and I'm like halfway through season three because I want to watch Picard, the the final season. But but I don't want to watch it till I rewatch all of the Next Generation. So I'm like holding off on it. So so yeah, I'll I'll get there eventually. But but yeah, this is kind of like an a, like like paying homage to a lot of that stuff because I've been to the convention. I've met the whole cast of Next Generation. I've met like a lot a lot of those actors and stuff so yeah kind of up my alley so i'll go galaxy quest yeah uh then um noah what are you gonna go for no i haven't seen um like almost famous yet but i feel like i'd probably like it more than i like galaxy quest so i'm gonna go for almost famous yeah so I think you were the deciding vote, so it'll be almost famous. So. Oh, you didn't have the uh, same Aqua versus the same Aqua, man. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, we did Ashen uh, vote? Uh, yeah, you, you put it Ashen, right? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah I did. I, I, did. I, I think I was first. first, maybe, yeah. Almost famous, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost famous, you know, plus it was shot in my in, in our hometown, too, so. Mm. Oh, yeah, true yeah. that. So, because, like, right. in the opening scene when you go to the concert, that's actually at Sports oh, Arena. Oh, shit. This <laughs> next match. Yeah, we got, we got Alien versus American Psycho. For, oh. So, uh, this time it'll be Ross first. So, Oh, I do love both. And this is a hard yeah. one. But this one is hard. Let's <laughs> see. Me, 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 miny, mo. American Psycho. All right. <laughs> I love it. Say it's actually my friend's favorite comedy of all time. So, mm. yeah, you can kind of look at it as a comedy in some ways. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I mean, like, like how pretentious they are talking about their business card. So, yeah, yeah. like uh, we'll talk about it when when it's my turn. But there, but yeah, there's some some interesting stuff with those business cards. <laughs> but but Wolf. <laughs> oh man, so yeah, this is a hard one, but. Um, it's because I love both of these and both are pretty neck and neck, but you know, one's got Huey Lewis in the news, in the <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> um, no, um, but seriously, though, I, think I, square. I think I do like, um, you know, Aliens may be the better like made movie, but I can find myself watching American Psycho more and like dissecting it and all that stuff. and everything and christian bale is my second favorite actor he's exceptional and everything he's excellent in this um and i just find myself where you watching it more because aliens like slow pace you know it's harder to like re-watch it constantly but um but american psycho though definitely uh is just excellent so i'm gonna go american psycho here yeah um it's been interesting for me because I watched American Psycho yesterday for the first time to to prep for this and and this movie was great. Like I, I absolutely I uh, loved it. Like it like like part of it kind of felt because I know that it's a shot for shot remake of uh, of the original, but but like part of it kind of felt like a bit like a play, but like in a good way. Like you could tell that they're that they're like like doing it shot for shot. He was kind of doing like a a certain character with like the the like like interesting voices he was doing and like that kind of thing. And, and but like, like it, it just worked though. Like the way that he's narrating and like, like saying how he takes care of his body and like puts all the lotions on. Wait, like, this, like this isn't a remake at all. Thing. Jordan, this isn't a remake at not? all. No. Is it not? No. No, it's a completely. They could have sworn. 
American Psycho is. They did a sequel, did it. American Psycho Two, I think. But they yeah, because uh, for some reason I, I thought maybe someone told me that it was a remake of, of another movie. Maybe not, but but mm-hmm. it but it still felt like it was kind of done like a play to me. Like I still kind of noticed that that vibe though, even so. But but it yeah. just like like I don't know. But but like almost like they're they're like doing kind of like uh, like over the top characters like in some ways but but it worked though like it, it it's actually like really really good and and yeah like man like this movie just goes goes crazy but like in, in like like all the best ways and like i didn't even realize how many people he actually kills in the movie so he actually says it all and I'm like yeah probably like like when he says says like like 20 or maybe even 40 people i'm like i'm like oh yeah like that probably sounds about right yeah <laughs> but, I'm, but i'm curious because the big debate is do you think it was all in his head or do you think it was like actually all happening yeah like i wasn't sure because the like ending kind of alludes to that so i'm like i'm like whatever happened like all of a sudden like he's about to, to be arrested and his life's over and then boom he's like not like it almost made me think that, like maybe he had a like multiple personalities like sort of things that so like there, there's one personality being being the uh the uh what do they call it uh the bateman patrick bateman uh and then like there's like maybe like another personality being someone else i don't know but but um but like despite all all that like like alien to me is an all-time classic like this movie like like one of the best horror sci-fi movies ever made. It gave us one of the, the most badass, like sexiest uh, um, action heroes with Sigourney Weaver, and and, uh, and also like it's just one of those things where where like there's a there's like twists that are like like very shocking that you don't see coming. And like the first time you see the the little chest burster alien that like pops out, and all of a sudden it, like, it just takes off like it was like out the door and like uh, just out of there, and then like. Like you don't even know like where this thing is. Like it could be anywhere in the ship, and then the xenomorph just keeps popping out of nowhere. Like it's just really, really, uh, um, frightening like that. And and then I'm um, still to this day that has one of the best trailers that I've ever seen. Like the original Alien trailers, really, really good. And and then it has one of the best uh, taglines. Like in space, no one can hear you scream. Like it's just just so good. So I just think I got to give it to uh, uh, Alien here. So, but uh. Noah, uh, what do you say? Uh, yeah, I, I honestly, I, I love Alien. I think the Xenomorph is still one of my favorite like this creature designs, like to ever be, to ever be done. I love the Xenomorph design, and mm-hmm. to this day, I still think it has like one of the like best jump scares. Uh, it took me like maybe four or five watches before I didn't actually jump to it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Alien. Yeah, sounds good. Um Ashton, what do you say here? Yeah, I'm still jumping. I'm still jumping, Noah. <laughs> um <laughs> uh I don't know. I love Alien. I mean I it's like one of my favorite like sci kind of horror of yeah. all time. And it's really bugging me that it is up against American Psycho, like it's mm-hmm. like a flip. It's like a flip situation for me. Like yeah. I don't know how to even possibly go between these two because, like, I am obsessed with the psychopathic mind. Like I like, I'm just like one of like all over the crime documentaries, reading as much like, like I like the diagnos- diagnostic and statistical manual of mental illnesses. Like the DSM, I mean, like that's I like have read the whole thing. Like I'm so obsessed with like <laughs> conditions and just like when I just feel like he's just like a pure like psychopath. Like the director has actually really like said that, um, like he's like really against this idea of like it all being in his head, um, because I think like really the idea behind his character, which he does, is exceptional. At by the way, like you almost like. Oh, yeah. I have to think there's something a little off about Christian Bale because he's like just way too good at this character, you yeah, know. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, but <laughs> I just think he's like purely like a psychopath, you know. Like he's just like it's just a look at it, and I think we all want to like. It's interesting because I find that we all like the human condition. We want to make sense of it. 
because for the average person, like what he does, you can't make any sense out of it. So we want to say like, oh, he's he's schizophrenic or it's all in his head or, you know, like it's, you know, whatever. But like the whole point is it's not. In my opinion, it's not like this is just a look at the fact that there are people like this that operate like this. You know, and then there's people out there that watch this and identify with this character. Mm, yeah. And, you know, in that way, it's like deeply unsettling and uncomfortable. But I think that's kind of what it's meant to be. Um, and as much as I hate to say that for that reason, um, I'm going to go with American Psycho. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. Too, well, it- and my dad, though, and my dad like can actually like tell you the story, too. Like he mm-hmm. saw Alien in the theaters, right? Yeah. And, then, and they're like, do you remember the scene? Or the guy's going like, here, kitty, 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 right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then like there, there's that second of silence in this year. This this guy went. Also, my dad said he jumped about fifty feet. Y'all talked about, about the jump scare too. The director's cut. They had the yeah. one part that also is another jump scare, where it's like that one shot of the alien like hiding in that little yeah. like, cover or something like that, and it's just like, oh, whoa, what is that? And then it's like one of those kind of. I feel like we maybe got like Christian Bale doing like a real life American Psycho when 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 he's on the set of Terminator Salvation, freaked out on the director, and and he's like, "Oh, good for you!" and like screaming at him, like all that stuff. (laughs) Yeah, I was like, he may have a little bit of that like obsessive perfectionist, like you know what I mean? Like he's just so good, you know. Like when you talk about Black Swan and you know all these like Aronofsky, like you know obsessive obsessive um like perfectionist kind of roles yeah. like I, I see him as that kind of a, a person you know like, like he's that he, kind of an actor so maybe there's like a little like, bit him in that like lost character. like extreme weight and like gained weight for roles and done crazy things like that yeah, yeah. like he said he's done oh, with yeah, that like such a method actor you know yeah, yeah. But he's done with that too okay because that can't be be healthy for you, but that's I mean, why he's doing, you know. he stopped doing it. He says, "Yeah, yeah." But we got Fight Club up against Toy Story. That's um, a weird one. But yeah, <laughs> right. And, and it's by the way, I also want to clarify as well yeah. that this is another thing with like the Lord of the Rings, where I put like the first three Toy Story movies into like one package because I couldn't mm. choose between them. So, <laughs> but, but I, but I am having Toy Story three kind of like represent. Like that's okay. the one I threw on here. So it's Toy Story three. Yeah. Oh yeah, Toy Story three. It, it mm-hmm. just cut off on the bottom. Yeah, Toy Story yeah. three. Okay. So well, you'll be up first, Wolf. So you got. <sighs> See, this is hard for me because I grew up with Toy Story. That's a big, big part of my childhood. But Fight Club is super high up on my. Uh, lists of movies so i'm gonna have to lean fight club here even though i've been breaking the first and second rule but that's whatever <laughs> yeah right don't talk about it but um yeah this one is, is um pretty tough for me because especially toy story 3 this is a movie that that makes me like sob as an adult and it's not the incinerator scene i mean that one's sad but like at the end when, when andy has to give away his his toys and like the way he's he's uh describing it like like each individual toy and to the little girl bonnie and like the like it's just oh it's just like like so heartbreaking but also heartwarming too because he's like giving like a second life and like and, and also helping this little girl out and she's so happy to to have these new toys and that means so much to andy and stuff but but like so Fight Club was another one that I was pretty late to. I only saw it maybe like three years ago, and and um, nobody had spoiled the twist for me, which which was awesome. So I didn't see it coming. Like I had no idea. So so that was great. And and uh, yeah, like it was just really really uh, fun and, and like a really cool movie. And and also rest in peace, Meatloaf, who who passed away like I think about a year ago, something like that. And and. Um, even Helena Bonham Carter, she's great in it too. So I just think, like, I'm a big Brad Pitt fan too. Like, like the guy's like, he's got a lot of charisma. Like, he's very good, good, good looking. Like, I'm, I'm secure enough in my masculinity that like I would would go for that if I 
if I was was a a, a woman probably. But so yeah, oh, vote for Fight Club. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, Noah, what are you gonna go for? Yeah, unfortunately, I think Michael knows that I'm not the biggest fan of Fight Club. I mean, I think it's all right, but it's definitely not my thing. And then we're talking Toy Stories. Toy Story 3 is my least favorite. So uh, this is definitely mm. a strange well, bracket. Uh, it was tough for a whole different reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I... Uh, he, he, I guess, since Michael mentioned the rest of the Toy Story franchise, kind of partially added in there. I guess I will vote for Toy Story. Yeah, sounds good. Um, Ashton, what do you say? Oh man, um, yeah, you know, Fight Club is a weird one because I really like it, and every time someone brings it up, I'm like, oh yeah, Fight Club, man, that was that was so good, and the twist and. You know, the yeah. whole, you know, psychological mm -hmm. element of it, like, such a good movie. I mean, I can see why it made the top 64 wolf, but, like, Toy Story, man. Like, okay, I have said I'm not a huge Disney fan, like, Pixar, mm -hmm. all these, you know, I don't know, like, kids movie in general, but the Toy Story movies, all of them, classic. I'll roll them all into this one, because I love Toy Story. I just love Toy Story. We have all the toys here. Every Toy Story toy you can get. We have nice. Forky, even. We have all the new ones. We have all of them. We love Toy yeah. Story. So I'm going to have to go with Toy Story. Nice, yeah. Yeah, for me, like, I'm kind of the the camp that, like, Toy Story should have ended with the third one. Fourth one's good, but it, it's just unnecessary, but it's still good. But mm -hmm. but now they're making a Toy Story 5. It's like, it's like man, Disney's running out of ideas. I want to make sequels to every movie, and like not a lot of original stuff, so <laughs> just remakes and sequels. But but yeah, um, Toy Story Five though, I love Toy yeah. Story. <laughs> but I'm saying though yeah. that you know you know what that I hit that same though like like it's like unnecessary because like no film is really necessary. But they should have stopped after three. But you know I'm gonna go with five. Even though you know like I do love Toy Story one, two, two and three. I actually think three is my favorite. But I'm gonna go with. Fight Club only because you know you know like my friend like he actually pointed out it's actually technically a comedy, mm. a very dark yeah. comedy. He said, <laughs> "Very dark, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah." But that's right. but it's funny though, like in, in like some parts when talk about like like Meatloaf has bitch tits and like all that yes. stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so there, yeah, yeah. Actually, though, humor. though, like. Yeah, that's like my like the video I showed you a boogie 298 boxing. Didn't he look like meatloaf in it? Oh, oh yeah, for sure. That was funny. Nice. Well, well uh Wolf, did you go first? I think you were first, right? Uh yeah. I broke the first and second roll. Yeah. So, yeah. If you go to Fight Club, so I believe it's gonna be I think it's uh what did you vote for Ross again? Fight Club. So it's gonna okay. be Fight Club. Uh, All right. Ashton voted for Fight Club. Good. Yeah. Now we can uh, go to Toy, Toy Story, right? I uh, voted uh, for Toy Story. Story. Yeah, yeah. But but now we can kick it into overdrive. We made it through all the the matches, so now we can go like 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 ten seconds or wait wait or, wait wait, um, wait a second. Did you vote yeah. for Toy Story, Jordan? No, I voted for Fight Club. Oh, okay. Yeah, Fight Club. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Who did um, you but, vote for? Wolf? Fight Club. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So now we got all the pleasantries out of the way. We got to talk about them. So there's literally a ten seconds awesome or less. Awesome yeah. Hating us right now, wouldn't he? Yeah, you'd be hating us because I figured that we go a little long. Like usually when it's someone's favorite episode, we let them talk a little more, like about the movies that they love and that kind of thing. But on my, my, yeah. my one twenty eight, it'll be shorter because I've already talked about these movies. So yeah, right. right and movie. it. Yeah. Like if you have a quick comment here and you can keep the close to, to 10 seconds, that's yeah, fine. I will. I get it. Yeah, so, yeah, don't worry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <I'm> like, <laughs> we have the thing versus V for Vendetta. So, right. And this time it'll be me first. And 
this one's pretty easy because the thing is just leaps and bounds like one of the best horror movies ever made so i think for me it's got to be the thing uh noah if you're still there i uh, yes i don't yeah. i didn't see who won right. the last one my internet kind of busted out but uh i'm voting for v for vendetta yeah sounds good um, um ashton you got v for vendetta yeah uh ross the thing yeah and wolf the only movie, the only movie i have literally three copies of a blu-ray a 4k steelbook that's unopened and a 4k amazon exclusive and that is v for vendetta so wow that might be <laughs> be an upset for sure so yeah oh my bad hang on Come on, doesn't want to put it through. <laughs> doesn't like it. There we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we have one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Up against eternal sunshine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and it'll be Noah first. Uh, yeah, I vote for eternal sunshine. Yeah. Uh, Ashton. Oh, the pain. The pain. Um. <laughs> Uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Yeah, if you're a fan of like like movies that that deal with mental things going on, here you go. Here's your matchup. <laughs> but yeah, um, right. Yeah, but Ross, one flew over the cuckoo's nest by a hair. I still do love Eternal Sunshine though. Yeah, uh, Wolf. Yeah, right beside the um, Heat and the on the professional match. This is my other favorite match because these are both kind of similar in a way yeah um, very similar but eternal sunshine for me yeah um man this one's tough i mean i might just lean eternal sunshine because i like some of the the side characters also like like mark ruffalo and like elijah wood and it and i forget the the other girl that's there kind of like like hitting on on mark ruffalo but yeah so um yeah so eternal sunshine so eternal sunshine um i see. got my ticket for both afraid Ooh, Ooh, nice uh, do you think uh-huh. i like it Mike? yeah i think it is. uh we got lord of the rings up against signs and this time it'll be ashton first lord of the rings yeah uh uh ross lord of the rings yeah uh wolf this is easy lord of the rings yeah it is easy lord of the rings noah lord of the rings yeah we might have a heavy favorite here we'll see <laughs> uh we got schindler's list against scream uh ross okay schindler's list. schindler's list is in my top 10 movies of all time yeah uh wolf He's there. Well, uh-huh. uh, he might be be gone for a second, so I'll go. I'll vote Scream because I'm a big Scream fan. Uh, Noah. Oh, say. we'll say Scream. Okay, it's just Scream. I vote Schindler. Yeah, Schindler's List. Yeah. So Ashton, you'll be the deciding vote. Oh, this is a big upset, but. <laughs> I like never thought I'd say this, but I just think it took me like 10 watches to even get through Schindler's List. And it's a beautiful film and it's wonderful. But geez, like I'll never watch it again. It's like terribly painful and awful. (laughs) And Scream, I could watch it like all the time. I love it. So, right. But then Ashton, like, Ashton, like, do you remember like when Amelia was asking, oh, Jenna Ortega's in this? Can I watch the new one? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Not not for a six year old, for sure. Oh, I bet. But it's like if you put these two in, in front of you, like which one would you would you choose? For me, it's just hard to rewatch Schindler's List. Yeah. Yeah. Like 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 I have Schindler's List higher up on my list because I think it's a better made film, but like I can watch. So Mike, just like Detroit. I haven't yeah. seen Detroit yet though, Mike. I haven't seen it. Oh yeah, I heard I haven't I, seen that I, either, but I heard it's a real no, 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 Mike, you yeah. saw Detroit, right? I didn't. I actually didn't watch that. It's movie. the one with Catherine Bigelow, you know, the one with uh, Will Poulter. Yeah, yeah I know what you're trying to talk about. The one with, like, John Boyega? 
Yeah. That one. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Well, we got Dead Post Society here against Streetwise. So um it'll be me first. Um yeah, like like streetwise, like I know that like like some people kind of like that it makes you a little uncomfortable. I didn't, so uh, so I'm gonna go with with Dead Post Society, a movie that makes me very comfortable to watch. So yeah, uh, Noah, I'm gonna go with Streetwise. Yeah. Um, Ashton. Mm, shoot. Um, I'm gonna go with Streetwise. Mm, yeah, uh, Ross. Streetwise. Ooh, uh, Wolf. I love it. The little documentary that could, you know, uh, the yeah. very important story, the thing that no one even heard of. They yeah, posted on there, and they're like, "What yeah, the no one heard is of. that?" And now it's pushing even further. So Streetwise. Mm, all right, Streetwise. Moving on, um, we got National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation up against. Shawshank Redemption. Um, and it, it'll be Noah first. You got. I am going to go for uh, Christmas Vacation. Yeah. Um, Ashton. I feel like when we start this whole thing, I always go for the film that I think is genuinely the better film. And then when we get like deeper into the brackets, I just genuinely go for like, if I put these next to each other, what am I going to put on? Yeah, right. Now. What movie do I want to watch right now? I think Shawshank is one of the best films ever made. Like it blows my mind. I love it, but I'm I'm not gonna watch it very many more times. I'm gonna watch Christmas Vacation <laughs> probably like yeah. 250 more times. You know, so yeah, Christmas yeah. Vacation. Ashton, Ashton, like especially living with Wayne, you're probably gonna watch it a thousand more times. Huh? Yeah, actually, in like one more year of living with. Ross's brother, I may like never want to watch this movie again, actually, but we'll <laughs> see. <laughs> well, I watch it every year in theaters because because it, it's fun to just go see it with like a like minded crowd that's like like into it and like and, like knows all the lines and all that stuff. So yeah, but but um, Ross, I'm gonna go with um, Shawshank, even though I do I'm tired of Christmas Vacation because my brother, you know, like is obsessed with lights, literally. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. oh, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, a wolf. Just you, got. you know, considering the next matchup, like what I would be going up against, Streetwise versus Shawshank. Sounds like that'd be a good mm-hmm. matchup. So I'll go Shawshank Redemption. Hey, Mike, how yeah. I am with movies? That that's how my brother is with lights. Oh, wow. <laughs> Maybe yeah. even more so with lights. He may have you beat with lights, Ross. Yeah. <laughs> well, it sounds like my new father and. In law, my sister, I just got married, and the guy that she married, her, her, her dad's obsessed with, with flashlights. Like he likes to get like all kinds of different lumens and like, and, and, like the super bright ones and all these things. He, he has like a collection. It's kind well, of my brother's thing is mainly I- I- inflatables. Okay. Nice. Yeah, like, well, he likes yeah. he likes Christmas lights and he likes the vintage like lights and he yeah. like it's really fun because he lives with us. So now it's like. We're trying to do the whole Christmas like vacation thing. I mean, like I want to like take out the neighborhood next year, you know? That's yeah. Cool. Well, <laughs> like, do they have lights all over his room too? Does he do that? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was excited because when he That's moved cool. in with us, we were like, "Oh yeah, we don't have any rules about what you want to put up." And he's like, "Are you serious?" And I'm like, "Yeah, go crazy, dude. Let's do this." Do you know the nice, plastic nice. Bin, bin, bins Jordan used? He used to seem like typical plastic bins, right? Yeah. He has like four bins underneath his bed full of Christmas lights. And then like seven wow. in my garage. Like seven <laughs> in my garage. Wow. And I bought nice. him an inflatable that's like 20 feet high this year. So it'll be really fun. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, what I'll say about this match is like this is just a a nice surprise. Just a real nice surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we yeah, got. So I should say, there goes my number five for slashing. Oh. Okay. Well, we got Star Trek versus Empire. Here we go. Here's some heavy hitters. Um, and it'll be a wolf first. Ooh, as much as I love Jurassic Park, I'm going to go Empire. Mm. I think I got to go Jurassic Park. It's my number three of all time. Empire's maybe like 20 or something. So, uh, 
Noah, what, what do you got? I gotta go Jurassic Park as well. Yeah. Um, Ashton. It's like not even comparable for me. I'm gonna have to go with Empire. Mm. All right. Um, Ross. Empire. Yeah. So I believe. What did you vote for, Wolf? Empire. Okay, so it'll be. It'll be Empire. Okay. Empire. Um, let's see. We got Lost in Translation up against It's a Wonderful Life. Oh God damn it! Which like they could literally swap titles for these two movies. I think that it would still work. <laughs> yeah. But um, and it'll be me first. Uh, you know what? Like, uh, I just watched Lost in Translation for the first time and I actually really liked it. Like, like and and I started off not thinking I was going to, and the more it went, I just like really liked it. So Lost in Translation. Uh, Noah. You got. I will also vote for Lost in Translation. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Um, Ashton. Oh, uh, Lost in Translation. Yeah, uh, Ross. I'm gonna go with the one that that had uh, Drew Barrymore's grandpa in it, which is "It's a Wonderful Life," because I've finished mm. I've seen the film. I haven't seen all of Lost in Translation yet, but I, but I did like it from what I saw. I really did. I'm about halfway through. Don't tell me Drew Barrymore's grandpa was Mr. Potter. Don't tell me that. Uh, uh yep. Was it? Oh, Lionel sad. Barrymore. <laughs> it was a good actor though to play to play such an unlikable guy, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, but but uh, uh, Ross, what? what you I mean, not Wolfman. Um, but oh yeah, sorry, Wolf. Um, Wolf, sorry, sorry. So, I gotta say. I love both these movies, so it's not not at all. Like both these movies are masterpieces, but this might be the biggest upset of the entire game so far because *It's a Wonderful Life* is now eliminated, and uh, that's my number six. But Ooh. I would have gone with *It's a Wonderful Life*. So. Life, yeah, but it, yeah. we lost in translation, yeah. Huh. Which, like, like even some of the little things from this movie just even made me me laugh, and it goes on like the like talk show or like when when the director's screaming at him in like japanese to do the commercial thing i'm just like, he's, like, made me he's, laugh. Like, he's like is that all he said are you sure that's all he said yeah right <laughs> <laughs> that the all yeah yeah all right so that's the end of that one uh so we'll go to the other side all right cinema paradiso versus barry linden oh, fuck. <laughs> god damn it this might be the hardest one yeah, um, and it'll be me first, which is funny because I haven't seen either one, and I don't feel like either one is up my alley. You but would like Cinema Paradiso, though. You would like, Barry, like more, more than Barry Lyndon. Like, yeah. Sure. You would like it more than Barry Lyndon. Well, for that for that reason, then I'll, I'll go Cinema Paradiso. Yeah, sure. Uh, Noah, what, what do you got? I got a vote for Kubrick. Let's go, Barry Lyndon. Yeah, um, Ashton. Yeah, I'm with I'm with Noah for Kubrick, Barry Lyndon. Yeah. Um, Ross. I'm gonna go with a Cinema Paradiso. It's one of the best movies ever made. So. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, Wolf. Uh, shoot, I'm the sign factor here. Yep, you're the signer. Um, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, why not? I don't feel it's on other brackets, and I think I, it's, they're both neck and neck, but I'll go Cinema Paradiso. Ooh, all right, Cinema Paradiso. Um, we have City Lights up against Life is Beautiful. Mm, all right. Whoa. Um, it'll be Noah first. What do you got? I'm going to look for it. City Lights. Yeah. I'm Ashton. Uh, City Lights. Uh, Ross, city, city, city lights, and Jordan Lott. Like, if you ever watch, watch the kid, you'll the kid actually grew up to be Uncle Fester in the original Adams family. So yeah, mm, nice. So that's how old he is. Nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah uh, uh, it's great. Uh, Wolf. So yeah, one reason why it's perfect that City Lights is gonna move on because that's my vote too. Is that 
because in Sin- Cinema Paradiso, there's actually a scene where they're watching a Charlie Chaplin movie. So, and we're going to have oh, to nice. out, and it would be Charlie Chaplin nice. film versus Sin- Cinema Paradiso in there. So that'd be kind of fun. That's cool. Nice, nice. Yeah, because I think I'll, I'll also also vote for City Lights. So, be City Lights moving on. All right. Uh, we have School of Rock up against The Wizard of Oz. Uh, and it'll be Ashton first. Oh, wow. Uh, um, I, I, I really love School of Rock. <laughs> like, weirdly, yeah. like, love this film. I've seen it like a million times. Um, like, it's super quotable. I also really love Jack Black, so I'm gonna go with School of Rock. It's like which, which musical adjacent movie do you like better? I know, like right? It's like, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, so Ross. Gonna I'm gonna go, go with the uh, Wizard of Oz, but I do like School of Rock. But you know, you know, like it's School of Wizard of Oz is actually really, you know, like it's a, it's an all timer, you know, for me. And plus, too, like that director also did Gone with the Wind and and Wizard of Oz in the same year. So mm, yeah, that is this is pretty big. Yeah, sure. but uh, Wolf. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> yeah. So it is all my all this, my cinephile buddies are gonna watch this and be like. School of Rock's your favorite Richard Linklater movie? So anyway, <laughs> yeah. I'll, have, I'll have more in my 128. I'll have like the before trilogy and I'll have, you know, the day yeah, yeah, yeah. but, every, but everyone's like, you know, all like, everyone's probably all like, oh, oh I can't deal with that. But, you know, it's fine. Yeah. Right uh, because School of Rock is amazing. And um, I will say <clears throat> for, uh, for me, because of my personal reasons, uh, Legend of Oz. Mm. Well, I'm going to say, let's rock. Let's rock today. Let's go school rock. <laughs> so, uh, Noah. Wizard of Oz. Ooh, Wizard of Oz. So. And Wolfie, Wizard better hurry Oz. up, too. Because on June, Oz, 3rd, no, no. June 3rd, one of, one of the actresses from School Rock, uh, Miranda Cosgrove, for season three, season three of iCarly comes out. Ooh, Ooh, nice. I'm a big iCarly fan. Just kind of weird because... Out. Cause like most of the the like Nickelodeon live action shows, it's just a bunch of like like preteens running around screaming and, and like like falling over and stuff. But like, but for iCarly, I like really dig it for whatever reason. Like, a, did you watch the new one though? It's pretty good. Yeah, huh? yeah, the new one's great. Yeah, except for yeah. I'm not a fan of some of the new characters, but it's fine. I can I can like them enough. But mm-hmm. all right, we got Inception versus Let the Right One In. Um, and it'll be Ross first. I'm gonna go with Inception. I do like, uh, I do like Let the Right One In, but I like, you know, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. go with Inception. Sounds good. Uh, uh, Wolf, yeah, I'm gonna go Let the Right One In here. Yeah, I think just by uh, a little bit surprisingly, I didn't think I would, would like Let the Right One In. I wasn't sure about it, and I love this, so yeah, Let the Right One In. So, uh, Noah, you got let the right one in. Yeah, and Ashton. Um, Inception. Ooh, well, it'll be let the right one in. Moving on, so nice. Um, we can have still Black Swan versus Taxi Driver. Two kind of like psychotic type of characters. (laughs) Um, uh. Wolf, if you're there, you're gonna be first. Uh, he may have stepped away, but maybe he'll put it in in the chat. But he said um, Black Swan. Okay, cool, Black Swan. Um, yeah, I feel like I need to rewatch Black Swan. I like remember parts, but not all of it. So I'm gonna go with Taxi Driver. Uh, and, uh Noah, what do you say? Black Swan. Yeah. Um, Ashton. Um, Black Swan for sure. Yeah, and and Ross. Black Swan. I love Black Swan. Yeah, Black Swan. Moving on. Um, then we got Princess Bride up against Leon the Professional. So, and this time it'll be me first. And yeah, I think I got to go with with a Princess Bride. Like, like, no matter how many times, like. 
it gets quoted and like and like people talk about it and they get obsessed over it. I liked it before it, and anyone got ups, like super obsessed over it. So, so I feel like I was before that. So Princess Bride. Uh, Noah, what do you think? I will also go with Princess Bride. Yeah, um, Ashton. Um, I know I I had my like hot take on the Princess Bride, but mm-hmm. I've actually seen it and I don't hate it. I just like I'm not obsessed with it, but. Yeah. I've actually seen it though, so I'm gonna go with Princess Bride as well. And then yeah. we throw Tony in too, Ashton. Uh, I'm pretty yeah. sure he's seen <laughs> it. No, he said he hasn't. Mm, nice. You would know better than I, Ross. <laughs> yeah, he loves Willow, so I think he'd like the Princess Bride. But yeah, yeah. I'm well, I think with... Ashton, you, you would like Leon the Professional. You should check that out. But, <laughs> but oh, yeah. Yeah, um, so. yeah, but but Ross, what do you say? I'm gonna go with Leon. Yeah, and actually, Jordan, uh, like he was in the first Mission Impossible, also. Oh yeah, that's what he's in. He's like part of it. He's like like first crew. Yeah, yeah, his that's right. Crew, yeah, his second. Crew. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, the second one. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but, no, 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 no. But, but I don't remember how the first one, how basically all of them die. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah uh, uh, Wolf, what would you say? Um. So. <sighs> As much as I love you, Leon, I'm literally watching you in the background right now. Mm. Uh, I'm the professional playing right now. Um, nice. I will still say Princess Bride. So. Yeah, like part of me uh, can't wait to do like a Gary Oldman tournament sometime. Yeah. He has some um, like amazing characters. So. Third favorite actor. <laughs> I was just thinking about that. He is yeah, like he yeah, is he's silly. awesome. Or maybe find like a versus someone he could go up against, maybe something like that. Are but you want a rock tournament too? Yeah, huh? Yeah, I think we will eventually. Uh, Ashton, because he's at sixty movies already. Yeah. Oh wow. You may have to split it, maybe, because he doesn't quite have sixty-four, and, and like just do like thirty-two of his best, maybe against John Cena or 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 someone similar, like Arnold, maybe something like that. But but I think Arnold would wipe the floor with him, probably. But. <laughs> Uh, we got Moon versus Almost Famous, so um, it'll be uh, Noah first. So you go. I haven't seen either of these, but I can't vote for Moon now because it'd be out in Pan's Labyrinth, so I'm going to say Almost Famous. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, we don't mind a good spite vote every once in a while, you know? So <laughs> uh, Ashton, what do you say? Um, almost Famous. Yeah. Uh, Ross. I'm back. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. go with almost famous, even though Moon is incredible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Wolf. Should I spy vote? Should I be honest? <laughs> I don't know. It's up to you. Because no, it's your all, tournament. Because <laughs> no, it's all like you know. Oh, I'm gonna vote Moon because Pam's Adams didn't get it. I'm gonna be like, well, I'm gonna vote. Uh, or I'm gonna vote almost famous because Pam's Adams didn't make it. Like, I would almost have to say, well, I'm gonna vote. Uh, Moon because Galaxy Quest didn't make it. Yeah, so, <laughs> I'm tempted to do that, but I have Almost Famous higher. That's like Moon is like number thirty three for me. Almost Famous is like number nineteen for me. Yep, so, and then and then they're like in the like Almost Famous, it was actually Cam from Modern Family. It's his first movie too. Now, oh yeah, uh-huh. if I'm counting the director's cut, I will say Almost Famous. So, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, <laughs> I am actually going to go with Moon because I think Moon is incredible. And, like, I'm kind of hit and miss when it comes to Cameron Crowe. He has some really good ones, movies, but he has some stinkers, too. Yeah, like, he does. Like Aloha. Ugh, no, Mostly no, his recent know. stuff. Like huh. his, yeah. his early stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like Aloha. Yeah, the earlier stuff's better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we have American Psycho up against Fight Club. Ooh. I actually really like this matchup. Um, it'll be be Ashton first. American Psycho. Yeah. Uh, Ross. American Psycho. Yep. Uh, Wolf. Fight Club. Yeah, I'll give some love to Fight Club. Yeah. Uh, Noah. You're the decider. Oh, gosh. Bye. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no pressure. Uh, sure. Let's go with with Fight Club. Sure. 
Ooh, Fight Club. All right. Still on. But if it wins the whole thing, we can't talk about it though. We just we can't. Yeah, so. we, can't. <laughs> we can't. We can't. We'll just have to end no. the stream. We can't even. <laughs> we can't yeah, even. right. <laughs> but so the winners of this next round will be in the Elite Eight, and and um, it'll be in our in our poll. We have a group that, that we run called the Schmodown Friends and Family on Facebook, and we're we're gonna put a, a, a poll with the Elite Eight, and we we let the community side and decide on what we picked for for his top eight and then comment they can vote they can can scream at us if we got it wrong just like whatever they want to do so so yeah and all of us can vote too but so yeah we got beef for vendetta let me zoom it out a little bit up against eternal sunshine so uh this time it'll be wolf first damn it why are you doing this to me <laughs> um Eternal Sunshine. God damn it. Yeah. I feel like I haven't voted for it this whole entire time, but but now I can. I'm going to vote V for Vendetta. Uh, Noah. I, uh, I think I'm going to vote for Eternal Sunshine. Yeah. I'm Ashton. She said V for Vendetta. Oh, shoot. It's going back okay. and forth. Yeah. Like... <laughs> oh, yeah. B for B, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Ross. Eternal Sunshine. Ooh, Ooh. It barely nudges that up. Nice. Yeah, it'll be Eternal Sunshine. Um, we have Lord of the Rings or technically Return of the Kings, what's there? But um, And then Scream. So, and it'll be me first. Gosh, this one's freaking like one of the harder ones for me because it's my favorite. Uh, my favorite uh, movie of my favorite horror franchise. I won't say it's my number one horror movie, but it's close, though. It's in my top five. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was going up against Lord of the Rings, and, like, Lord of the Rings is an all-timer, like, like I don't know. Like, I, I just feel like, I don't know if any fantasy movie or, like, or like that kind of epic like that will ever surpass it. I just, I don't know. So mm -hmm. I got to go with, with Lord of the Rings. Uh, Noah, what do you say? Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ashton says, yeah, Lord of the Rings for life. Yeah, yeah. For for fucking life. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Ross. I'm going to go with Lord of the Rings. And then the show wasn't awful. It wasn't great, but it wasn't awful. Yeah, like, I feel like they just didn't really, like, the pacing was all off for me. And then and then also, like, like I feel like I didn't really get to know the characters very well. Like, I was just kind of like, like, like something that left me being like, "What's happening?" I don't know. So yeah, I feel like it kind of the show might have kind of bombed, sort of in a way. But, yeah, but it wasn't, it wasn't awful though. No, no, it, it wasn't awful. So I feel like one character might have been Gandalf, but I didn't know if it was. So yeah. <laughs> Did you ever finish it? Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Then yeah. You know, it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Mm -hmm. but I thought it was kind of, but uh, but but Wolf. Um, yeah, uh, Lord of the Rings, yeah, Lord of the Rings, all right. Then we have um, Streetwise up against Christmas Vacation, so it'll be Noah first. Uh, man, uh, I feel like, man, both are you, uh. I'll be a little controversial. I'll say streetwise. <laughs> yeah, and um, Ashton says R.I.P. Scream. Though um, it had a good run, and then she votes streetwise. <laughs> um, uh, Ross, let's make this funny, is because like in the comments, people are going to say, "What the <laughs> hell is streetwise?" So yeah. what is streetwise? <laughs> yeah, but I, like, that's the first thing I asked him after he sent me his sixty-four, and then you know, like I loved it. Well, yeah, like people are gonna look at, like at the poll and be like, like what the f is this? I never heard of it. So, yeah, uh -huh. but, but and, and um, then, Wolf. And, and then whenever they say what the fuck is this, I've never heard of it. I'm just gonna comment uh, the YouTube link to the movie afterwards and just say, here it is, enjoy. Um, What's this? Yeah, this is what it is. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I'm also gonna say streetwise. 
So yeah, it's pushing through. Well, I'm the lone one that hasn't voted for it yet, so I can't do it now. I gotta go to Christmas vacation. <laughs> so yeah, but it'll be streetwise. So it's gonna make the poll, right? Yeah, it'll make the poll. Yeah, yep, it's in there. <laughs> so uh, we got Empire up against Lost in Translation. So um, and it'll be Ashton first. She says Empire. She says Empire, okay. Uh, Ross. Uh, I'm gonna go with Empire. Yeah. Uh, Wolf. Empire. Yeah. Now it's time to go Empire. You had a, yeah. you had a good run, Lost in Translation, but uh, Noah. Yeah, Empire. Now we have someone that might beat Streetwise. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. <Maybe. laughs> um. All right. I would, Cinema I would, I would, hey, personally, I would love it if like the underdog went and like all the way through this game. Like won that the whole be... thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be kind of interesting. But uh Cinema Paradiso versus City Lights. So yeah. Um this time it's me first. I've never seen either one of these, but I feel like I would go to City Lights first. So I'll go City Lights. Uh Noah. You say. Um, I feel like I would love Cinema Paradiso, but only because I've seen City Lights, I'm choosing City Lights. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ashton, City Lights or Cinema Paradiso? I think she's typing it right now, maybe. Yeah. Cinema oh, Paradiso. Cinema Paradiso. Okay. Cinema Paradiso, yep. Yeah. Uh, Ross. Cinema Paradiso. Yeah. Uh, Wolf. Ooh, Get sorry. some cider. <laughs> Sorry, Cinema Paradise. So I gotta go Street Lights. Yeah. yeah. City, City Lights. Lights. I just called it yeah. Street Lights because I had Street Wise on the front. Yeah. <laughs> it's just weird that it's cut off before, but now you can see it. So, interesting. Um, we got the Wizard of Oz up against Let the Right One In. <gasps> oh, we could have two classic we movies go up against each other City Lights and Wizard of Oz, yeah. guys. Think of it that one. Which one has the, the like, creepier <laughs> characters, though? With the. Like the Wicked Witch and the monkeys, or like the the vampire chick. Oh no, the trees. Oh, the right there's, one there's, yeah. there's trees in Wizard of Oz. Yeah, yeah. that scared me as a kid. There's the, what the munchkins. The munchkins look kind of creepy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah. um, yeah, it'll be uh, Noah first. Yeah. I vote Wizard of Oz. All right, Wizard of Oz. Uh, and, and Ashton votes Wizard of Oz. Um, uh, Ross. Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Um, Wolf. Wizard of Oz. And I'll give some love to let the right one in. So I would have voted that. But, be but it, had a good, it had a good run. I'm glad it went as far as it did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got Black Swan up against the Princess Bride. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so it'll be Ashton. Black Swan or Princess Bride. Black Swan? Okay. BS, that's BS, yeah. Uh, uh, Ross. I'm going to go with uh, Black Swan. Yeah. Uh, Wolf? Yeah, that is, that is BS, Ashton, because I'm going to print this by it, although not by much, so that's actually not that BS. But <laughs> Yeah, I just feel like Princess Bride is an all-timer. Like, it just is. Yeah. So, hey, and Mike, do you, you think that the trees, that the trees from the, um, from the Wizard of Oz are creepy, right? Oh, yeah. There was yeah. this one from the eighties called Sun Kiss Fruit, Fun Fruit, right? And look at the trees in that commercial. Look. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Ashton wants those in her house, she said. Nope. Well, the Princess Bride has got some like when they go to like the the like bog of eternal like whatever, the that thing that they got some of the weird looking trees in that. But um but uh Noah, did you vote already? Maybe you were first. I haven't, but have you voted? Oh, uh, I vote for uh, the Princess Bride. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I'll vote um, Black Swan. Uh, oh, all right. Nice. Black Swan. Nice. That, that, that's probably an upset, I would say. <laughs> uh, mm. We got we're Almost Famous and Fight Club. Um, so it'll be Ross first. Almost famous. Usually, if you make a noise, you go ooh, then you're first. 
So, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Wolf. But to quote Bob Ross, you got to make the noise or it doesn't work. Okay. Yeah. Um, but Fight Club for me. Which, speaking of, of Bob Ross, like I, I feel like I've seen almost every movie that's come out, but, but, but like Paint wasn't in theaters long enough for me to see it, so I couldn't see it. It's available so, on digital now. See, I, think. I heard something about that movie, that- and I heard something about that movie. Now I don't want to see it. I heard they like make Bob Ross look like an asshole. Oh, uh, and I'm like, really? Yeah, oh, that's kind of yeah. weird. But uh, yeah, but um, I'll vote for Fight Club here. Uh, Noah, I'll pick almost famous. Yeah, and then Ashton says almost famous, so it'll be. Wow. Almost famous. Then there so, goes my number two of all time. The fight oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Your number two. Well, if Steven could have joined, he'd be be happy. But he's almost famous. So. Yeah, so that'll be our um, our lead eight for tonight. Almost famous, Black Swan, Wizard of Oz. I'll just, I'll just break it down. City Lights. Uh, we got Eternal Sunshine. Lord of the Rings, Streetwise, and Empire. So those are our, our eight. So we'll we'll see what one makes the final four. Like, one of these is not like the other. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But one of them is not. And are we about to, to vote on it here? Oh no, not yet. Um, the Eternal Sunshine versus Lord of the Rings. So um, it'll be uh, well, uh, well first, and since you made a gasp, you're first. Oh, God <laughs> damn it. Okay. Uh, both are in my top ten of all time. I I love I love the Eternal Sunshine, but your run is ended. Uh, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. It, it's got to be Lord of the Rings pretty easily for me. Uh, and Noah, what do you say? Yeah, I'm actually going to vote for Eternal Sunshine. Ooh, all right. Uh, Ashton says the Lord of the Rings and Ross, what do you say? Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that'll be it. Lord of the Rings. All right. Then we have Streetwise. There it is. It begins Empire. It's like, come on. <laughs> this has got to be easy. But, uh, and it's me first. So obviously, Empire strikes back. Uh, Noah. I don't know whether just to make this fun or just to actually vote. Um, it's up to you, whatever you want to do. Well, but... now, now, now anything goes because we have our eight in the in the uh, poll. So now we just... have the lead eight, but the, but the, one of the things that we we always say that when it's your your top sixty four, whichever movie wins, then whoever bracketed it is, they have to watch it with before they can do their their top one twenty eight. So the, we could make him watch something like fun, or we could make him watch something very uncomfortable. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, hmm. I, I feel like I can't move against this. I I just I gotta go for Empire. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ashton. She says Streetwise. Oh Both yeah, she said. She went there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> streetwise. All right. Over Empire though, this can't be better than Empire. Um. Uh, Ross. I think, you know, have the document ever made it this far? Um, I think that we had "Won't You Be My My Neighbor" like made a final once or something. That's the only one. Yeah, I think so. And then let's yeah. make Streetwise a second. So yeah, Streetwise. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, Wolf. I mean, see, that's the thing is you get the decider. Uh, if, since you told me, if you didn't say anything, Jordan, maybe I would have voted, voted Empire. And Empire is which one do you feel like watching like soon? Like, w- w- but, would you rather? You can... Well, the, well, the thing is, is I'm always gonna pop in Empire. Like, I'm always literally. I've seen that movie so many times. I'm yeah. always gonna pop it in. And if you know, by the one twenty eight mark. That's like another year from now or so, you know. Mm-hmm. So that gives me, you know, I don't have, have to watch. Time. I don't have to watch Streetwise for like another year, if I. Yes. And then and then I could, you know, feel uncomfortable again and you know, and emotional. 
because it's un, un, alongside feeling uncomfortable, it's emotional. And I just think people need to be aware that this situation is still going on. Unfortunately, there are still homeless kids out in the street. But is it but is the one you actually want to rewatch because kind of like like Schindler's List, you, you, like it's great, but do you want to rewatch it? <laughs> That's the thing. Like you may have seen it once or even twice, but that might be enough for to like all time to watch it. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. It just depends. Uh, just okay. My logic <laughs> here, just because it's Return of the King, I feel like Return of the King versus Empire would be like an all timer. Yeah, that would be an all time match. So there we go. I'll throw in Empire this once. Yeah. All right. Um, Ashton said it's top. But still made the poll, though. <laughs> yeah. And we had your so back like, all the way through on this. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> you just abandoned us, man. You abandoned us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get <laughs> Star Wars. Like, I'm going Ashton. to a special kind of hell for this. Okay? I'm going, like, <laughs> I, I have to, like, you have to change my name on this. Okay? Like, I can't. No one can ever see this. I'm so well, I think you made the Ashen though, like you're gonna wake. I think Tony you made the up. correct choice. Ashen, you're gonna wake. You're gonna wake Tony up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he did. He did make the right choice. Like I'm, I'm super. I just, I wanted to like have his back just in case. I wish he would have gone first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. it's just, but... it's just, it was hard to go up against Empire like that. Like I love Streetwise so much, but. I yeah. mean, this is Star Wars. It would have been super sad. It's Star I, I'm Wars. Doing yeah, it no. I'm, it's like I'm against being... Empire. Yeah, I wanted but, to give it a chance just to see what would happen, but now we have the Word of the Rings possibly against. I, what am I going to do? This is painful. Yeah, okay. uh, you know that the Lord of the Rings would have clobbered streetwise, so the, like that's the thing. Now we have a, an actual yeah. match. <laughs> but we got City Lights versus the Wizard of Oz. So um, this time it'll be Noah first. I'm gonna vote for the Wizard of Oz. All right, uh, Ashton. Oh, Wizard of Oz. <laughs> now you're all like, like depressed about, about streetwise. She's, she's, she's a streetwise. <laughs> I feel maybe. like I yeah. feel like a disloyal traitor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I can't come back from this decision. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Ross. I'm gonna go with uh city lights actually. Yeah. Um Wolf. We're off to see the wizard, the one of a wizard of Oz. Yeah. yeah. Wizard of Oz. For me, it just comes down to I haven't seen City Lights yet, but I've seen the Wizard of Oz and it's great. So the Wizard of Oz. It's gonna be the Wiz. No, no um, not the Wiz. That's the black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the wizard, which is, is like not a, a good, which is not a good one with like Michael Jackson or, or something yeah. like that. You ever see yeah. it, Mike? No, <laughs> yeah, to. that movie's kind of out there. I've seen it, yeah. Uh, Black Swan versus Almost Famous. Oh, god so. damn it! Oh, that's <laughs> a good matchup. That's a good yeah. matchup. Well, well, your first action, whoever speaks goes first. <laughs> no, not. Not really. Um, that's just the actual order. No, but. no, I know, I know. <laughs> um, wow, this is really painful. But I, I'm gonna just gonna stick stick to my creepy roots and go with Black Swan. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ross, I'm gonna go with Black Swan. Barely. Yeah. Um, Wolf. This is again. This is the third time this has happened on the stream. This is my number 18 and my number 19 going mm -hmm. up against each other. So it's there literally it's literally neck and neck. It's close. <sighs> what you gonna do? But you know I think just to keep in line with like since we have like th a themed match on the left side you know we could do like a two like fantastical kind of movies like Wizard of Oz and Black Swan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll go with Black Swan. So, anyway. yeah, and I actually like Black Swan better, so I'll just vote for Black Swan. So, 
Yeah. Uh, I will also vote for Black no. Swat. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, we got we got Black Swan. So this is your. Let me zoom in a little. Your final four here. So. So yeah. So we got we got an all timer match with Lord of the Rings versus Star Wars. This is Empire. So. Uh, Have any of these won a tournament? Um. That's a good question because usually Austin keeps track of all that. But but I I feel like. Like, um, Empire has had to have won one, and probably Lord of the Rings. Like, at least one of them, I feel like, but I'm not totally I'd sure. Shocked. I'd be shocked yeah. if, like, they didn't at least get really close, like, in the top. Yeah. Three, you know? And that's yeah. another thing. Oh, and that's another thing. If we would have had Streetwise and kept that momentum going, you could have added that to your, like, 128. Yeah, and to our 128, which has this random like documentary in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that we were very close, Wolf. I want you to remember that we were yeah. very close. Yeah, yeah, because like sometimes we like to to pick a unique uh, movie that's never won. Because when we get to our our 200th episode, we're gonna do a big 128 movie of the or 128 uh, three part tournament of the first 128 unique movies to ever win a. Uh, movie tournament fight, so. though, I've actually won a tournament too. Yeah, movie 43 is one. We've had some bad ones. We did like worst ones. We have like Norbit in there. We have some like really bad oh ones. My we've God. Done Sorry, we've Norbit. done the worst movies of all th- <laughs> of all time. And that one, uh, 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 I won it because our, our worst movies of all time came, came down to Son of the Mask versus Norbit. Like, oh the, God, there's man. that. No, we also I had, remember though, I, I, I remember. Though, like, there was this one the tournament that now, like, Jordan hadn't seen. I said it's not that bad, and Jordan agreed with me. And that was Bucky, Bucky Larson, Born to Be a Star. It's not, yeah, that bad. That movie's not horrible, but it's not good either. I'll just say that. But, but, uh, and we've also had Disaster Movie win one that was like, we did like a versus one where like everyone submitted like, like, uh, like 15 movies that they, that they hate, and and Disaster Movie won that. That horrible oh, parody God. movie. So that'll be there. So we got some bad ones in there, but but for this matchup, we got Lord of the Rings versus Empire, and I believe that it is Noah first. Uh, I would go with Empire. All right, uh, I'm Ashton. I feel like this is so funny because this is like when you find out like what what is like your deepest like level of nerd like at your heart of nerd <laughs> yep. hearts like what is yep. in there you know and yeah <laughs> yeah Lord of the Rings is in in like my deepest heart of heart nerd yeah heart of heart. well it's like yeah. if if you saw my original top sixty four like. Like almost half of it was superhero movies. When I was putting it together, I like like realized that I have way too many superhero movies. So so it worked for that. But then when I got to my one twenty eight, I reevaluated. I'm like maybe some of these superhero movies aren't all timers. Like I just gotta like like rethink this a little. So yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> so yeah, but but for this it'll be uh, Ross next. I'm gonna go with Lord of the Rings. Only be you know like I do like uh I do like, you know, Star Wars. I love Star Wars. But The Lord of the Rings, you know, Return of the King, I think is one of the greatest films ever made. Yeah. Uh, Wolf. Yeah, and this, and this perfectly sums up me, you know, and I'm, and this is my tournament because I am, I, I think I'm more of a fan of Lord of the Rings, but I'm more of like a nerd when it comes to Star Wars, you know? So yeah. if that makes sense. Even though so, that favorite movie, the whole series is Rise of Skywalker. Fuck off. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Like, then, no, no, thank you. No. Um, Fan service, that, the movie. That movie no. kind of burn in hell. <laughs> um, but I, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with Lord of the Rings here. Man, it's tough, and that means my number eight would be gone. Of mm, all time, yeah, which is Empire. I should wait. Well, one of these days, I want to do nine of all time. Like that. I do an actual podcast just all about. About Star Wars movies, kind of breaking them all down, because like I have like actually like a lot to say on like what makes some of these movies all timers and what makes some of these movies like like absolute trash too. There's like some of them that are like that. Yeah. So, 
Yeah. So I can think yeah. of three right off the bat. Hey, Mike. Yeah. How was the holiday special though? Yeah, was that? Oh yeah, you guys did the drink for that. Okay, I, which I'm still <laughs> editing that video because apparently, uh, even though Disney and Lucasfilm <clears throat> want nothing to do with the film, they still apparently uh, like took down my video for copyright. So yeah. Uh, so but what you should have done, like so, like when those videos get get blocked, if you go into your YouTube studio, uh, it'll uh, tell you what it got got blocked for. It gives you an option for YouTube to just automatically take take whatever got blocked out and then just put it back up it makes it kind of easier than having to go back and like edit it so that's something to think about if you don't want to want to like spend a bunch of time editing it so. i'll check that and see if i can do yeah. that yeah but it's up to you but um yeah i for my vote i already know what's going through but probably like like overall like if we're, if we're just talking uh the the, the original trilogy for Star Wars, I think that it, that it'll rival Lord of the Rings. Even throwing um, uh, Rogue One for me, I actually love Rogue One. But oh, um, oh my God, it's like the best Star Wars film yeah. outside of the original trilogy to me. Yeah, it's, like, it's, yeah, it's so, so good. good. Yeah, yeah. So, good. so, but but here I gotta go uh, Lord of the Rings. I think so. Yeah, so it'll be be Lord of the Rings. Uh, yeah, so on the other side, we got Wizard of Oz versus Black Swan. So who would have thought it would be these two, but it is. So, um, and it will be Ashton first. You got Black Swan. Yeah, uh, Ross. Black Swan. Uh, Wolf. The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, and I kind of feel like we want to have two all-timers go against each other. I don't, yeah, I don't know if, I, I, if I'd quite call Black Swan yet an uh, no, uh, timer. Like, it may get there someday, but I just don't think it's for me. Okay, is there neither yet? one of them have a chance, in my opinion. So, <laughs> yeah, like, that is like, true. Yeah. Yeah. Towel toss, you know? yeah, like either one. Unless, gonna, so. unless we got, I think, Lord of the Ring, I think Lord of the Rings Return of the King has won a tournament. I think. Yeah, I think I think Return of the King is the one that, that won a tournament. I, and, I think it was that one, yeah. Um, but and, and I don't think Wizard of Oz has ever won a tournament. So if we no. go, so if we go like off of that, then yeah, if we go off of that, I mean, mm -hmm. you can think about it. But but I yeah, I'll vote. Night, never winning. <laughs> yeah, I'll, <laughs> Sorry, I'll vote for the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, Noah, what would you vote for? I will also vote for Wizard of Oz. Yeah. So it'll be the Wizard of Oz by hair. So Wizard of Oz versus Lord of the Rings, which technically we just picked Return of the King. Because Wolf, Wolf yeah. tried to cheat and, and have the whole trilogy there. But that's fine. Every time I, I watch them, I have to watch them together. They're like a <laughs> big movie. Like if, I, if it ends up winning and you're like, you have to watch Return of the King, I'm like, no, I'm going to watch all three of them for my... For the we want to spend... Like, like ten hours watching the like all the extended ones. You could do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But which they just had uh, uh, the Return of the King, the extended uh, uh, version in theaters recently. Oh, oh yeah. To Jordan, I, I, I texted, texted Jordan, Jordan, no one that I said still going, and he typed, "Holy shit!" <laughs> but, but, <laughs> nice. um, I've really, I've seen the summer <laughs> cut so many times. And I was in the, and I saw the edition in theaters, drink a whole soda, and never got up to pee, even though I've already seen it so many times. I was like, I'm not getting up from this. This moment yeah. is too good. <laughs> yeah. On the same way, like I, like, I mean, I don't know if this is TMI to say on on a show, but but as long as I say seated, I can sit through a whole movie, never have to get up to pee. But the minute I get, I stand up, I. I gotta run, so. Um, right. But, but anyways, Lord of the Rings versus Wizard of Oz. Um, it'll be Ross first. Oh, well, let's make things interesting and pick the Wizard of Oz. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Wolf. So you know that I love Lord of the Rings. It's 
spoilers, it's my it's my number one for all of y'all watching. No, you don't. Um, you, hate, you hate Lord of the Rings if you don't vote for it. Cool. <laughs> but but <laughs> I I want to like add like I feel like if you do that uh, 128 tournament down the line or whatever, and you don't have Wizard of Oz on there, but you have like Movie 43 and all that crap on there, it's going to be like, come on, bro. Because Lord of the Rings, I think, has won. It'll be like an annihilation. Huh? And, and Wizard of Oz has slaughtered. And, 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 and Wizard of Oz has not won a tournament. So you know what? Uh-huh. And I'm feeling more of that like emotional type stuff. And this is for you, Grandma. Wizard yeah. Of Oz. <laughs> there you go. You know what? Yeah. Just to have a unique one on there. Because, I mean, technically, like, I don't know how we would, we would do it. We, we've already had a Return of the King win a tournament but we haven't had any the other two so if lord of the rings wins we could slide in one of the other two but i feel like that's kind of cheating i don't know so Mm -hmm. so i'm just gonna go with wizard of oz because you didn't pick a one single movie you picked the the whole trilogy and i'm not gonna pick a whole trilogy to win i'm gonna pick one movie the wizard of oz (laughs) uh noah what are you gonna go for I think either way, I would have switched for the Wizard of Oz. So, Wizard of Oz. Nice, nice. Sounds good. Uh, um, Ashton. Thank God I am last so that my vote does not matter and I can say Lord of the Rings proudly. Yeah. Proudly, <laughs> there you happily, go. And you guys <laughs> get to have what you want because there's no way that I'm trading twice tonight. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get Star Wars, so Lord of the Rings, but awesome for Wizard of Oz. Sweet. Good night. Yeah, <laughs> this, is nice. for you. That's, this one's for you, Grandma. Well, so, yeah. well, it'll be the Wizard of Oz. There we go. Boom. Is this the longest show, Jordan? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's not the longest. Mm-hmm. We once had one that was, that was over five hours. We had Adam Witt on talking about about stand up comedians. Adam Witt and Paul Preston for for stand up comedian. And we had another one that was those that five hours. Though it was Moose. I think it was like. Maybe a best movie sequel or, or something like that. Oh my oh gosh, my you guys, I swear the one that we did for Ross was five over five hours. Like I no, just no, maybe it was. No, no, that was, like been, four, that was like four and a half hours. Yeah. Or close to four and a half. But, uh, but a lot of these uh, where it's like people's uh favorite movies, but they want to talk more and stuff, so they usually go a little long. But but oh yeah, JPO just came in and, and chimed in. He said Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Because like probably after you you uh, um I told him Ross well, is still going. A, 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 a JPO, <laughs> you are lucky that you're not part of the stream. JPO, you would have fallen asleep like three times. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. He's notorious <laughs> for falling asleep. There's one time where I had to pull up my my actual air horn and I blew it into my mic, and that thing's freaking loud. <laughs> and I woke him up. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was pretty funny. But but yeah, that that will do it for us tonight. So. That was a fun time. So the Wizard of Oz, yeah. we got a unique one on there that'll be in our our um see you our one twenty eight, and then um, ah. uh, Wolf, you, you have a, about a year to watch the Wizard of of Oz before you're you're one twenty eight. So we won't we can't do it till you at least watch it once. So. Well, with <laughs> with, with pleasure, because I love you watch it tonight, or you can watch it in like a few months or whatever you want to do. Is it on so, HBO Max? I think right. Or Max. The, Might well, be. Yeah, but I but I own the Blu-ray, so is this a 4K yeah. coming up soon? I read or something like that. That or they already released a 4K. I need to like. All right. Pick it up. You have like seven and a half minutes to get through plugs before we hit five hours. <laughs> so we'll do some some quick plugs. Uh, we'll start with with Noah first. Where can we find you? Do you have anything you want to plug or some social media or anything? Um, I don't think I have really any YouTube channels or anything like that. You can just find me, I guess, anywhere. Facebook. My you want pl- to plug, plug your letterbox? Yeah. Oh, my letterbox. Okay, yeah, my letterbox is uh, Mr. 2000 on letterbox. Nice. Sounds and good. That's, yeah, that's about my social medias. <laughs> well, sounds good. Maybe we'll have you back when it, we hit... Uh, uh, Wolf's 128. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be back for oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you for having me. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and thanks for for coming in last minute when we needed an extra person. So. I, and I and Appreciate I knew it. and I knew he'd work because he's seen like actually a good chunk of these. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that actually works though. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, then Ashton, where can we find you? So, um, Ross and I uh, just launched a social club. Well, actually, we've been doing this since 2015 in San Diego called Shark San Diego. Um, it's oh, Shark nice. with a C. And um, we're actually going to be launching our Shark in a Fishbowl um, YouTube in the next couple of weeks. Awesome. And it's just going to have like, I don't know, just different stuff that we do and information about like, um, like kind of just like um, different intellectual disabilities, like differing abilities and social, like, I don't know, whatever. I'm so tired, guys. It's been almost five hours. So anyway, it's, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> And um, but right now you can find us um, on Instagram at Shark SD. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having so, me, guys. This is really fun. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we actually have had a pretty short ones. We've had had actually shows that have been under two hours recently. So so sometimes they go long, sometimes they don't. So it just depends. <laughs> but but uh ross where can we find you you can find me on both things and then like wolf channel and we're working on some really cool stuff you know like we might do a q a for the thousandth you know or something like that we got to plan something for the thousandth mm -hmm. right very soon we got to no more being lazy about it huh no no more being yeah lazy. you get to a thousand subscribers you got to celebrate that oh, yeah. we, we once, need to get monetized so yeah once i yeah. get um once i uh Get the chance, maybe. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Too, too. Like we'll do that. Jordan, also too, too, too. Like one, one of our friends really wants to join your channel now, so we'll send you his info. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, sounds good. Yeah, like we're we're always open to to new uh, people. The one that the yeah, one because on, like so because like he was typing me. He's like just. I don't think I'll ever be able to join. He says because he doesn't know me, and I said that's not that's how it, that that's not how Jordan works at all. No, no, like we're open to to new uh, people, to like people that like like maybe even have a like like just specific movies that they're into. You can come on for for certain topics or like whatever yeah. you want to do. Like, so. like, like I know yeah. he's talking about, and he's testing me. Um, his name is Andrew Long, but um, oh yeah, but he uh, tested me, in the, he tested in me saying he would love chat. to do like comedies because he's a big comedy person if you ever do like a comedy subject or, or, or hey, whenever like, you guys like do the musical yeah if you ever do musicals he's like the big yeah musical we actually have out. like uh best musicals we had to push it a little bit but we're doing it around like november or, or something like that but, oh, but okay then definitely contact yeah. him for that because he would love to he, be because no 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 you think mike and i like musicals no. <laughs> right mike yeah. Well, oh yeah not well, well um I probably what i'll do is i'll i'll reach out to him and i'll send him our, our upcoming schedule and then then he can just see what what dates work what what topics he likes and just sign up for whatever he wants so yeah so yeah, yeah. 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 so yeah, yeah but but yeah well well uh uh wolf where can we find you yeah you can find me on my youtube channel mega movies um where and i want to make a cool announcement uh here i wanted to wait to make it so I was on my top 64, but I'm going to be starting something soon. It's going to be a passion project. It's not starting until next year. It'll be starting in January of next year. Um, I'm really going to be kicking off my Patreon again. And what's going to be happening is, so I'm going to be doing, there's 52 weeks in a year. So you've seen these 64 movies. I'm going to do my top 52 movies. And on Patreon, I'm going to, and, and it's going to be like in, in, in order, you know, my top 52 movies. And then on Patreon, we will do watch alongs of them every week, once a week. Mm, but, nice. then, but then on that, um, but then around that same day or like the day after, you know, once a week, we will come here on YouTube and we will do a review for that. And it'll be like my top 52 movies. Okay. And, then, and then the following year will be Ross's <laughs> top 52 movies. And then the year after that will be, and it'll just, you know, keep on going to make it kind of more <laughs> of a big thing. I'm going, what are you? Nice. <laughs> what am I laughing about? Yeah. GPO. Uh, oh. 
Nah. You ain't right. He says I just tuned in and start again, start over again real quick. Yeah, to start over again real quick. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so our first match up awesome here. Wolf. I look forward yeah. to seeing that, dude. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Sounds cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to be doing it. We're going to yeah, be first a part of it. First match up, we have the, the Thing versus Seven Samurai. All right. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, that, that sounds awesome. So, yeah, I'll look I'll look forward to that for sure, yeah. Um, oh, and, and, yeah. One more, and one more thing I just wanted to plug real quick. So this yeah. is something I wanted to uh, – I might be doing – uh, in the summer, so I have an idea. Because over Christmas time, I did this thing called Christmas Movie Roulette, where we put movies in the Christmas stocking, and I would like select the Christmas movie and we'd watch it. And I kind of want to do that like themed. So I was thinking starting it this summer, do summer movie roulette. And what we do is we'd have it like a, in like a hat. We would have a name or something, and it'd be pre-recorded videos. But like part of the video would be us selecting which movie it is. And then we would say, like, okay, it's that movie. And then we would come back to the video after we watched the movie and then come back and review it for you guys and do, like, a summer movie roulette reviews for themed movies. So, like, Wet Hot American Summer, Sleepaway Camp, The Burning, whatever it may be, all, like, kind of, like, themed movies about summertime. So Nice. Yeah. That sounds cool. Yeah, it you guys ever need anybody for like panels to like like talk about any movies i mean me and austin we're always open for that kind of stuff so, so just let us know like we're, we're always uh have a lot of fun doing that stuff or or if anything we'll just tune in and we'll watch you guys talk about it you know yeah, so, lo- yeah. love having you on for a screen three when that happens and then remember yeah, Mike, yeah. Remember, too, remember how we talked about you know like like jordan jordan wants to join us you know like when we when we do the room oh yeah the room yeah oh yeah we'll do that because i don't I don't necessarily drink, but I could take an edible, so that could be be kind of interesting. I'd be down to do that. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> so yeah, or or just like, or even have like one of those one of those like like marijuana infused drinks. I could just take little sips or something here and there, something like that. So <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, um, uh, for our um channel for the Movie Hero Network, you can find um. Uh, us all over our social medias at Movie Hero Twenty One Twenty One on Twitter and Instagram, and then I post uh, probably even more on my my personal Instagram because because it just dual uploads to Facebook. So so that's Jordan Eight Three Six One Six, and uh, we also have a group on Facebook that's called the Schwed on Friends and Family Group, and where we're gonna have our our poll with the Elite Eight, and and you can voice your your thoughts and your and your. Uh, I, I, opinions there you can ask us what the heck streetwise is and and, <laughs> and i'm sure wolf will explain it to you so so yeah or or just give you a link to watch it um yeah and and um all that information it, it is down in the description below so you can, can find it there um uh See, and, that's, that's one good thing ashton is even though it couldn't beat empire it's still in the poll so people are yeah, still, still gonna the like, be acknowledged and know like oh what oh you know they're still gonna know about streetwise so yeah, yeah we'll still bring some attention. That's to a big it, win. Know. That's a big win. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, we also have a, a Patreon for the for our channel that that's patreon.com slash movie hero. We do trivia on there. We had to push back our our um, last or our our next upcoming trivia because I'm going to be out of town. So it'll be in about about two weeks from from this this upcoming uh, Monday where we have. We have Ryan Permison, who is our our new champion. He beat beat out Austin, so Austin had a four game win streak, and and Ryan beat him by by one point. So uh, he's the new champion. So Austin will now be be helping me produce the the show and, and also co host, which I I I need that because it just helps to have someone to do commentary and and to help keep score and, and all that stuff, do graphics and all that stuff. So uh, so yeah, in about two weeks, but. But this Sunday we'll be be doing actually a a um, comedy movie draft. So we're gonna have four of us. We're, we're just gonna go like a snake draft. We're, we're gonna draft our, our favorite comedy movies. So that should be be fun. So that'll be um, for the Patreon. So if you sign up up for as as cheap as as just five dollars, you can watch that over there. You can see things like uh, we'll put up a, an extended um, schedule for the. 
the um, a tournament fights and and tier ranker over there. So you can see way more than anyone else gets to see. If you want first dibs on, on signing up for episodes, we also do some giveaways. Uh, I've been giving away some movie posters that are uh, some exclusive one sheet movie posters for my time working in the movie theater that you can only get from the movie theater. So I have about about sixty of those just just sitting here, just taking up space that, I, that I'm giving away over there. Uh, and then um, just a little preview of, oh, so actually, uh, before I get into to that, we have a new show coming up that I have a little logo for that that's going to be a similar to some stuff Wolf's doing slightly. That's, that uh, we're going to call it the Wheel of Movies. So uh, what that's going to be is, we're, is uh, we had everyone submit their, their either top 64 or their, their top 128 plus 20 honorable mentions and, and then we're going to spin the the wheel and whatever movie that it, it lands on we're going to do a one hour deep dive on the the uh uh the movie written so uh if anyone that's on the panel they want to rewatch it or if you already seen it you don't have to but but then we'll just go on and we'll we'll talk about either why we love it why we, I, why I we still, don't I, like it i still owe you four more on that um oh yeah yeah and, and, and just I'm four more to round it up. You sent me six. See, and I'm like, and I don't know. Like, I'm kind of tempted to just do like a bunch of troll answers. So you all have to like rewatch. Like, oh, be good. Oh, I know which one you should do. Like any movies that you want. Yeah. Mike, I know, yeah. I know which one you should do. Eighty-four. Pull, pull an R. You knew what that is. What? Eighty, eighty-four Morbius. Eighty-four <laughs> Morbius answers. Yeah, because Jordan, yeah. Jordan, yeah. like that's why we haven't really like tried to let this guy on the channel is because like every single answer he would say Morbius. Oh, okay, <laughs> wouldn't he, nice, Mike? Nice. Do you think he would? <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice. Well, well, uh, and also to go along with that too, we're gonna have a monthly series that's gonna be a, a movie hero mystery a, a tournament. We're gonna take the same exact wheel. We're just gonna spin it sixty-four times. So we're actually gonna gonna have a little pre-show every time for that that monthly episode and then we're gonna put the first 64 movies to pop up in a, a big tournament that'll be really tough because it'll be everyone's favorite movies going into the uh, the tournament so we'll have to decide between all of that so we'll have that too so that's coming up and and then soon like we actually want to like uh, like uh we don't have anything set in, in uh in stone yet but we're looking to do it uh i i, I 24 hour subathon stream. So probably we're looking for maybe like July. We're gonna do a 24 hour episode because there uh, it was a friend of ours that that did a a uh, a 24 stream. Um uh, a Chadwick Webb and on space on on the guy that that he does the um channel with his his partner guy. But but if you you look up Chadwick Webb for their YouTube channel, they did a 24 hour subathon, and within one week, they got like 600 subscribers, like it's something crazy like that. And they're able to get get uh, monetized now, all of that. So we have goals to try to get monetized. So I want to try to to do that because I think when YouTube sees that that kind of unique stuff, they'll they'll um, plug it into the algorithms more. We're gonna have some special guests, maybe some schmodown people on there. We're gonna do an episode of of, of every single show that we we do on on this channel, plus have some guests on that that i i might want to do the like a one-off of like one of their shows i think malcolm and we're gonna have him come to an episode of like rank them and and that sort we of thing join so you too. Be fun. My, my my mike and i would be proud to, we'd be happy to join you during that too you know oh yeah for sure yeah yeah if you guys want to want to um join in for any of that if you have an episode of even one of your shows you want to do it it's like a one-off you could do that too so yeah we're we're totally open to that to doing that so it'll be like maybe mid july or something like that so so we'll richie we'll says how the fuck are you still going <laughs> yeah. how the fuck are you still going <laughs> because it was hard this is honestly because honestly, we can this is like we the, hardest, <laughs> this the hardest of all the top 64s i've had and we started yet. late too we started like yeah. over an hour late but but anyway the, uh, the last little thing that i just wanted to do we just give a little preview of what's coming up for for tournament fights and tier ranker so um we have on Friday we're, we're doing the best animated movies of the '90s for a tier ranker because we've been doing every uh, decade for animated movies. This will be the the final decade, and then next month we're, we'll have our championship episode. So we got that. Uh, then we're gonna have uh, um, we're gonna have on uh, the following 
Monday, we're finally getting to our Nick Cage versus Keanu Reeves match. We're going to have Paul Preston, Adam Witt, and Kevin Smets on that episode. So so that'll be fun to have those guys and finally nail it down because I know we, we had to, to reschedule a few things with those guys. But um, and then we'll be, be jumping into our best movies of, of 2012 ladder series. So we, we worked our way all the way from 2022 and all the way down to, to 2012. And then we're going to be doing uh, best and worst movie remakes. Uh we got those coming up, and then we will have our movie hero mystery tournament that I I talked about earlier. Then we also have our best movie duos championship. We have best movie dads for Father's Day um, coming up, and then we'll be getting into a few other things like best movies of of twenty eleven series. And then we're going to be starting soon. This is I'll just wrap it up with with the last one. We're going to be starting. At, a big geek series to determine what are the best geek characters of all time. We're going to have different categories and I'm going to reveal them just one at a time. So the first one, there's going to be eight different um, categories. We're going to be doing best Star Wars characters. So it'll be a, be a whole entire a tournament of best Star Wars characters. And then whatever makes the, the Sweet 16 will uh, make it into our, our ultimate geek championship series. And, and for each one, we're... We're gonna have sixteen that, that will advance to that, and then then it'll be a big battle of like geek characters and stuff. So so best Star Wars characters will, will be to kick that off. So so yeah, that's uh, where you can find us. So that that'll do it for us for tonight. But thanks for um um hanging in there. I didn't mind really going long because I wanted to let let uh, Wolf have some some time to talk about all his favorite movies, yeah. and we didn't have a lot of the people that that like. That like Austin has to go to bed early, like uh, some of the other um, usual uh, 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 people can't stay on as long. But I'm fine with that. I don't. I don't have anything. I have the day off tomorrow. We still so have like I'm five not, people, not which is it. nice. Pretty yeah, yeah. Like, do you have to work Actually, tomorrow? And, and and Noah, Noah, uh, also like his internet cut out, but he wanted to just say thank you for having him on. Oh yeah, just, no. you know, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we appreciate having him on. Yeah, and then. Uh, so that'll we'll uh, do it, and then I have a little, uh, a quick little surprise thing that that I'm going to use to to take us out tonight. So so if you stuck around for that, you get to see the, see this little thing. So for Ashton, for uh, for Ross, for Wolf, for uh, for Noah, I've been Jordan, the movie hero Anderson, and we will see you next time.